While my story isn't long, I firmly stand by what I experienced that day, back in May of 1999. During this time, I was looking around, scouting areas for the best turkey hunting. There is a very specific area in the mountain range around me that I know lots of wild turkeys like to congregate and come together. But to get there, you have to go through a lot of thick fur and timber. There is an old logging road that will take you a few miles up, and then from there, it's about another three miles on foot, all through thick, dense forest. Not a problem, since I'm pretty much raised and born in the woods. But on this day, in May of 1999, on my way to that spot in question, I was attacked by some upright, bipedal canine that I'm still not exactly sure what it was. Luckily for me, I came out unharmed as I did not allow it to get close enough to do any real damage. I put enough rounds in that thing that it should have died, but I think I only pissed it off because it retreated and sounded like more were following after me. So part of me thinks that it was an ambush or some sort of trap, like they knew I was there and they were getting ready, calculating the perfect time to ambush me and take me down. I can't prove that theory, but from the noises that I heard after this thing took off, like there was more of them around me, surrounding me, coming towards me, that was more than enough proof in my mind that I needed to get out of there and leave. Besides the fact that I was just attacked by some unknown bipedal canine that I'm not sure where it came from or what it was, nor have I ever seen it in my life. Before I jump into the actual description of the account itself, I'm going to lay this flat out. I don't normally listen to horror stories or watch horror movies. I don't believe in vampires, werewolves, monsters, zombies, ghosts, none of that. I like to think that real life doesn't contain any of those fictional things. But since this happened to me, I feel like my mind and the possibilities have been opened a little more. After I got out of my truck, I was parked on this old logging road. And remember, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. There's not a soul around for at least 10 miles. I can remember some of these details very well because the entire account stands so strong in my brain. I want to say I probably wasn't even 200 yards of the trail from my truck when the entire woods around me went deathly silent. Now, that only means one thing. There's a large predator in the area, and all the wildlife knows it. That means no birds, no squirrels chirping and chittering. That's what I expected, which is exactly why I kept a firearm on me. My thoughts at the time were a mountain lion, and mountain lions can be known to attack people given the right circumstances, of them being hungry, and you being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And while it wasn't exactly a mountain lion, it was something much, much worse. I still refused to lay down and die that day. I was going to hold my ground no matter what. I didn't care if it was a giant. I would have taken it down. So where I was on the trail was a very gradual incline. It probably started off at the base of the road, right where my truck is. You walk across the logging road, and it's a very, very gradual incline probably 500, 600 yards before reaching the top of a ridge. Then it's a very gradual decline and then flattens out after a while. You take this for about another couple miles and it drops down again into almost a little valley, if you want to call it that. A very large clearing with a small little creek that if you follow it, and I have before, it feeds into a larger river that runs through the entire area. So when the woods around me went deathly silent, and it was instantly noticeable. I was still able to turn around from my position and clearly see my truck, and also turn around from there and clearly see the top of the ridge that I was walking to. Once the woods became quiet, I became aware. Acute senses kept me alert of everything going on. I continued my pace, keeping my hand on my gun. When I made it probably about another 100 yards, maybe more, when I started to hear movement off to my right. At first, it sounded like something moving around like a small animal, nothing to be concerned about immediately, but it went from rustling to a thrashing sound, as if something big was throwing itself all around in the brush. And keep in mind this was May, 
so everything was freshly lush and grown back from wintertime. I kept my focus on the right of me, but still continuing my pace, not exactly sure what was going on, thinking perhaps a mountain lion was about to pounce on me, but I wasn't exactly sure. Then, I make it about another 60 yards, end up the trail for me, probably about another 50 to 100 yards, only about another 100 yards up from the top of the ridge, if that's not confusing, jumps this bipedal canine out on the trail. The trail, by the way, is a game trail. It's been used, but it's pretty overgrown and worn out, leaving just enough room for me to travel through without thick, crazy brush blocking my way. I want to say there is maybe two feet of total clearance, where on both sides of me were thick timber and brush. And right as this thing jumps out, I'm already keeping my attention to the noises on my right and also keeping ahead of me, trying to be extremely alert and in tune to everything surrounding me. When this thing jumps out in front of me, it looks right at me. And that's what made me stop dead in my tracks. At this point, my hand was already on my gun and I knew instinctively, just from being out in the woods enough, that this was no natural creature, and this meant danger. Nothing can replicate the look that it gave me. It was in no way a look of eminent surprise. It was a look like you shouldn't be here, and now I'm going to make you pay. This thing probably stopped and stared at me for one minute. I don't even know if it was able to size me up in that time, but it immediately began turning into a runner's stance, like a runner does, and starts jogging toward me on two legs, arms outreached and mouth open, as if it's going to grab me. I immediately don't even hesitate, pull out my gun, and start firing several rounds into this thing. It probably makes it within, I want to say 20 to 30 yards from me, after I've already fired several rounds, and jumps off into the left side of me, running 90 degrees from me. Now this thing is running like a bulldozer through the woods, screaming the loudest horrific noise I've ever heard, and is going perpendicular away from me in the woods. Meanwhile, there's also noise still on my right that's getting louder and louder, and after several more seconds goes by, and the screaming of that thing that I shot gets quieter and quieter, the noises around me begin to come alive. That's when I begin to hear thick thrashing from not only my right, but to my 5 o'clock, my 2 o'clock, and my 7 o'clock all sounding like they're getting closer and closer to me. Now I truly felt that feeling of imminent danger and that I needed to get out of there now if I wanted to live. So, very calmly, I turned around, but also keeping my eyes around me 360 degrees. I quickly made my way back down the trail, the several hundred yards I'd already walked, making sure to keep pace and keep track of everything around me. The noise and the thrashing continued and followed me all the way down to the end of the game trail where it connects to the old logging road. As I was roughly within 50 yards of the logging road and only another 20 from the truck, I began to hear that screaming sound coming back, heading right towards me from the diagonal angle in the woods, what I assumed to be the same canine bipedal creature that I had shot just moments previously. It sounded like it was pissed and it was coming down the ridge on a diagonal angle coming towards me and the truck. I knew at this point I had to double time it or there wasn't going to be any of me left. I had no idea what I was dealing with. This is some advanced, unknown large predator. I made it back into my truck, flew in, pulled the car in gear, and drove out of there quicker than I could have. I probably drove so fast I think I nearly bent my axle driving over some of the rocks of the old crappy logging road. I mean, after all, there were a lot of rocks that you had to be careful. Driving in, I was probably doing about 10-20 miles an hour. These were really large rocks, but driving out of there, I want to say I was probably doing close to 40, maybe more. Trying to preserve my life was far more important. There were points where I could hear the rocks grinding against my front axle and I was just praying to God that it did not do any damage to my truck. Luckily, I made it down the logging road and back to one of the more main roads that it took me back. I can't tell you if the noises ceased once I got in my truck, flipped a Yui, and got out of there because I didn't have my windows rolled down and I was not looking back. 
I did not want to risk that thing bursting out of the woods, coming to pull me out of my truck and take me away. But if that's what it was doing, it had missed me by a very short amount. As far as the other noises that were going crazy in the woods near me, I'm not sure. But what disturbs me is as soon as I shot at this thing several rounds, and it flew off into the woods and began running and screaming away, the noise around me erupted, as if these things were now signaled to come and ambush me and get closer. Even though I described to you the sounds as thrashing around and rustling, they became louder and louder, not only in volume, but in distance. I truly believe that this thing did not act alone, and as soon as this thing was shot and ran off, the other three or four that were surrounding me were beginning to move in. Had I stood there any longer, or pursued the ridgeline, which is what I was originally heading for, I think they would have pounced on me and tore me limb from limb, judging by the appearance of what I saw. This thing looked clearly like a half-man, half-wolf hybrid that looked very comfortable walking on two legs, with large hands, or what appeared to be hands, and long black claws at the end of each fingertip, which, if I had to guess, would measure anywhere between six to eight inches in length, and they were pretty thick. The hands resembled that of a raccoon hand, the chest had a large patch of fur on it, although these creatures, or the creature I saw, had long fur all over its body, and the head had a huge lion's-like mane, except it was more resembling of a wolf, and the eyes and the face were very much animalistic, except around the eyes and the brow ridge, which were more humanoid. But the few things that really stand out to me as truly disturbing, besides its facial expressions, and its sheer intelligence and power and speed were its teeth and its eyes as soon as it opened its mouth and charged towards me. This thing had an unnatural amount of teeth unlike any predator should have. I want you to think for a second. Imagine a shark, how a shark's mouth is full of razor teeth. They're not large teeth per se, but there's a bunch of tiny ones that are razor sharp. That's kind of how this thing was. They weren't like literal shark teeth, but this thing's mouth was overloaded with them. Tiny little daggers that I could clearly see from the distance that I was. I can't even imagine how they would look up close. I did not want to see that. It looked to be way too many teeth for its mouth. And its eyes. Its eyes appeared to be a very soft orange. They did not glow or give off any light. But they had such a fierceness to them that it was almost striking just from looking at them. I have a cousin who's a very, very good illustrator, and I've thought many times about sitting down with him and having him illustrate what I saw that day. I'm sure he could bring it to life, just going by my descriptions, since the image of this thing will forever be burned in my mind. Feel free to ask me any questions. I'm happy to answer any of them. Thank you. There was this really weird time when I was driving home one day and I saw something that I would never expect to see. It was getting towards the evening time, so it was that funky kind of light where it wasn't the greatest to see, but not yet entirely dark. I have also, A, never seen anything remotely supernatural or paranormal in my life, and even more importantly, B, don't believe in any of it. Ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, all conspiracy theories and, well, crazy people. Or so I thought until that very day. Because, as I was just driving along, no doubt rocking out to Taylor Swift, I saw what I initially thought was someone standing by the side of the road. They looked like they were trying to thumb a lift as one arm was held out in front of them. At that point, they were almost completely in shadow and I could really just make out the size and shape which pointed to an adult. Being a young female, there was no way I'm picking up anybody, but I did slow just a little to make sure it was not another female who looked hurt. The least I can do is call 911 for her. Well, as I approached closer, the figure became more clear, and I realized there was something very, very wrong. To start with, the figure was covered in hair, and it stood at the side of the road. 
but the body shape and stance was that of a human. But the problem was that it resembled more of a wild dog than did a human. I don't know many breeds of dog, but it reminded me of the ones they use in the canine unit for the cops. I believe it's a German Shepherd, so correct me if I'm wrong. There was no way this was anything other than a dog. It was way too realistic, and everything about it, from its expression to its intelligent yellowish eyes, all said real dog. Only problem is, I have never heard of a dog comfortably standing up on two legs, or being the size that this one was. I'd like to say I was brave and stopped the car and snapped a photo, or even just slowed down to get a look. But when you come across a full-sized human-like dog on the side of the road, you're not thinking of anything apart from getting out of there, which I did. I still don't know why it had arms, or I guess paw out like a hitchhiker. Maybe, as it looked like a dog man, it also had more intelligence. Maybe it really thought somebody would stop. It's all too weird to think about. I was editing several photos for a recent publication. I take photos professionally of deer and elk. They were my wife's favorite animals, so I continued in her passion. It's also my way of keeping her memory alive. She passed quite some time ago. So, I pulled up one of my best shots of a buck and his doe, and it was nearly business as usual, until I noticed something in the background after zooming in, I nearly fell out of my chair. It wasn't as stark as an image as the buck and the doe, but in pretty good detail was the figure of something that wasn't human, standing clear and tall. I don't believe in boogeyman and witches, but I'd be darned if I wasn't looking at something that was the spitting image of a werewolf. There are some deviations from the stereotype. The ears were long, Think of the proportions of a fox. It was comparative to that. The snout wasn't very long. If there hadn't been a muzzle, the overall look have suggested some bit of humanity. There was plenty of fur. It seemed to be coarse and shaggy, as if something that fierce looking could ever need protection. I resized and enhanced the image in two separate versions, with and without the deer. I submitted the photo to the editor and told him that I accidentally wound up with a little something extra. His reply came a little later. He told me that he didn't appreciate my Halloween prank, and that I should promptly save my Photoshop skills for more serious efforts. I did my best to not sound insulted, and I calmly explained that the pictures had only been edited for light contrast. The creature in the background is authentic, and not the result of editing. The editor just told me that he wasn't going to tolerate insults. Next thing I knew, the picture was in wide circulation in the cryptid hunter community, and steps have even been taken to make it damn near impossible to prove that I had the copyright. I know what you're thinking. The original images on my camera are time-stamped. How could that not be enough to clear me? You wouldn't believe the convoluted laws and supposed methods of fraud. I had to wade through them when I decided to step up to the plate. For a moment, I'm satisfied to know that I took the picture of something that's really out there, and it's been presented as hard proof to a community of people that have been looking for evidence, even if that evidence doesn't come back to me as a credential. So yeah, I guess my next option is trying to find the thing again, and hopefully try to get another picture. I'm going to keep this a little more on the down low, just in case it ends up getting deleted to you for whatever reason. But if you do a simple Google search, it shouldn't take you long to find the photo in question. I feel like a lot of these dogman stories that I hear about happen in very specific places and almost always either in the woods or alongside a road as somebody is driving past. I mean, they all make sense. These creatures obviously live somewhere off the beaten track, which is why I was so shocked 
the time that I saw one myself, in my literal backyard. I do live in a pretty rural area, so it's not like I'm in the middle of LA, in Beverly Hills, and a dogman is just casually walking around for everybody to see. This was late in the evening, and I was just doing stuff like brushing my teeth before heading back downstairs to lock the house up. That's when my dogs began going crazy. I have two border collies, and sometimes the neighbor's cat will sit on the kitchen windowsill and peer in at them. That always drives them crazy. They hate that darn cat. So, I assume this time that's exactly what was happening. But instead of yapping at the window, they're both barking, scratching, and going insane at the back door. I'm thinking, okay, that cat is either really stupid or being incredibly brave and is clearly on the other side. But when I peered out myself, I couldn't see it. Both dogs are continuing to go nuts, and one of them starts hurling himself at the back door. I've never seen them behave like that. It was startling. There was no way I was letting them out. Not like this. Because if it turned out there was a cat out there, well, we know what would happen. I couldn't forgive myself for that. So I just about managed to drag them into the den and shut the door. Then, I grabbed a flashlight, opened the door. Well, I saw right away what was causing their behavior. There appeared to be another dog in the back of our yard. Except that's what I thought at first. And then I realized regular dogs don't stand on two legs, nor do they look like ripped linebackers, ready to pulverize anything in their way. The first thing my light caught was a dark shadow. Then, the dark light began to make a full outline, and I saw the glowing eyes. These red-orange glowing eyes. The thing stepped away from the trash for a moment, and I could hear through closed doors my dog still going nuts. This thing let out a quick grunt, which, to be honest, sounded like a bear. Then, that's when it ran down on all fours and jumped and was gone. I went back inside, keeping my dogs in, and spent the next hour or so looking around, making sure this thing doesn't come back. Anyway, I try and keep a closer eye out at night now, I never know when it's going to return. Back years ago, when I went camping in the deep forests of West Virginia, I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of loud growling just outside my tent. That's when I opened the flap and I saw these two yellow amber eyes staring at me. But was even more terrifying was that the eyes were glowing. It wasn't like the backlight of a cell phone. It was more like an inner flame that kind of flickered. It wasn't coming any closer though. It was just staying stagnant. I held my breath, trying to stay still. Whatever good that was doing me, I'm not sure. Hoping it wouldn't get me. I could start to see it slowly move, taking deep breaths just watching me, as if the experience couldn't become any more heart-stopping. The eyes rose up into the air, quite tall. That's when it got even taller. Apparently, this thing had been crouching down, and it now just stood up. I wasn't just facing a regular predator. I was facing a monstrosity. I thought that was the signal that it was going to maul me in my tent and make us both disappear. A long moment of silence stretched as I waited. Then, it kind of just faded into obscurity, slowly backing away into the trees. I was terrified. I wasn't even sure what to do or to think. Was it even possible to be this terrified? I quickly kept my lantern next to me, zipped my tent back up, and waited until morning. I didn't sleep at all, but the second the sun began to rise, I packed up quickly, tracked back, and got out of there. That ruined my several day long hike. The entire time I was out in that tent, 
after I saw it. The only thing I could think of, whatever creature or animal this was, it was either checking me out to come back for later, or who knows, it might come back and bring several of its buddies. I didn't want to wait around. My boyfriend had lived in Michigan, and I in Northern California. We dated on and off for several years online before I finally made the move to go live close to him so we could actually have a fruitful relationship. Over the years we spent together, we grew closer and also realized we had a common interest in hiking, camping, and the outdoors. This brought us closer together than ever before until we had one terrible camping trip that would change my life and perspective of the outdoors for a very long time. For this camping trip, my boyfriend isn't really a drinker, but he, for whatever reason I'm not sure, decided to load up on a 24 pack of beer. I'm a lightweight and it takes me about two beers in total to be plastered. But personally, I'm not a fan of drinking, so one beer is about it for me. And that's all I had that night, around 7, maybe 7.30. My boyfriend insisted during the night that I try and drink more, let loose, enjoy myself. He, I believe, took it too far. After having roughly four or five beers, he became beer unconscious. You drinkers know how that is. He too is a lightweight and hardly ever drinks, which goes back to my original question. Why did he need to get a 24 pack? It was just him and I. He must have thought we were in for a wild night. And a wild night I had, but we didn't even know that yet. So it gets to about 9, 10 p.m. And he's so drunk, he's ready to pass out. Me, I'm a little bit more on the irritated side, having wanted to have a nice, relaxing evening with my boyfriend. And he ruined it by getting far too drunk and going in the tent to pass out. If you know anything about somebody passing out after they're drunk, they're pretty much impossible to wake. A hurricane could blow through the area and they would still be sound asleep. Angry, frustrated, and not even wanting to be in the same camping trip as my boyfriend at that time, I decided to take my sleeping bag from the tent while he didn't even wake up and go sleep in the truck. My boyfriend then had an old 1991 Ford F-250. There wasn't really much comfortable cab space, but it was better than sleeping in a tent with him. So, I sprawled out as best I could across the front seat, tried to get as comfortable as I could, while trying to fall asleep. If you've ever tried to fall asleep while angry, you'll know it's a pretty hard feat to do. But somehow, somewhere along the way, I managed to doze off after who knows how many minutes went by of still being angry at him. The doors in the cab were locked, just in case, I always do. The lights were off, and it was pretty dark out, hence it being night, and being in the middle of the woods up here in northern Michigan. If you're wondering why I wasn't on my phone, well, I have no reception up in the area that we were, and my phone was dead at this point anyway. So all I could do is lie there, close my eyes, and hope the boredom would take me out, which it did eventually. Sometime, I don't know how much time has passed, but I would like to think maybe a couple of hours, because the moon was shifted in its position in the sky at this point, illuminating downwards, kind of like the sun does when it's at noon, directly overhead. Because of this, more of the camp and area was lit up. Even the fire, which when I went to bed, stupid me at the time, left it roaring, and I don't know if I was just so angry that I neglected to put it out, but you should never go to bed with a fire roaring. That was a no. But once I woke up, the fire was just crackling embers, so I knew it had been hours at this point. This is the way everything was when I woke up. But let me get to you the real reason of what woke me up, 
and the situation at hand that I dealt with. I was asleep when I could hear a sort of heavy, wheezing breathing that did not sound normal. You know how when you're still asleep and somebody comes in the room or you hear a noise and even though you're still kind of half asleep, your brain can process what that noise is, but yet you're not fully awake yet. Well, that's how I was. Me being half awake or half asleep, whichever way you prefer to see it, just thought it was my boyfriend. But after about three or four seconds, the breathing and raspy breath was too different than my boyfriend. It sounded nothing like him. I felt the fear start to rise. And that's when my brain took me from halfway asleep to awake in a matter of a second, it felt like. My eyes shot open, and I went to look towards the driver's side window, which, by the way, the way I was sprawled out and laying in the cab, my head was right up against the passenger side door, and my feet were up against the driver's side door. I'm only 5'2", so I slept semi-comfortably in here. Imagine that. When I looked up, all hell broke loose in my mind. Staring at me through the glass was what I can only describe as a real-life looking werewolf, or some sort of freaky, scary wolf-looking face, with the most intense yellow-orange eyes I've ever seen, staring dead into mine, with such an intense look on its face like it was pissed and it wanted to hurt me. In fact, the face was so intense and scary, it had an almost human-like emotion to it. It wasn't just an animal staring at me. There was an intelligence to it, a human-like quality, judging from the way the eyes were looking at me, and its expression they seemed to give. The mouth was only open partially, enough that it was breathing out of its mouth. But due to the darkness, and the minimal amount of light, even given off by the moon, I couldn't make out any teeth, at least right away. After what felt like 20 seconds, but was probably only two seconds, this thing stared at me, and then its eyes drifted slowly down to the door. And to my horror in that moment, my brain put all the pieces I needed to together. This thing had discovered that the way to get to me was through this tiny little piece of metal called a door. And it realized, I think in that moment, judging from the way its eyes were observing the door, that it was staring at the door handle. It stared at that for maybe a second, quickly looked back up at me, and then, not even a half second later, started grabbing the handle and jerking it rapidly and violently. That's when its entire demeanor changed. It went from a fierce, curious look to a violent, rageful, and wrathful creature. After turning Jekyll to hide on me, I began screaming at the top of my lungs, not sure what I was to do to keep this monster out of the cab of the truck. Now, it was hissing and growling and making all sorts of horrible noises along with its terrible breaths exposing all of its teeth like a frightened animal does. Kind of like if you've ever attacked a possum or got near a possum. How it opens its mouth and shows all of its teeth with its mouth gaping open. That's kind of what it reminded me of. Hence, where I grew up, I've seen enough possums to know that exact look on its face. It was aggressively trying to get into the truck. Part of me was so thankful that I bothered to lock the doors. Had I not, I probably wouldn't even exist anymore, and my mind doesn't even want to know how that thing would have torn me limb from limb, like I know it would have. After maybe trying the door for a little bit longer, it quickly went to the back of the truck, to where I could not see it. That's when I quickly sat up, hid myself in the sleeping bag. Then, it did the exact same thing to the passenger side door, shaking it violently wiggling the door handle, roaring, growling, and hissing, pressing its face up against the window, drooling and snarling. That went on for probably another 10 seconds. 
Then, it seemed to disappear. Just when I thought it was done. Trying to regain my breath and posture. And trying not to hopefully soil myself. This thing jumps in the bed of the truck. And reaches its hand through and shatters the back of the glass. It did this in one solid, fluid motion. Shattering the tiny little pane of glass. Reaching sporadically for me. And its hand looked like a mix between a raccoon's hand and every sort of werewolf hand you'd ever seen in a movie. But, due to the way it shattered the glass, it really cut itself deep by a large shard that torn to its hand. As soon as it stuck its arm through the window and tried to grasp for me, it screamed and let out this horrible howl of pain as it got blood all over the seat and ripped part of its arm open. It very quickly retracted its entire arm and hand from the window and cab of the truck. I heard it howling and screaming and making all sorts of noise and commotion. That's when I noticed too that the bed of the truck was now lighter. It must have left and now I could hear it barreling through the woods away from me, continuing to howl and scream and make a ton of noise. I took that as an opportunity. I bolted out of the truck, nearly falling on my face because I was still halfway in my sleeping bag. I jumped out, only in a t-shirt and my jeans, and ran towards the tent where my boyfriend was. Luckily, all the commotion was kind of stirring him awake, but I was shaking him frantically, smacking him as hard as I could, begging, screaming for him to wake up, when he asked me what was wrong, and I told him, there's a monster out there, it broke into your truck and tried to get me. He was still kind of stupefied in that state of half asleep, half drunk, and trying to process what I was telling him. Fortunately, he had a satellite phone. He was better prepped than I was for camping, and I used that to call 911, telling them. Now, this was important, because had I told them what I saw, they would have thought I was pranking them. So I told them that somebody was out here where we were camping and trying to hurt us with an axe. Yeah, I know lying isn't great, but it was the only way I knew they would ever take us seriously. Well, luckily for us, an officer was very close by, maybe only 10 minutes away from when we called. So he was able to respond and showed up promptly in a matter of time. After we got off the phone, we knew and felt like we would be sitting ducks, sitting in the tent, waiting for this thing to come back and get us, or at least get me, knowing that we're waiting for help to arrive. My boyfriend had a large knife with him, but I doubt that would have done much against whatever it is that I saw. My boyfriend, luckily, not having seen the horrors that I did, or really heard any of the sounds, yes, he was that passed out drunk kept trying to reassure me everything was going to be okay and everything will be fine. During those 10 or 12 minutes that it took for the officer to arrive, that thing that tried to break into the cab of the truck never showed itself again. We didn't hear any more noises after its initial running off. I mean, I would like to think that it got hurt pretty good. I saw how much blood that large shard of glass tore into its arm. That had to have hurt, and with how much it was squealing and screaming and carrying on, that told me that that glass really hurt this thing. Better it than me, I suppose. When the officer showed up there, he could see just how freaked out I was, and asked if everything was okay. Typical officer etiquette. I explained to him what happened, keeping up my false maniac story. When he took a look at the truck himself, looked back at me and said, huh, a maniac, huh? Looks like it was more than that. And the look he gave me, I'll never forget. It's like he knew. He asked to talk to me privately. And so I shrugged my shoulders at my boyfriend and he pulled me aside and said, look, I've been on the job for about seven years now. I've heard all sorts of stories about things you wouldn't believe. Things that go bump in the night out here in the woods of Michigan. And judging by the damage done to the cab 
and the snot and tracks all around the truck. You're not fooling anybody. I can see that this wasn't done by a person. That's when his demeanor changed to being really nice from serious and stern. He offered my boyfriend and I a ride home. I was very thankful for him taking me seriously, and I finally let my guard down, giving up the fake axe murderer maniac story that I had conceived while calling 911. My boyfriend, on the ride home, coming into full service, placed a call to have the car picked up by a tow truck later on the next day. I know my story isn't much, but I feel like a survivor. I've only ever heard legends of the Michigan Dogmen, and I had no clue that I would ever run into one face to face myself one day. If you or anybody you know has an encounter story you would like me to read on this channel, please send it to stories at whatlurksbeneath.com. The email can be found in the description below. Hi, What Lurks Beneath. I'm writing into you because I had a very strange occurrence the other day. In fact, it was just last week, in mid-November, while I have been a listener of your show for quite some time, and I do believe in the dogman phenomenon, I have never actually seen such a creature until just very recently. I was on my way back from a friend's house heading back home. This friend of mine lives in town, and I live about 15 or so minutes outside of town, 13 miles to be exact. Well, I was coming across a bend in the road, when my headlights, well, I'm sure you can guess what happened. They lit up a pair of eyes that were far too large to be deer. Before I go further with my account, there is tons and tons of deer in this area. Blacktail deer. I mean, they're literally everywhere. It's very easy to hit them. They're all over where I live and in town. And there are also lots of coyotes around here. So... That tells me there's a large food supply, and we do have the occasional cougar, but I haven't seen them, although I've heard talks about them. So, again, before I go further with my account, the only thing I can really think to rationalize this phenomenon is that this thing was lured to where there's a food source, hence the large deer population. Anyway, as I drove by, my headlights lit up, what I thought were deer eyes at first, but they looked wrong. They looked much larger than a deer. And within a half a second, this being stood up. And boy, was this creature mighty tall. It stood up and started to step out onto the road. But at this point, I was already driving past. But all I needed was a second to see exactly what this was. If you've ever seen any Hollywood horror movie about werewolves, this looked like it could have fit into its own werewolf Hollywood movie. I wasn't as much terrified as I was in complete and utter shock at what I just saw. I could have just said that it was a person in a costume. But why would somebody be out here in the middle of nowhere, on the side of a road, on a ditch? It doesn't really make much sense. And keep in mind it's pretty cold out here. I think at the time of this encounter, it was roughly 34 degrees outside. Nobody's going to be out in a Hollywood werewolf suit in 34 degrees in the middle of nowhere where it's dark. It just makes no logical explanation. Also, when this thing or dog man stood up, it was well over the height of the top of my car, and it was still in the ditch at this point and had not yet taken a step out onto the road, meaning this sucker had to have been enormous. Like I said, I only caught a quick glimpse and from what I could tell, this thing was just as wide as it was tall. An absolute massive creature. I didn't really get a chance to absorb every feature, but I kind of got the general idea. And it looked like a werewolf, as best as I could say, in a realistic format. The entire rest of the drive home, I had to sit there and process, did I really just see this? Was this for real? I couldn't believe it. I mean, I believed in the stories. But never in a million years would I ever suspect to actually see one with my own two eyes. Anyway, there's no sense in dragging this story on for a million years. I thought I would just like to share with you my own personal encounter and let you know for certainty these creatures are indeed real beings.
I really wouldn't consider myself living off the grid. But when it comes to eating, buying meat, I only purchase from those who grow and farm locally. And just recently, back a month ago, I had bought roughly 12 pounds of ground beef and some steaks. I bought these from a local farmer who lives in the area since they raise all their own cattle and slaughter it all themselves. I prefer that much more than buying it from the store. Much cleaner, much more lean. If you or anybody who reads this gets the chance to try their own locally owned beef, well, I'd highly recommend it. But that's not what my story is about. So, I go and pick up the meat, and it's a pretty cold night on this particular night. I want to say it dropped down below freezing. So, on this night, I left the meat in these two large paper bags in my truck. The cab of the truck, that is. So, I got out, locked my truck, went inside, went to bed. Well, the next morning, I got up to find something very peculiar. Something had tried to break into my truck over the course of the night. The handle was literally twisted off the driver's side door, and the glass was kind of bent in. Not shattered, but cracked, down by the tire, and where you would stand to get up and open the door, were the largest canid tracks I have ever seen. I was very puzzled by this finding, and I took the time to thoroughly observe who this potential robber could have been. I looked at the tracks, and they led all the way around the truck, off into this grassy knoll. A most disturbing find is the tracks were not quadrupedal like you'd expect from a dog. They walked in a very bipedal fashion. Some sort of bipedal canid with extremely large feet. I'm talking larger than my own two feet, and I wore size 13 boots. So, something came from this grassy knoll area, came over to my truck, and tried to break in. Keep in mind that in the morning, it was still roughly in the 30s. So, near freezing temperatures, which is why I left my meat in there. My freezer, if you're wondering why I didn't put it away, was still in the process of being semi-functional and having to clean it out before I put the meat away. Hence why I left it in the truck overnight to stay cold. Well, something must have smelt it. Even though I had the windows rolled up, and there's no possible way any animal or wildlife could have smelt it. At first, I thought it must have just been a trick of the soil, and thought to myself, this was a bear. But there are no bears around here. Maybe smaller black bears, but definitely not a grizzly bear or any large brown bear, since that is the only thing that would make sense to have this kind of power. I mean, had I taken pictures, something with tremendous force had to have ripped the metal handle off the door and nearly shattered the glass. Something was trying to get in the cabin of my truck. Why? I can only speculate because of the meat in there. I'm going to tell you about one of the most terrifying things that I've ever seen in my life. I've spent a lot of time in the wild, and I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with knowing what's around me and knowing the possibility of what I will run into. But this time, I can't say for sure. So, I want to set this up. I wasn't exactly out hiking in the great outdoors, lost in the woods, or anything fun like that. I was actually at the time in Central Oregon, outside of Redmond, Oregon, which, for those who didn't know, is actually the meth capital of the entire United States. It's not exactly a poor town, so I'm not sure why there is meth riddled in the community. Outside of Redmond is pretty deserty, and there are rattlesnakes and other things like that lurking, so you have to be careful. Well, I'm not going to go into the details because it's kind of embarrassing, but we'll just say that due to losing a bet, I was kind of out there in the middle of nowhere, stranded for hours on end without getting a ride or anybody picking me up. So, I'm out there trying to find my way back to the road, when I see something moving off in the distance. Now, this isn't like the typical Arizona-New Mexico desert, where it's so scorching hot, you have illusions. 
I mean, it's a desert, so it's still hot. But from what I saw far away, wasn't your typical desert illusion, like palm trees and oasis. No, this is what appeared to be a large upright dog walking off in the distance, perpendicular to the direction I was walking. It stood up behind some brush and began walking. This thing was a tall black figure, and the first thing I noticed were its tall cropped ears. It kind of resembled the head of a German shepherd, but it was fully black, and its ears were very long and pointed. Its body kind of reminded me of somebody in a furry dog suit. Whatever it was had large, long claws, and I could see it from where I was. This was at about 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and it was in the spring. Also, I was roughly 75 yards, if I had to take a good guess. This thing casually walked off, all the way till I couldn't see it anymore. And, from where it had rose up, I don't know what it was doing, why it was there, or where it came from, nor do I know exactly what it was, but it definitely freaked me out. I kind of gave slight mention of it to my friends hours later, when I found a main road and they picked me up. They just laughed at me, and told me I had probably popped a couple of mushrooms or had a tablet of LSD. But I hadn't. I know for sure what I saw. When I first saw it, my brain explained away all the oddities about it. That it was easily somebody in a suit, or that my friends were pranking me. But the farther and farther it walked, and the longer I stared at it, I began to become more and more terrified, realizing that none of those things exactly added up and I was looking at some upright unknown animal that nobody I knew or I myself knew had ever talked about or even knew about. I hardly knew anything about Bigfoot, and although I had heard of him, I am pretty sure he didn't look like an upright dog. This was something else entirely. So, fast forward a little bit later and I try to do some research on the subject. Well, turns out, I'm pretty confident that I saw some sort of dogman creature. This thing, for whatever reason, was in the desert. Why, I don't know. And are they commonly seen in this area of Oregon? I don't know that either, but I will never forget what I saw that day. I've been desperately trying to research and seek answers for my questions, but I cannot find any. Back in early June of this year, of 2020, I was staying at my cousin's place in Arkansas. He, at the time, had a very large Neapolitan Mastiff. Well, one morning, we found his dog outside, ripped to shreds and ribbons. There was nothing but gore, blood, and guts. Now, let me back up a little bit here. He's had the occasional black bear come onto his property, and his dog being the size that it is, has chased it off with ease. To his knowledge, there are no coyotes in the area. So, that would only leave a cougar. And cougars, from my understanding, will eat a meal. They would kill a dog. And you could bet that a size of dog like his would definitely do some damage to the cougar. And there'd be signs of a struggle and a fight. And a cougar wouldn't rip a Neapolitan Mastiff to shreds of ribbon and flesh. So, his question, and my question, is what the hell could have done this? We virtually have no idea. We searched around. We couldn't find any trace of struggle. Just a heaping pile of blood and gore. An awful thing to come out to. I feel most bad for my cousin, because he was very, very attached to that dog. I felt sick and nauseated coming out to that site. He hasn't seen or heard anything out of the ordinary. So, I've been trying to research and find if there's any answers I can find. Some have pointed to the possibility of a Bigfoot, a territorial one at that. But I don't know. I don't know how much I'm buying into the idea of a Bigfoot. But I will say that something killed that dog. Why? Why did we not hear it happen? Surely something with great strength would have caused it to explode. And we would have heard that. We would have heard the dog fighting and whimpering. Something had a heyday. 
and whatever predator or animal it was, didn't even bother eating it. It just killed it, shredded it up, and left. Also, there are no marks or traces of whatever did it. No tracks, nothing. We truly were visited by a silent assassin. I was staying at a hotel in downtown Minneapolis. It was one of those single-story roach traps that everybody knows are a great idea to stay away from. But being desperate and broke and staying on the road would have been a death sentence. So I got checked in and nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary upon first look. I remember looking out my window and looking right into the window of another nearby hotel. I thought it was kind of strange that two businesses like that would be literally back to back. But then again, it's not unusual to see two different pharmacies on the same block, one of them deliberately building close to the other in hope to rival the business. Being too tired to even watch TV, I found myself drifting back to the window just to stare outside and look at the sky. Now, I don't know how long it had been since I'd been staring, but I swore I saw a large and exceptionally ugly dog looking at me. My sister has a Roddy that has even won contests for its size and weight, and I'm pretty sure that this animal that I was looking at was even larger. It even sniffed the glass as I could pick up my scent. I began looking around for a light source that must have been nearby for some reason for this animal's eyes to give off light the way it was. Similar to the eye shine that you get from any animal that walks in front of your headlights. Except I never recalled seeing eye shine in an animal that had yellow, honeyish, amber eyes to it. It was disturbing. My puzzlement only increased when this creature began backing away from the window. I had imagined this whole time it was standing on its hind legs and leaning on the windowsill with its forelegs. But as it backed away slowly, it never fell down to the ground, as dogs normally would, and you'd expect them to since they walk on all fours. The only way it could have stayed visible on that level was if it was clearly walking on two legs, like you or I. Now, with two walls between me and the thing, I wasn't exactly afraid, but there was this extreme unease that settled over me, and I couldn't shake it. I tried walking away from the window and watching TV, using the restroom, and even taking a shower. But I was always compelled to come back to the window, where my canine voyeur would be standing there waiting. And didn't its legs ever get tired? On several glances, I swear I caught the thing walking past the window, the same way that I was. Maybe I was getting the idea that it was toying with me. But what dog would be smart enough to do that, that far away, in such a complex housing arrangement? I considered reporting it, but I didn't even know which room the next door building was, and it wouldn't look good if I just went in and started snooping around. It's safe to say I did not sleep well that night. Days later, after I had just gotten on the road, I was looking up the news in Minneapolis just in case somebody found a walking dog in a hotel. There was apparently a report of a homicide. One of the cleaning personnel was found dead, with wounds that looked like they had been inflicted by a supposed wild animal. In my mind, there couldn't be any mistaking it. Why they never saw the thing or caught up to it till then, I don't know. How it even got inside the building unnoticed, I'll never know. It's disturbing just knowing that these animals can walk among us, enter our daily lives and dwelling places without ever being seen has really, really disturbed me. Anyway, this happened about 15 years ago. This is my encounter with what I would call a wolfman on a moving vehicle. I'm pretty much on call 24 seven for a towing company that is used heavily by a roadside assistance outfit. You know how it works. You pay a premium, and no matter where you are, you make a phone call, 
and a tow truck will come, even in the middle of the night. The person driving that tow truck is usually me. Needless to say, I don't smile much. I guess I'm not a huge people person, although I do enjoy getting people out of sticky situations when it comes to cars. Something happened to me, though, that has seriously made me consider a change of careers, even though I don't have much to work with for qualifications. I did receive a phone call about servicing a call that originated out on a remote highway next to a thick, vast pine forest near the mountains. Of course, it couldn't have just been a pine forest nearby, but it had to be up in the mountains. Anyway... I arrived at the GPS coordinates at about a quarter till midnight. It was pretty dark and cold, since this was late fall, early winter. I found the vehicle, but I did not find the person that made the call. It was difficult to see in the flashing yellow lights of my tow truck. I dug out a heavy-duty flashlight and began shining it around. Well, I found the caller. It was a woman, sprawled out in the grass, I felt a tightness in my chest when I could see that she was covered in blood. I got back in my tow truck, locked the doors, and called 911 immediately. I was about to put my first call through when something enormous collided with my truck, making the windshield burst nearly in cracks. Crouched on the hood of my truck, looking at me in the eye, was a horrendous-looking canine creature. I couldn't make out much else but the face being so vivid and glowing eyes that its memory born to my brain. It showed its teeth, acted extremely aggressive and hostile, and snarled at me. This was some sort of wolf, literally the size of a bear, and the killing power of a monster truck running over somebody. I know that's a bizarre description, but when you're in the moment of absolute fear, this thing could have ended my life in the snap of a finger. I started my truck and began to go as fast as I could. And if you've ever seen a tow truck, you know they aren't made to turn on a dime. I consider myself indescribably lucky that there were no other vehicles nearby. Had anybody been coming, there would have been a terrible accident. I made it back onto the road, but had terrible momentum and I was fishtailing, scraping and bumping. At one point, this thing's head swung down and smashed into my driver's side window. After one sharp turn, it nearly overturned my vehicle. I saw the body of this thing tumbling across the road on the ground. After that, I took a leave of absence for as long as I legally could without losing my job. You can imagine, I was interrogated by the police. Well, maybe interrogation is the wrong word. Questioned up and down is perhaps the right terminology. I didn't dare tell my employer, though, what I saw. And I only told the police what little I can tell them without being written off as insane. The case didn't really seem to make it on the news and was probably just written off as a wild animal attack, potentially eaten by a bear. This happened just this last fall and winter. And to be honest with you, it's been an exercise keeping in straight and not having panic attacks. I've had to be put on night calls again. I mean, with COVID, I have to pay the bills. So, I don't have much of a choice. I don't have very many great credentials, and finding another job that pays as well as this one would be very difficult. Again, in COVID times, it seems impossible. But it's something I know I have to do, unless I want to die but I fear that I'll have to go out again in the night to another call deserted in the middle of nowhere and face this horrible monstrosity. I was stationed in Iraq during the presidency of Obama. I'm one of the fortunate few that had been assigned to a place where there wasn't much of action of any kind. But the only thing I had to worry about was keeping the sand out of my rifle. We were surrounded by a lot of wild desert, and if you know anything about the geography of the Middle East, well, I can tell you there's a lot of sand and a lot of hot temperatures. Based on what we had experienced before, 
it was only a matter of time before the enemy attacked us. This particular platoon spent our share of time in gasoline patrolling the rock-studded desert, where you hope to God you never get stranded. It was one evening, when the sun was about setting, and one of my fellow soldiers urged me to follow him. He said that he found something incredible. We were driving out into the desert when he told me that he was throwing some rocks into some of the caves, and he heard the sound of something shattering. He investigated. It was a long and narrow cavern. Our bodies lit up to a collection of earthenware that looked so ancient, and I just thought of breathing on them would turn them to dust. My fellow soldiers supposed that they were worth something if they could be extracted, most of them being pots and jars, and they looked like they could be used to carry all sorts of liquids and other goods. There were a few oil lamps in the style of a civilization. I took a few moments to notice, but every last piece of pottery, for some inscription or decoration, seemed to be related to wolves, where there were depictions of a full body. The animal appeared to be walking on two legs, not unlike Anubis from Egyptian mythology. I felt like I was at a crossroads between looking at Fenris from Norse mythology and Anubis. A few seconds later, I was looking at something else and I have no idea where it came from or what it was, but it appeared to be blocking the exit to the cavern. It had to duck slightly to step inside. I couldn't see definitive features other than its outline and its eyes. But I kid you not, its eyes were lit up like a Hollywood effect. We turned our lights on, and I instantly wish we had not. Walking on its back legs, just as naturally as me and my fellow soldiers, was walking on ours, was this monstrous creature that looked like some sort of beast mix between a dog and a man. It resembled the German Shepherd, and was a solid onyx black. I think that was the point where my fellow soldier soiled himself. He told me that's what he did once we got out of that mess. I'm probably foreshadowing the outcome of this story a little too much, but hear me out. We might not have survived if it weren't for the fact that we were packing heavy firepower. You don't realize how much of a punch that these firearms pack. Think of it. A standard human body is torn apart like a pulpy tomato. This animal was actually staggering backwards for what felt like forever. When it was actually five seconds before it went down, even after it hit the ground, it still appeared to be moving. I double tapped the head to make sure that it wasn't going to give us any more trouble. We weren't sure what the bigger find was of the day. The cave, or the human half-monster dog thing. We dragged both back to base. We both figured that we were going to become some big figures. Two American soldiers finding relics and a new species of animal. But the American government personnel did indeed come out and take both the body and relics. But nobody came for us. We kept a close eye on the news, and there was no report of any kind of the body we found. The world never found out about what happened, and nobody would give us an explanation why. Again, this all happened years ago, and unfortunately, since retiring from the military, I haven't exactly felt comfortable sharing this information. But if you think my story is a little far-fetched, well, let me tell you something else. I've had fellow soldiers who have also supposedly seen giants, just like described in the Bible, orange hair and everything. If you really don't know much about it, just simply research it. It's pretty crazy, but I will stand firmly with what me and my friends saw that day, something I can never hope to describe or see in America. I was hiking in an off-trail pine forest in Colorado. I was truly off trail. There were no previously beaten paths for me to tramp down. So, you can imagine my surprise when a stone came sailing out of the air and smacked into the nearby tree right next to me. I called out to whoever was throwing the stones, and there were people in line of fire. Not more than a few moments later, another rock 
the size of my fist came whizzing right by my face. Maybe they were hard of hearing, or they just couldn't hear me, or so I thought. Somebody with a really good arm on them could throw further than they could hear. I yelled as loud as possible and screamed, stop throwing rocks. Then came another one. Only this one hurt me on the upper thigh. I danced and cussed. I waited for another rock to come flying. I got a pretty good idea of what part of the opposite hillside these rocks were coming from. I had binoculars on me and began to sweep the area to see who could have been throwing them. If I had been panning any faster, I probably would have missed because the colors blended in with the woodland so seamlessly. Since I was looking at it through binoculars, I almost thought it was somebody in a Halloween costume. But there was something about the way the drool was running from the chin that convinced me that what I was seeing was indeed real. Take your average man that's built like a brute, add a lot of hair and fur covering, but all the extremities, such as hands and feet, give it the mouth full of teeth in such bad disarray and make it look like an angry, angry dog. That's the best way I can describe what I was seeing. At first, the word Bigfoot crossed my mind, but last I checked, Bigfoots don't look like giant dogs on two legs. I wasn't really sure what to think. In my heightened state, I felt like whatever this was, it was looking straight into my eyes. Without breaking its glare, it stooped down, picked up another large rock, and threw it with nearly calculated precision. If it could aim like that from a distance, I didn't want to find out how good its arm was up close. I fled, and I made sure I had everything when I left that forest. It did not follow me, thankfully, which led me to believe that I had incited some sort of bizarre territorial behavior. Maybe I was nearing a den or something. Either way, it was bad news, and I clearly wasn't welcome. So, I've never gone back. As far as what exactly I dealt with that day, well, I'm not quite sure. Maybe you can figure it out for me. I'm hoping you might be able to explain to me what the hell I saw last night. I was out for a run, or at least validate for me that I'm not stone cold crazy. Since I go for a run most evenings or very early in the morning and have used the same route for years now, but this is the first time and like anything this has ever happened. And to be honest with you, I'm still in the process of trying to digest it I live up in Maine, and there are plenty of beautiful running tracks around here. You have to be careful of specific wildlife, but the closest encounter I have ever had to something like this was a moose who just refused to get out of the way in the road. So you can believe me when I say this has me terrified. I'm also a strong, firm person of science, and had I not seen this thing with my own eyes, there would have been no way in hell I would have ever thought it possible. I hadn't been drinking. I have never taken drugs. I was sober. Yet, stood in my path, blocking my way as that moose had done, was a creature that looked like a man, but also part wolf or dog. It was as tall as you and I, but very, very broad. It reminded me of a linebacker. If the creature had been purely human, I would have thought possible that it could have been the rock. So you get the point of it being large and very, very muscular. To the point to where I could see its muscles rippling through its fur. There was no possible way this was somebody playing a joke or in a costume. The details were just far too vivid. You see... Not only was it covered in a sort of reddish fur, the legs were bowed at the knee, like a dog's hind limbs. No human could pull that off. The arms were more human-like, 
and except for being covered in thick hair, of course. But they hung from the side and reached sort of thigh length. Its hands were clenched, so I was unable to ascertain whether it had actual hands or paws. It had a very thick muscular neck, and the head reminded me of kind of like a reddish German shepherd with more pointier ears and a bit longer snout. Literally, only seeing the head, you'd mistake it for nothing more than just a very large dog. But as I slowed down, I came up close to it, somehow willing it to just step out so I could race home. Once it realized my presence, it quickly began following me, picking up its pace to try and chase after me. Honestly, something that large could have easily grabbed me and taken me down like an innocent gazelle being chased like a lion. Why it didn't get to me, I don't know, but I made it back in record time. Thank goodness for all those runs. Had I not had such strong legs, I probably would have been a goner. Now that I have written this down and sent it to you, it sounds like it might have been a dream, but it was not. Has anybody else experienced anything like this up in the main area? And could you help me find out exactly what it is I saw that day? Whatever animal this could have been. I was camping out in Alaska, but at the time, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. It was a strong feeling that came over me. It only got stronger. In fact, that first night, I barely slept at all. I was expecting someone or something to come barreling into my tent and make a move on my life, or try and rob me, actually. I remember laying there with my eyes open in the darkness, feeling inexplicable dread. The fear visit never came to pass, but I was convinced that whatever was out there, it was only biding time. I couldn't take it anymore. My outing that was supposed to relieve stress at the time was causing more than it was worth. So, I packed up and headed back to my car, which was a good half a mile walk. I brought my revolver with me and kept it out, just in case I ran into any loose vagabonds trying to take me down, or anybody that wouldn't settle for me just leaving. After all, you never know when you're out in the wild. My car was at the bottom of a hill, and I was coming down a slope. Now, on the opposite side of my car, there was something that was just as far away from my car on their side as I was on mine. It was tall enough to announce that, even from a distance, it clearly wasn't human, and I could tell it was bad news. The way it carried itself reminded me of a stalking hunter, and my inner instincts told me that it had to have been some sort of animal that had been watching me since I arrived. Its body, covered in a mix of brown and gray fur, which made me think it was older for some reason. It eyed me with a gaze as intense as you can imagine. And when I moved for the car, it also did. I had to race. My car was the finish line. It hurried, but I was burdened with my camping gear. So it would be the faster of the two of us. While only about 45 seconds from my car, while I was over one minute away, I took the chance on my sportsmanship, raising my revolver and taking a couple shots. There was a half second delay between the hammer hitting and this thing staggering back a few steps. But it regained itself and it kept coming quicker. Firing a second time and a plume of dirt next to its feet told me that my aim was clearly off. However, if it were cunning, it would have hid behind my car. After shot number three, it appeared that I hit it in the shoulder. It let out a sharp cry of pain that seemed to create this inhuman scream. And then it gave me a look that told me it was pissed. I knew I probably just signed my death certificate right there. However, 
after taking a fourth shot. I didn't waste any time. I tried to shoot it dead in the face, but I somehow missed. This thing turned around, and I think was heading back into the woods towards my direction. I had no idea what it was planning. Maybe it was going to flank me. Maybe it was going to entrap me. As soon as I got close to my car, and shortly after this thing disappeared back into the woods, I began hearing more of these strange, bizarre cry howls, as I call them, coming from multiple spots around me in the woods. That's when I realized I was deep in trouble. There wasn't just one. There must have been a pack of these things, or multiples, and all I had seen was the one. They were planning an attack, and probably going to move in quick. All I can say was I was in my car and had it started faster than ever. As I was pulling away quickly, multiple of them stepped out of the woods and began chasing my car, once far bigger than the one I saw. It was a terrifying experience, but they let me go. Even though they seemed like they possessed the power to chase down my car, rip open the door, and tear me limb from limb, I was somehow spared, and I'm lucky enough to be able to be writing it to you. That's my story out in the Alaskan wilderness. What I encountered that day will never be forgotten. One day, I was driving home from work when I saw something in the road not too far in front of me. Since I have to commute on some backcountry roads, it isn't unusual to come across an animal who thinks they have the right to just sit there whilst I either attempt to maneuver around or sit honking my horn. I've seen it all. Peasants, foxes, deer, even a badger one time. Whatever this thing was, was pretty big, and I could tell it was going to need to move as I wouldn't be able to drive past it without getting myself stuck. I am also an avid animal lover, so there is no way I would just run it over. As I was approaching it, it showed zero interest in moving. At this point, though, I still can't make out what sort of creature it is, and I could see from the angle that it is facing the other way. I remember thinking that if for some reason it couldn't hear very well, then it might have not sensed I was coming. I put my hand on the horn and beeped a good four or five times. Usually, if it's a deer, it'll freak out and scare it off. However, I have never seen a reaction like this. It stood up fully on two legs and turned to face me. It was terrifying. Only it wasn't a person. It appeared to be a large, when I say large, I mean very large, hairy dog. Was it a person? No. Could it have been somebody celebrating Halloween early? No. It was far too large. But it was very thin, covered in very dark short hair reminding me somewhat of a Doberman pincher in the head. I was in so much shock, I didn't even put my foot on the brake. If I hadn't suddenly moved, I would have knocked it over. Some sort of survival instinct must have struck it, as though just before I was about to hit it with my car. It clearly vanished. I don't mean disappeared into thin air. I meant it turned and ran off into the thicket so quickly I barely had time to even notice it. If I would have blinked, I don't even think I would have seen it. I just drove home after that, in shock the entire way. Now, I look out for it every time I go that way, but I've never seen it again. I've told a few friends and even a coworker that I believe I saw an undiscovered species of dog. Back in January of this year, when it was still cold in the wintertime, my girlfriend's family and I decided to have a weekend bonfire where we set out, cooked some barbecue chicken, and sat around the fire. Well, after the night grew weary, and my girlfriend's mom and dad and brother all retired to bed, it was just my girl and I 
sitting out by the fire, kissing, talking, and just staring off into the night. It was incredibly peaceful and wonderful to every degree. Until we heard a horrible, horrible roar that shook us both. This roar is far off in the canyon. On the back side of my girlfriend's father's house is a very, very large canyon that has woods separating the backyard from that canyon. Whatever this roar came from, it didn't sound like any animal I've ever heard of or I would want to meet. And not only was it loud, but it was incredibly deep. It had such low vibrations you know how like if you've ever played bass and you're playing it through an amp and when you pluck a note, you could feel the vibrations hitting your body. It was kind of like that. Whatever animal made this sound had to have been of enormous size and for it to carry out in the canyon like that, the way it did, for as long as it did, disturbed me and my girlfriend. That's another thing. The howl or roar lasted 10 to 15 seconds. It was incredibly loud. It did scare me, but it scared my girlfriend far more, to the point she was shaking, got up, put the fire out, and told me to come on, we're going in the house. And in the house we went. I wasn't going to argue with her. It freaked me out too. I was worried that whatever it was was going to come up this way, attracted by the only light surrounding the area. A fire. I'm glad we got out of there, and I didn't have to see what made this noise. At the time, it seemed like any typical disturbance of my cattle. Something had spooked them, and they were running, and mooing, and carrying on. So I grabbed my shotgun, and went outside to take a peek. Come to find out, that it was much more than a simple matter of them being spooked. I came across a few of my cows lying on the ground, bleeding out. So that's when I began moving with a purpose, if you get me. Even when it comes to predators like wolves, an adult cow can hold its own pretty well, unless it's sick or injured. So, my mind was working to figure out what could have gotten the best of some of my cows so quickly. I didn't have the time to perform autopsies. I rushed out to where the action was. My small herd was cowering from what looked to be a man. I yelled to it that I was armed and dangerous and it didn't seem to hear. So I tried to get an angle where none of my cows would take any of the buckshot. Walking around the thing as it was lunging at my cows got me a full picture of what it was that I was exactly up against, and it wasn't pretty. It was just like the pictures you see in some of the pyramids, the ones with the dog god thing. It just wasn't wearing fancy clothes. But it looked every bit like the pointy-faced black dog that walked around on two legs. I think they call it Anubis, but I could be wrong. It appeared to have that really sleek and pointed snout and muzzle. The eyes were wide open and clearly flushed with adrenaline. It slashed at my cows with claws that were very long. I almost wondered how it avoided cutting itself. I finally got to an angle where I could take a shot and see what would happen. The cloud of shot pelted the monster, and fur blew away in a small cloud of blood. That's when I had its attention. Narrow as the head seemed to be, the teeth were long, and I could see just how long because it bared them at me in a special shade of anger. Despite the shock of the wound, it tried to charge me. So, I let it have it with the other barrel. That should cut deep enough that I could see chinks of bone peeking out. It kept howling, in a horrible pain, but Jess kept coming. I was doing a number. I still had time to chamber another two shells and let them go. 
the volley shredded most of the meat off of its head. And somehow, the thing kept staggering towards me. I chambered two more shells, and ladies and gentlemen, that was all she wrote. Thing was, after that shot, there wasn't anything left to share with the press. I had a skeletal mass of pulp and vaporized tissue. If I reported this, there was a solid chance that it could be misconstrued as a human body. Then, who would look after my cows? I could be facing some serious prison time, and nothing I could say would change that. So, I more or less took the loss of my cows for the sake of my personal freedom. I try to use the slain as much as possible, but there's only so much beef a farming family can eat. Anyway, that's my story. You're free to use it if you'd like. I live outside the incredibly small town of Weaverville in Northern California. Basically, I live in the sticks, and I believe I saw something, some kind of animal, some creature, that I'm not quite sure what it is. I can't explain it, but the only description I can give you is that it resembled that of a Great Dane, except standing up on two legs. The only connection I have is when I grew up, I was very close to my aunt. She always had two Great Danes with her. My entire upbringing, any time the pair would die or one would die, she would buy another. It was very odd, so that's always stuck out to me. And what I saw that night closely resembled that exactly of a Great Dane. In fact, I even suspected it at first and was wondering how weird it was that it was walking around. But on closer inspection, even though it was as large and as tall and lanky, it resembled more of a coyote from what I could tell. Very, very slender. Its legs were a little more muscular than that of a dog's, but still had the hawks and everything. It stared at me from the wood line, kind of glowing red orbs of eyes, but not like monster red. They were just a warm red glow, an unnatural glow at anything. I wasn't really afraid as much as I was confused. It seemed to be watching me very nervously, like it had got caught doing something and was waiting for me to leave. I don't know. It doesn't really make sense, but that's the vibe I got from it. At the time, I was in my backyard, splitting firewood, when I happened to look up and see this thing staring at me. My backyard isn't the largest, but those trees go on for quite a while. I want to say another five, six miles. I could be way off, but I know it's a ways back there. I've only seen this animal once, and this was about three months ago, right in the height of summer. I have never seen it since, nor heard of it. I have no idea what it could be. From what I know, it could possibly be some sort of rabid wild dog, although I've never heard of rabid wild dogs around here and by themselves, and especially ones that look like Coyote Great Danes. Hi What Lurks Beneath, absolutely love your channel and a close friend of mine actually has their own horrifying war story to share that somehow involves these dogmen. I had them type it up and send it to me, and they've given me their full permission for me to send this to you and you to read it. So, feel free to read it to your audience if you'd like. Anyway, I've copied and pasted this story in, so here you go. My battalion was pushing into Al-Qaeda stronghold, which was a little more than a few city blocks of super thick buildings. It was no fortress, but the tactics they used could try the nerves of any soldier. More than once, I saw my men charged by children that had explosives strapped to their backs. If they ran back where they came from, they'd be shot by their captors. If they ran towards my men, 
they had to decide if they could live with sacrificing a child for the lives of their fellow soldiers. It was a dire time, and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. The further we pushed into the stronghold, the more we got to see just how old the quarter of the city was. It seemed to be so old that it was mostly uninhabited, and not just due to the occupation by this group. We managed to get by what we had thought was an established perimeter. We found it completely left open, with no security whatsoever. Very sloppy compared to what we usually got from them. We went down a dark alleyway that was so narrow that we had to proceed in single file. That put us at a disadvantage tactically, but what else were we going to do? We were used to hearing voices rattling off something in, say, a language we didn't recognize. Instead, we heard something different that actually got us and made our skin crawl. It sounded like a howling noise, followed by a snarling, and then a yelping or a barking. It sounded nothing like people and everything like animals. The flashlights on our M16s showed us that we were in a courtyard where a dried up fountain stood in the center. There was a sculpture in the fountain and it didn't make sense at the time. But looking back, I'm chilled by the memory even further. It was a woman with the head of a dog. We had no idea that it was a bit of foreshadowing of what was to come. We soon saw movement Bodies were crawling down over walls and leaping from windows into the courtyard with us. We were too tactically engaged to notice they weren't human. Bear-sized bodies with the shapes of drooling, snarling wolves became more and more evident. It was like a badly written sequel to Teen Wolf with unlimited stunt doubles. The mission parameters instantly narrowed to preserving the detachment we opened fire on the monsters, and they didn't exactly melt at the touch of live ammunition. They did eventually die, but it was more like they were succumbing to bee stings than bullets. They were able to absorb a ridiculous amount of gunfire before they refused to move anymore. It's rumored that the Iraq war might have ended sooner if we hadn't been pushed back so hard. But in this instance, these weren't terrorists. These were animals, and they were unusually tough. The reports connected to that mission were never released, especially publicly. The U.S. would never gracefully accept a report that her troops were pushed back by wild animals during a key mission. Most of our internal commanders didn't accept it either. Anyway, that's my story. So there you go. There's the story that I had him tell me and write down and send to me. I know the guy personally. Very honest, hardworking. Has done multiple tours over to Iraq. I don't know the exact number, but I'm pretty sure it's like three, four, or maybe five. He's got his experience. Anyway, I hope this is at least interesting. Have a good day. Hi, my name's Roy, and I have a story to tell you from my childhood. So, I grew up with an older brother. At the time of the story, I was seven, and he was nine. We used to play all the time in the spring and summer in a very large patch of woods directly behind our house. We spent hours and hours back there playing together, playing swords with sticks, building tree forts, pretending to start fires, cops and robbers, you name it. We spent hours exploring, looking at bugs, trying to find buried treasure, like any kids do. You know, all the stuff. We tried to spend the majority of our free time outside when we could, mainly because inside offered us no entertainment. My parents didn't have any TVs, no game systems, nothing. We had a few books here and there, but nothing my brother and I were interested in. 
so we try and spend all of our time outside and live like real kids do. But that changed halfway during a summer, when I was seven and he was nine. We were out playing, and I remember we had a game of hide-and-go-seek. Well, I was it, and so I counted to 50. This time, before I could even finish counting, he comes back running, screaming, all the way back to the house. It completely caught me off guard and by surprise. Then, I thought he was pranking me or trying to joke with me, and so I laughed and ran after him. But he was just bawling hysterically, crying, screaming, running to the back door. I chased after him and tried to get him to slow down, but he didn't. He didn't even acknowledge me. He was in a total state of shock and fear. When he got to the back door, I finally caught up with him. My mother was busy doing something, so it took her a minute, if not more, to get to the back door. She usually kept it locked. I had never seen my brother in my life so overtaken by a pure raw emotion as that is fear. It wasn't until a little later, even my mom was freaked out, that she was able to fully get him calmed down. But it was days before he would tell any of us what exactly happened. He just kind of said he saw something, but we really couldn't get anything out of him. Then, days after that, he told me what it is that he saw. It had been about a week, and he asked me if I could keep a secret, and I told him yes. Even more so, being only seven years of age, you want to do anything to be by your brother, and him and I are very close, still. So he told me that he saw a real-life werewolf as he ran to hide. It was walking up to him from behind the tree, reaching out to grab him, from what he said. He said it was big and hairy, covered in dark black fur, with huge fangs and large eyes and ears. It scared him so bad that he ran away. He was pretty serious about it too. He was very shaken up about it, retelling the story at nine years of age. Plus, he had no desire to go back and play in the woods for the rest of the year, which was a huge loss for both of us. So we just kind of stayed inside and were bored the rest of the summer. Now that we're older, and both in our later 20s, I'll ask him about it sometimes. And he basically just tells me what I told you already. That he believes he saw some sort of creature that resembled the werewolves. He's pretty firm on his belief that vampires, mummies, werewolves, those don't exist. But there can be animals out there that have the same resemblance as made-up Hollywood creatures. I mean, that's a lot more plausible than the idea of an actual werewolf existing. So, as he went on to describe it to the T, basically said exactly what he did when he was nine. It stood up on two legs, covered in dark black fur. He said it was really thick, kind of like a shaggy dog, long and gangly and very unkempt like it had been rolling around in dirt and filth and muck. And he said its face was somewhere of a cross between a German shepherd and a wolf, a very pronounced brow ridge, kind of like some monkeys do, and very, very long ears that were very pointed and a long muzzle and huge, sharp canines. This thing was walking towards him, extending both of its arms like it was going to grab him, but it made no effort to run after him or move any faster than a casual slow pace, even after he started running. The whole thing is weird, he tells me, but it is what it is. The following spring and summer, we continued to play back in those woods, and never had any problems afterwards. We moved out of that house, and all the way across town, when we were 15 and 13, right around high school age. Anyway, that's my story or I should say my brother's story. I never saw or heard or seen anything. I was forcing myself to go camping because I was out of shape at the time and I knew that if I did not develop a taste for fresh air and something like exercise, I was gonna have a miserable last stretch of my existence. 
I'm also kind of a hypochondriac, and I'm only 36. Several of my friends got a camping trip together for old times sake. Old times that I were never a part of because I was far too afraid of the outdoors. So, I went along. It didn't do too bad, except I couldn't stand to be far away from anyone for too long. There was something about being by myself outdoors that made me feel exposed and uncomfortable. I think my friends took turns pawning me off onto each other, as if they were some collective group of babysitters. I had a breakthrough when I was moved to stand and stare at a pond that we discovered at the campsite. For a moment, I forgot about being afraid, and I forgot about being alone. The bad part was, when I finally started paying attention to what was around me, I found that I was alone. That's when the first wave of panic hit me. I frantically looked around for somebody, anybody that would be nearby. I heard some movement in a nearby cluster of trees, and I was pretty sure that my friends couldn't have gone very far. Nor did I think it likely that they would deliberately abandon me, considering my mental state. I didn't stop to think about the possibility that it could be somebody that I didn't know, or a bear, or worse. It was worse. It turned around in time to look at me, and I think for a half second, we both wore the same expression of confusion. This thing walked on two legs, but was no human being. It looked down at me from a very thick bear-like neck and head that was plunged onto hunched huge shoulders. The face resembled somebody trying to crossbreed a dog with a pig. Some of its teeth protruded like tusks, but it had the black nose and a smashed face of a hog. The ears were weird as well. They were very long and very rough looking, like they were torn apart. I'm sorry, that probably doesn't make any sense. They were kind of gross. I picked a random direction and I just ran. I thought it was running behind me, but I couldn't tell the sounds of my footsteps from it. My friend has no trouble finding me as much as the screaming as I was doing. They say that I was screaming something about a giant dog. Evidently, they didn't see what had been behind me. I asked them about it and none of them saw anything. Perhaps the thing was just as startled by me as I was of it but I know nothing of what I saw. I'm merely only guessing, and I thought it would be best if I reached out to you, since you seem to have answers and know exactly what these people deal with. Based on the descriptions that I gave you, what is it that you think I saw? I was just a kid myself. The first time my little sister told me about her pet, we all presumed it was just some imaginary playmate that she had created, since we weren't allowed pets in the apartment complex. She talked for hours about Doggy, and how she only saw him at nighttime, and that he was her special friend. She took it quite far as well, starting to sneak bits of food out of the fridge, or save bits of her supper to take out to him. We lived in a second floor apartment, and although she wasn't allowed to go down into a shared yard where it was dark, our mom had a small balcony from her bedroom. So, she'd go there to see Doggy and give him his treat. Sometimes I'd ask if I could come see him too, and she'd shake her head no. Doggy won't come if he sees anybody else, she'd tell me. So serious and solemnly, it was almost compelling. This went on for years. Sometimes, there would be a complaint about some dirt having been kicked up in the yard or the trash cans knocked over. One time, there were even scratch marks on the outside of the balcony, and again, Doggy got the blame. In the end, I had to know. 
I knew there couldn't be any way in hell that my little sister actually had a dog that only manifested at nighttime and was somehow big enough to reach our second floor balcony. It was absolutely 100% impossible. I also knew that she wouldn't let me go and see Doggy, so I just have to sneak. So that evening, after supper, I clutched my belly and said I needed a visit to the bathroom. I might be a while. I remember seeing her pocket a sausage from her plate, so I knew she was going straight out whilst mom cleared dishes. I shot out of the room, but instead of the bathroom, I raced into my mom's bedroom and hid in the closet. Then I waited. Sure enough, moments after, I heard her come in and slide open the balcony door. Then I heard her. As quietly as I could, I opened the door. I remember thinking at that point, my sister should get into performance art as the panting and snuffling noises coming from the balcony sounded very realistic. Then, I saw it. Doggy. I don't know how tall it was, whether it was standing on something or strong enough to have climbed up and to hang onto the railing, but I could clearly see its face in the shadows, thanks to the security light. It was definitely some kind of dog, but unlike anything I had ever seen. It was slightly obscured by the railings, but I can make out that it was eating the leftover sausage with one of its hands, because this dog had long arms and hands kind of like a person, but a definite dog head and face and had yellow, dull glowing eyes. Staring at my sister, I was frozen in terror. This dog thing looked like something that had been released straight from hell. Yet she didn't seem one bit afraid. She had reached through the railing and even tried to pat it. It honestly could have killed her in an instant. I could see the veins and muscles throbbing through its giant hair. But instead, looked at her. Leaning over the railing, she said bye to her pet and said see you later. And just like that, she walked back out of her mom's room, not noticing me. I waited for another moment, and then, overcoming my fear, I tiptoed out of the balcony and peered over the railings. I heard a low growl that made my stomach turn to water, and I could tell you that I really did need the bathroom then. The next evening after supper, she came back to the table after going out to see this thing, what she called Doggy, with a look of disappointment. He wasn't there. Mom had ruffled her hair, had said not to worry, but he never came back. Whether it was a coincidence, or whether that growl was a message, that he'd been betrayed or something, I don't know. But we never had another visit, and my sister never talked about it again. I've even tried to get her to mention it, and she somehow knows no idea what I'm talking about. But I know what I saw. Sometimes I have to remind myself that monsters are indeed real. I feel like I'm living in a Goosebumps book sometimes. I think the only reason that this creature was even coming around was basically because my sister was feeding it, and quite well. She would bring a lot of food out there. It wasn't just like scraps or half a sandwich. It was a lot. This thing never acted friendly in a traditional pet sense, but it did act neutral. Again, if you're offering something a food source, it makes sense that it's going to lure it in. I'm just surprised it didn't take her for whatever reason. A few months ago, I decided to do some urban exploring. It's something that I had been really interested in for a while, but just hadn't gotten around to actually doing anything about it. I'd gotten as far as buying a kit for it and doing the investigation. You know, surveying a spot, checking for security. I just hadn't had the right prerequisite kick up the butt 
to get up and actually doing it. Then, I had a massive fight with my then-girlfriend, in which not only did she dump me, but was also quite cutting in her remarks. That was my catalyst. So, off I went. Only, things didn't quite turn out as planned, as they never do. Being a bit of a horror buff, one of the criteria was when I was selecting the location of my first urbex, was the likelihood of it being haunted. The prospect of actually seeing a ghost and catching it on camera, and then of course, putting it on a specially created YouTube channel in which it goes viral and makes me famous, would be just what I needed to shove in my ex's face. So, an abandoned school seems so ripe for the potential for creepy ghost kids. Plus, there was some urban legend attached that suggested the old headmaster had hung himself, which is why it was now derelict. I couldn't find anything to validate that, but it was good enough to go on. Man, I was psyched. I really wanted to see something. And they do say that you can will stuff to appear, if you believe. That apparitions are far more likely to manifest to a believer. So, I was armed with a camera that had a decent night vision mode and off I went. Now, it is all very well planning these things. You can read about it. You can hear people talking about it. You can even see it on various websites. But actually, being there in the middle of the night, all on your own, is quite different. And I'm not afraid to admit that it was certainly unnerving at the very least. Yes, I was excited, but I was also bricking it. I could feel malevolence oozing from every corner, but I forced myself to keep going and not turn around and flee, unlike some sort of chicken. Further in I went, I'm not exaggerating to say it, that it absolutely stank in there, like wet dog and years and years of mud. But it smelled like every local animal that had used it as a toilet, especially dog urine, especially. I had to keep the light pointed at the floor most of the time, just to avoid piles of fecal matter. And it was rank. I'd just go about into the furthest accessible point when I heard a growl. This is in England, by the way. We don't have wolves, or bears, or mountain lions. There's not a lot of animal life that can really hurt you, especially if you're a full-grown man. At most, it might be a fox who, although I wouldn't want to nip me, would likely be frightened off by the light right in its furry little face. Then I heard it again. I've never actually heard a fox growl. I've seen them sniffling around the bins, and I know that a vixen makes a god-awful racket when she's in season. But I have yet to hear anything growl like this. Your mind does crazy things when you're on hyper alert, and I started to question the last time there had been a wolf sighting in the southwest of England, despite knowing it had likely been well over a hundred years, telling myself that it had to be some sort of dog that had run away from home and was probably threatened thinking I was challenging him for the rat supply. I shone my light over in the general direction of the noise, and I kid you not, I very nearly added to those piles of crap all over the ground. Over in the corner, what would at first I thought might have been a werewolf, that was honestly the first thing my mind went to. But since it was a racing at me, with its claws and jaws out, ready to eviscerate me, I inferred that it wasn't going to kill me, just yet anyway. And that reasoning allowed me just a little bravery, or stupidity, whichever you feel is most applicable, and I took a second look. This thing was huge. It was taller than I, and definitely more broad. It looked to be made of pure muscle, except I could quite see it as covered in dark matted fur. It had long legs and arms just like a person, which had made me originally jump to the werewolf theory. 
but getting a second look, I could see the head was not wolf-like, although it had been an easy mistake to make when it's dark. It was more like a dog, kind of like a German Shepherd. And that is when it really sank in. Even if this wasn't about to be Dog Soldiers Part 2, there was still a freaking massive dog person in the same room as I was. That's when it let out a low, guttural growl, and that was enough for me. I legged it, ran as fast as I could. I didn't give a crap about filming or documenting anything. I just wanted to make it out alive. I have no real idea exactly what I saw down there. I went in hoping to see orbs, or feel cold, or something spooky. But whatever the hell that was, whatever creature that was, it wasn't a ghost or supernatural. It was very real, and I will never be returning to that spot. I have no answers for what animal I have witnessed that night. I have you for what I think is a dogman story, although we are still not 100% sure. I'll tell you my story anyway, and let you decide for yourself what you think, since you seem to be an expert on the topic. It actually even sounds like some sort of urban legend as I tell it, but I promise you, this is true. My boyfriend and I both come from fairly religious backgrounds, with very strict parents, and even stricter rules about being in the house together. Doors open at all times kind of stuff, which is all well and good, as we respect our family, but when you're 17 and want to be together, you need to be inventive. So it was back to old-fashioned parking, finding a secluded lane somewhere we wouldn't get busted by anybody nosy neighbors, cops, so we could enjoy ourselves in peace. We were both into scary stuff, and had even joked about the Texarkana stuff, where the hook man decided to prey on the lovers laying couples. I hope the hook man doesn't come. We'd be joking before getting the windows hot. Then one night, something happened. Only this time, the thing that came didn't have a hook. We found what we had thought was a perfect spot to be alone. An old country road, surrounded by thick woodland that didn't really seem to go anywhere. It was unlikely anybody would use it, unless they actually wanted to park up here. We'd been coming up here for a couple of weeks, and so far, the only slight interruption we'd had was barking, which we assumed was coming from one of the nearby farms, which were far for us but close enough that on a still night, you could hear them. A few times, they seemed to be really going mad. There was so much barking, it almost put us off. This time, however, the barking and now growling seemed a hell of a lot closer than normal. Of course, even though I mentioned this, my boyfriend was adamant that no dog was going to stop us. He even seemed a little jumpy, when we had heard a bark that must have come from the woods, not as far from the farm, but he was still insistent. Even if there was a dog running around in the trees, it wasn't going to do nothing to us. Well, I wish I'd have the good sense to listen to my own senses, as lo and behold, just a few moments after that barking that already sounded way too close for comfort came growling. A low intense and way, way too close for the car growling. Followed swiftly by a scratching noise on the side of the vehicle. I was beginning to scream. I honest to God thought that the actual real hook man was out there and he was going to rip open the car and gut us. What else would be making that noise? My boyfriend began panicking and did the only thing he could think of in the moment. He turned the headlight on full beam and hit the horn. I don't know if it was the sudden shock of the light, the sudden blast of the horn, or both. But the thing outside that was making the growling and scratching noises froze 
outside of the driver's side window for just a second, but that was long enough for us to see what it was. It was as tall as the car and broad like a wrestler, covered in hair. It stood up on two legs like a person and was really hairy. This wasn't a person though. It very clearly had an animal head. A dog had to be precise. It kind of reminded me of one of those dogs from the canine units the police use. I don't know what breed of dog it is. He looked right at us through the window and turned around and casually left. When I say he took off, I mean he was there one second and gone in the next. It was like he's faster than any Olympic runner. My boyfriend quickly jumped in the seat and hit the gas and we were out of there, still barely clothed. He called me the following morning to say he'd been out to check the side of his car just to see what damage there was now that it was daylight. He said in the side of his car were four real deep indented scratches looking like a damn bear or wolf had tried to gouge out the panel. I still don't know exactly what we saw. Parts of me want to think it was some kind of hellhound sent us to stop from fornicating, but that's just my religious upbringing. The rational side of me has honestly no clue. I saw it close enough that I can confirm it was for sure not somebody in some costume, but the side that spent hours driving down the YouTube wormhole makes me think it might have been something more evil. I work in security in this very well-to-do neighborhood. It's a pretty good gig, but to be honest, not a lot happens. And although the houses are large and no doubt full of valuables, any would-be burglar would have been crazy to attempt a break-in. These rich people got top-of-the-line CCTV, motion lights, alarms. They're inside some probably armed to the teeth, rigged up to 911. So most of the time, I just drive around, waving at people and checking that delivery drivers move off quickly. Then, one night, I get a call from one of my favorites saying her backyard light keeps coming on and there looks to be a strange dog trying to get in the house. She had chihuahuas, I guess, and I'm guessing Whatever was sniffing around outside the fence knew that. She instructed to bring a big gun and told me it's a big dog. I'm not really afraid of dogs. I always fancied a detail with a canine unit. But I ain't stupid. I might not be afraid, but that don't mean I'm going to head over there with the intentions of petting this thing. Huge dogs did not sound like something I wanted to be around more than I had to. So, I wandered on over, big gun and big flashlight in hand. I sneak around to the back of the property where she said she could see the creature or dog via the security light. And I whistled, calling it over and hoping it wasn't actually that big, that it would just be some dog I could take to the pound and get on with my night. Maybe it was one of the neighbor's loose dogs. I could hear some rustling and a growl. Not the best sign. I pulled out some sausages and still trying with a flashlight. And then my eyes saw this thing for what it was. The lady had been correct when she said this was a big dog. It was nearly larger than me. Not really taller, but skinny and very mangy looking. It also stood upright like a person, panting, with very heavy labored breathing. Its head and face very much so reminded me of a jackal. I yelled, grabbed the gun, intending to shoot it when it ran. I have never seen anything move that fast before. I gave a little chase, but I couldn't even tell in which direction it had gone. I spent the whole night looking, trying to figure out what it was. Anyway, that's my latest and greatest encounter. 
I was playing Nerf guns with my older brother back when I was a little kid. I was far too little at the time to know that he wasn't coming to get me when I was hiding behind a rock for too long. He was using it as a chance to get rid of me so he could go back to playing video games, tricking me into playing Nerf Wars with him, waiting for me to hide, and shooting at me just enough so I would. And then as I waited for him, one turn, I went deeper into the woods behind our house and waited even more for him to show himself. I must have been one of those children with superhuman patience because I sat there waiting until the sun was starting to go down. Only then did I get it through my thick skull that he wasn't coming and I needed to get home. My path was intercepted by an animal that was walking on two legs instead of four. This scared me. It wasn't looking at me, but it was sniffing the air every few steps it took. Looking back, it had an exaggerated oversized head with the general features of a Doberman pincher. That is, if the fur were more wild and the markings less distinct. It was all teeth and claws, and I thought better of distracting it. I told my brother about it when I got home, of course, after chastising him for not coming home after me. He turned pale at the word of the story, but nobody else really believed me. He did, though. I wondered about that for a very long time. He did confess later on, much later when I was older, that he had run across the same towering dog-like beast. When he heard that I had encountered it, he was hit by a pang of guilt and thought it was incredibly fortunate that I was still alive. I have done my own homework now that I'm older, and apparently, it's not unusual for this humanoid dog to spare the lives of humans. Still, it's a chance I'd rather not take. I'm a long distance driver. By the very nature of the work, I drive for many, many miles, and often way into the night. It can get pretty lonely, but I have listened to so many talk shows and audiobooks over the years. I almost feel like those guys are my friends. Anyway, you don't want to hear about that now. You came for the story. Driving up and down the countryside, you get to see some wonderful sights, and sometimes, very unusual things. I've seen many things where I've had to rub my eyes and wonder, did I imagine that? I'm also not proud to say that I have been the cause of several deaths over the years. None of them have been nice, and all of them have left me feeling terrible. But you can cause more damage suddenly hitting the brakes than running over an odd fox or rabbit. Then. One day, I thought I'd hit a person. It was the middle of the night, pitch black, and I was on a really crappy road. On the way up to Scotland, with a lorry full of bread for a supermarket. It was good money, despite being a bugger of a drive. You don't expect to see much on those roads. I hadn't seen a house for miles, and there were no streetlights or even cat's eyes on the road. I was humming along to something on the radio when I saw it shoot out from the side of the road, straight into my path. Now, as I said, when you slam the brakes on one of these things, you can risk fishtailing, even turning it, so you need to be 100% what you are doing. Hence, although I hate, and I do mean hate, killing any living creature, if it's a choice between me and the bunny, the bunny is going to get it. However, I am not a murderer, and therefore, when a human-sized object appears out of nowhere, right in my path, no matter how dangerous it is to now slam on those brakes, of course I'm going to do so. Thankfully, and because it was so dark, and the roads are so bad, I'm not an idiot. I wasn't going that fast. Bang. Damn. I still hit it. Despite slamming on the brakes and hitting the horn, and flashing my lights, this person-shaped thing didn't move in the road. The closer I'd got to it, however, just before it collided with the front of the cab, I wasn't actually sure that it was a person. Yes, it was person-sized, but, and I know this sounds crazy, it looked like a person, but wearing a dog's head. That's right. This thing in front of me, that was about to be smashed to pieces, had a head just like a dog complete with the yellow eyes you see on an animal when they reflect off your headlights. Once I'd fully skidded to a halt, I climbed down out of the cab to see if the person, at this point, my brain couldn't process anything else, was still alive. I had my mobile in my pocket, ready to call for an ambulance. It had been a complete accident, but I didn't care if I got into any trouble. I just wanted to know if whoever, whatever I'd hit, was okay. I'd left the lights on, 
I just wanted to know if whoever or what I hit was going to be okay. I could hear a panting noise coming from the other side of the road to the one it had ran out from. I called out if they're all right. And that's when I heard kind of a panting. I called and asked for an ambulance. It was a dumb question, really. Nobody gets into a fight with a lorry and wins. But still, had no answer. So I headed over to the noise and the lump. If they were panting, at least they were alive. And then I saw it. It was curled up and emitted a low whine. Its head bowed over its body. My first thought was that somehow, there must have been a trick of the light, and all along it was just a dog. Not that I would ever want to hurt a dog, but it was a heck of a lot better than a person. At that point, I too was relieved to even question why the dog had been standing up on two legs, like a person. I called to it. I told it I wasn't going to hurt it. It gave me a small low growl, and I started to wonder if I should just head back into the cab and leave now. I knew it wasn't a person, and I didn't think this creature would allow me to scoop it up and find an all-night vets, when all of a sudden, this thing stood up, on two legs. So now, this growling, whining, definite dog stands up and faces me, standing taller than I was. I could see it was hurt. One of its arms, like a person, was kind of bent back at a funny angle, and the other was held to its stomach, where I could see a lot of blood. I'll admit, I stood there for a moment, mouth agape, wondering what to do. Luckily for me, this thing made the decision for me, because after staring me down with a look of pure hatred, it then turned and fled back from whence it came. I'm not sure how long I just stood there, gawking like some kind of idiot. Long enough to realize it was gone, and I needed to get the hell out of there. What the hell was that thing? Did it run off and die somewhere? Or did it go home and clean its wounds and recover? I'll never know for sure. My grandparents own a farm. I have been visiting there my whole life. I have ridden their horses, had milk from the cows, eggs from the hens. You get used to it. We used to stay for weeks each summer long, and I absolutely loved it. They were really hardworking people, but never too tired to give out a hug or even tell a story. One summer when we arrived, they looked a little more well-worn than usual. Now, of course they were older. They worked hard, and they were bound to look a little weathered. But this was more like stress etched onto their faces, and even that as I as a kid could pick up on. I remember them telling my mom and dad not to worry, but that it would be good to have some extra hands around the place and eyes, as there had been a spate of attacks. Most likely, the culprit was coyotes, and they'd been finding hens, and even a couple of sheep ripped up. Grandpa had gone around and checked all the fencing, which sure had seemed secure. They were old school, had no need for security lights or cameras, and I doubt they could afford to have it installed anyway. They laid a couple of traps, but so far, nothing. The night before we arrived, they had been woken by the sound of a commotion in the barn. Grandpa had ran down with his shotgun to hear old Bess, his prize milking cow, getting herself in a state, and the horses making so much commotion. He heard something roar, as it made off quick as a flash. He hadn't even gotten the chance to even point the shotgun in the right direction, or catch a glimpse of what it was. It looked really big. Thankfully, Grandpa had scared it off before it had gotten a chance to do anything to the cows or horses, but it had definitely upped its game. Now, my dad was here too. They planned on staying up that night, and seeing if they could catch whatever the hell this was. It was big enough to seemingly jump the fences, and clever enough to avoid all traps. They didn't appear worried or scared like I would have been. More angry as it was hurting their animals and affecting their livelihood. So that night, Grandpa and Dad stayed up, waiting in the barn in darkness, loaded shotguns by their side. The animals weren't bothered by them being there. In fact, if anything, they seemed comforted by their presence. Around 2 a.m., they heard a noise. They didn't react immediately. They waited to see exactly what was going to happen, and if this was the culprit. Once they heard the sheep begin to bleat, they crept quickly, but quietly, out of the barn, guns at the ready. And then they saw exactly what type of creature had been attacking the farm. They said it was something out of like an old werewolf movie. Kind of like the Lon Chaney Jr. and the Wolfman. Except much, much bigger. It's easy to see how it probably just jumped the fence. It was tall and broad, and covered in a dark fur all over its body. It stood up on its two hind legs, which were bent at the knee joint, kind of like a dog's leg. And it had a huge head, that closely resembled that of a Doberman Pinscher, complete with yellow eyes and a huge snout, full of large, sharp teeth that overhung out of its mouth. Its tongue was nearly lolling onto one side, and breathing very heavy. Once they'd gotten over the complete and utter shock of finding a monster on the property, rather than a four-legged predator they could deal with, they both fired at Crazy. They then heard it scream. It was like an inhuman wailing screech that made them both cover their ears in pain. And whatever it was ran. 
ran as fast as they had ever seen anything move in their lives. Dad gave chase, but the thing was gone in a flash. And, despite both being sure that they had hit it, there wasn't a single drop of blood to be seen. They stayed out there all night, just wandering around, looking and listening for any trace. The next day, when it was light, they went into the woods, backing onto the farm, and searched for any evidence of the creature, but they never found anything. You know, sometimes when you're just driving along, minding your own business, and then you see a dogman just sat at the side of the road. Well, that happened to me. I was on my way to a buddy's house for pizza and card games, something we try and do at least once a month. There, I was driving along a route that I use most days when something catches my eye. I can see there is something on the side of the road, and that whatever it is, it does not seem to be moving at all. I think it might be a large dead animal. Maybe a dead moose? It's not too far up ahead and on the driver's side, so before too long, I am level with it. I have slowed down to take a look because, in all honesty, I was pretty nosy. I couldn't work out from front to back what it was I spotted at first, so what on earth could it be? But now that I was right next to it, I still couldn't exactly process what the hell I was looking at. You know when your mind tries to find your reasonable and plausible explanations for weird stuff? That's what mine was doing, because on the side of the road was what I can only describe as a dog that was clearly the size of a man, or a dog with the body of a man. Hell, I don't know exactly how this thing is classified. All I can tell you is what I saw. It was sat down, which was why I hadn't noticed the height as I was approaching. But once I got level with it, it stood up. That was the only movement I saw, and the only thing that had confirmed this wasn't a leftover Halloween prop that somebody had just dumped out here. When it stood up, like a person would, I remember its two long skinny legs. It was all furry, like an animal and had a really skinny hunched over body, like a little old man who was starving and covered in thick hair. It had two long skinny arms that were just kind of dangling there by its sides. And then, this big, almost out of proportion to its skinny body head. Now, I guess at first glance, I thought it looked a bit like a wolf, as I'm not exactly an expert on dog breeds. Having since looked at various pictures, like a cop looks at mugshots, I have decided it was more resembling a German Shepherd or a Husky. But it just stared at me as I drove past, as if it was the most normal thing in the world for me to see a man-sized dog that just stood there. It didn't look aggressive, and it made no attempts to come at me or give chase. It kind of just sat there. I kept on driving, and once I got to my buddies, I told him about it. I expected him to laugh or even accuse me of making things up. But instead, he just says that, oh yeah, my dad had told me about an old dogman Monroe. Monroe was the name of the people who owned the land on the road, and decades ago, it just became known as Monroe Road, not its actual name. So it seemed that old Dogman Monroe was an actual thing. I guess it's just known about in locals to the area, but I had never heard of this before. Is there anything you can tell me about this? A couple of years back, my parents went out of town for the weekend. So, I did what every single teenager in my same position would do. I had a little party. Nothing too crazy. And thankfully, it wasn't one of the things that gets posted on social media. And before you know it, the entire high school shows up. But, enough of a good time that there were a hell of a lot of empty beer bottles and cans and other assorted debris laying around. I knew I needed to get rid of it. Not just to hide the evidence, but because I knew my hangover in the morning was gonna be bad and I wanted to make sure it was cleared up as much as possible before I hit the sack. So, I gathered all the trash up into a black sack at around three in the morning, lugged them all the way down to the alleyway at the back of my house where the dumpsters were. As I got near to them, I could see and hear something clearly snuffling around. Now, bear in mind, that whilst not completely drunk, I was most definitely buzzed. And when I'm like that, I don't tend to feel any fear. Liquid courage, if you will. So the fact that there was some sort of wild animal digging around in the trash didn't really bother me. Besides, we don't have bears or anything that dangerous. Nothing that would come this close to my house, anyway. So, at worst, it was likely some sort of dog or raccoon. Maybe a homeless person. Then, I heard a low sort of rumbling growl and almost a yipping sound so I was pretty certain it was a dog, since I was only there to dump the garbage, not to challenge it to rotten food. I simply opened the dumpster and threw the bags in. It made a hell of a din from all the bottles, and that was when the dog decided to show itself. Now, I have already said that at the time I had been drinking, but you can bet your bottom dollar, as soon as I saw this, I sobered up real quick, and damn near pissed my pants. You see, this particular dog was massive. It seemed to be in a crouching position, and even then, it was huge, so I dread to think about just how big it really was. Then, it crawled out from behind the dumpster, and that was when my fear reached a whole other level. 
It was on all fours, but its legs were more like a person. So it looked awkward. Imagine a person in a werewolf costume, trying to run on all fours. How awkward that would look for them. It had a very humanish body, with patches of fur missing, like some mutt with fleas and mange. It walked like it wasn't used to being on all fours. Sort of stunted. And its face. Well, it was a dog head, but with almost human-like features. It growled again. And I ain't afraid to tell you that I ran. Oh, I ran. As fast as I could, back to my house. Where I then followed up by locking every window and door we had. And finally, locking myself in the bathroom. All night. I've never seen anything like it. Was it just a diseased mutant dog? Is there any kind of dog disease that can make them look human? I don't know what it was, but I hope more than anything that I never see anything like it again. My little sister vanished in the woods when we used to play in when I was a child. The details of it are still very fresh in my mind. The problem is nobody believes me how it happened. Thankfully, in the age of the internet, there's ways of finding people who are more likely to believe me than others. That's one of the reasons I've been enjoying your show, because it's taken me a while to work the courage to tell you my own story. If my sister was out in the woods, I was in the woods. Not so much because I enjoyed the woods as much as she did, but because she had a brace around one leg. If any woodland creature decided she was a snack, aka a wolf or a bear, she wouldn't have had any hope of escaping. Because so many years went by without an incident, I began to relax, and I think my parents did too. I kept telling myself that it wasn't a factor in the way things ended up, because on paper, there really wasn't anything I could have done differently, no matter how urgent I could have behaved. But that hasn't kept me from feeling down and guilty that I've never been able to fully resolve. So, the best place to start is to start with talking about it and telling it to somebody that might believe me. The story doesn't really begin with an encounter. It began several weeks prior, when I could tell that we were not alone in the woods. It didn't feel like there was a person out there. It felt like there was an animal presence. It's like the same way you can just tell that there were squirrels around, even though you don't necessarily see them. And that's what I thought at first, but there's some sounds that a squirrel isn't big enough to make. And because I never saw anything, it was easy enough to write things off as just my imagination. I was nine, she was six, and we lived on our own property. So, we were very, very comfortable being where we were, even in the woods, since we had grown up playing in it. I would hear footsteps when we walked, when we held still. Whatever was out there would hold still too. It was easy for my nine-year-old mind to think that it was just gonna follow us around. It wouldn't be any real threat. Perhaps it was just a curious squirrel, albeit a very big one. One afternoon, I had been completely engrossed in watching some ants build an anthill. I was so focused that I didn't notice that I had not seen or heard my sister for several minutes now. So, I started looking around for her. I saw a movement between the trees, and I thought for sure that it had been her. But it threw me off because I didn't see any pink. I was sure that she had come out there wearing something pink. I was so determined to see something pink that my brain had been blind to a bunch of bland November foliage that turned out to be a live animal that I had never seen before. It turned to me and locked me with the most evil grin and evil eyes I could have ever seen. Small animal eyes like hot coals with a very real light that emitted from them. I could only see it from the waist down because it stood in some bushes that still had drab leaves clinging to them, which is part of the reason it was so well camouflaged. It seemed to hesitate. It then turned around and took off into the woods, as if just standing around and waiting and observing me like some new animal it had just discovered. It plunged deeper into the woods after a long moment of staring into this dog-like face. And when I say dog-like, think German Shepherd, but with similar markings and skin color of maybe a Rottweiler. I didn't quite have that instinct for danger that others had. Sure, I knew when to leave places because my well-being was in danger, but this was something else. I paused for a moment before actually trying to follow the thing. And when I followed it, I found the pink tank top that my sister had been wearing. It was torn, and something darker than pink had stained it. This came crashing into my mind as a sort of denial that can only be explained as the mind's attempt to persevere itself from permanent damage. A few paces forward, and I found the little jeans that my sister had been wearing. And yet after that, I found the brace from her leg. That's the point where I don't remember anything that happened afterward. It would be day three before I could form whole sentences to communicate what exactly I thought happened to my little sister. For obvious reasons, nobody was buying any story about any walking dog. And to this day, I'm convinced that the paw that was hidden from sight was indeed clutching my little sister. I can't help seeing strands of her hair poking out from between its fingers as it might have been clutching her by the scalp. It feels like a splinter that is driven deeper and deeper each time the memory rears its head. I honestly don't understand why these things are hard to believe in. The damage that they do is so obvious, 
if it's a very real threat to human life, then its existence should be treated as a real threat. Mountain lion attacks are rare, and yet there's an entire list of protocol for aiding people in preventing those. Why not have some kind of program or public awareness or campaign in place for these dogmen that roam the forest preying on whomever they come across? So thank you, what lurks beneath. I don't feel better, and yet I don't feel as bad as I did. I appreciate you and your platform for being an outlet for people like us who need to mourn, grieve, and get these stories off of our chest. Thanks. I was camping alone in a pine forest just south of the Appalachian Mountains, where the weather was quite cool. It was starting to look more like the autumn, so it was basically a fireworks display for the eyes. Nothing could have ruined the feeling of wholesomeness that I was feeling from the environment, until I had an incident happen. I convinced myself that I was going to be able to get up in time to douse the fire, stare at it, and if I felt myself drifting off to sleep, then I would get up and put it out. Well, that didn't happen. I ended up falling asleep, and I'm happy to say that a forest fire did not ensue. Nevertheless, it seems that the fire had caught the attention of something. There's still part of me that wants to think that it was a man in a Halloween mask. A very large, very well-built and defined man in a very detailed mask. Because in the dim light of the fire, I saw what looked like the sleek face of a wolf, or maybe some sort of Doberman pincher dog, just maybe a little whiter looking, grinning and staring at me with two eyes that looked like fireflies. My heart had beat so hard that my pillow was vibrating and my mouth was dry. It was just cold enough that I could still breathe and see breath billowing out from its snout. It tilted its head at me in a very dog-like fashion. I wondered if it had noticed me and noticed that I was awake because its upper lip started to peel back to reveal more and more teeth that were way too long and too many to fit inside its snout. Part of me hoped that it was the equivalent of a humanoid dog's smile, but the primal part of me laughed. What happened next is the reason I will never hunt another living animal again, as long as I live. Something else in the forest perceived this man-dog thing as a predator, and a large elk came running and attempted to hit the monster full on with its antlers. And, judging by the sound, it was a nearly fatal strike. The thing was so startled that it actually chased the elk. The elk seemed like it was ready to fight it off, and all this was happening in the dark. I couldn't believe it. Whatever this was, was some sort of crazy feat of nature. Something told me that the dog creature would regain its bearings and come back for me, remembering that it's a predator in this situation. But I wasn't going to use this as a chance to stick around. I packed up and left in the middle of the night. I know that's a bad time to be moving, but due to the presence of things like bears and wolves and whatnot, I packed up and left in the middle of the night. I know that's a bad time to be moving, due to the presence of things like bears and wolves and whatnot, but my fear for them was dwarfed by the new fear I had in connection with that unholy abomination that stood over me in the night. The sensation of fear does not come naturally to me. I'm not one of the people that automatically associate dark woods and full moons with all things horrible. I actually enjoy the night and the woods and nature. I don't cringe when I hear animals doing what they do, roaming the night and calling out. So, when something actually elicits a response of fear from me, then it's probably something that is universally not selectively terrifying. About me, I live in a small town, over a little over 3,000, and I live right next to a park. It does close at sunset, but I can walk over there and walk the trails at night. It might sound strange, even unsafe, but I feel just fine with those unauthorized nighttime strolls. I had never felt threatened before. I mean, I couldn't see much. The light of the moon was having a hard time reaching past all the branches. I was happy to experience the dark, the occasional sound of an owl punctuated the silence. That one walk was the first time about hearing a sound that ever gave me chills. It sounded far away, and it kind of sounded near. It almost sounded omnipresent, like I was inside the stomach of whatever horrible animal could make such a skin-crawling noise. You would naturally associate a howl with a wolf. But this, this had an otherworldly aspect to it. You know how demonic voices in horror movies sound normal, but also distorted by pitch or some sort of other audio modulation. This howling had a very similar quality. It was natural, yet anything but. It was the closest I had ever come to experiencing a panic attack. The feeling of my body having an awful sensation without my consent was even more uncomfortable. I felt like I was losing control of the very box that my brain had sat in. The source of the howling wasn't merciful enough to silence itself when it was done. It devolved into a low morning sound, as if there was pain into it. The trail dotted with lazy fireflies that flashed. I thought I saw two fireflies flying towards me. But then I realized they weren't the light of insects, but actually eyes. Eyes belonging to something that transcended the ordinary. 
The source of the howl was thus before me, and despite the dark, it stared at me. It, or whatever it was, could see me. I don't know what it's from, but it's what came to my mind. Complete and total fear. The moment that my brain signal would reach my frozen feet, I booked it. I didn't stop to see if it was following me. I don't think my brain would think past the impulse to run. The way my heart slammed against my ribs was agony, and yet also addicting. I needed to escape. I needed my heart to beat harder, so I could run more and faster. And just like that, I was a mess. I couldn't function the next day. I even called in for work, three days straight, which for me is unheard of. I couldn't tell which was worse, running into a monster in the woods, or being so completely out of control with the way my body and nerves felt. I was so used to mind over matter, and suddenly, I was at the mercy of this awful, reoccurring nightmare in my head. I didn't get a good look at the thing. All I saw was a general shape in its eyes. But those eyes were level with my forehead. The head they were set in was the source of this hellish growling and bestial grunts. I don't know if it had the face of a wolf and the body of a man or vice versa. All I know is that it made sounds nothing that an animal should make. And it broke my will. Look, it's been a long time since this happened, and I really feel the need to send this to you. After listening to your dogman stories, it seemed to kind of fill in some of the blanks for me, and I thank you for making your program available and accessible like this. Ignore people saying that your stories are fiction. While I'm sure there are some, I can tell you that my degrading nerves aren't fiction, and the thing that caused my condition today certainly wasn't fiction. I don't believe in monsters, per se, like the way horror movies and Stephen King novels portray them, but I do believe in animals with ill intents, and animals and creatures we have yet to discover. I'm going to start my tale by stating a very plain and simple and undeniable truth. My brother is a fool, and he isn't ever going to be able to undo it any more than a leopard will ever change its spots. My brother bought a dog whistle to help train his burly pit bull. He began to notice that the whistle made this dog uncomfortable, and he thought the dog's suffering was humorous. So, he would randomly blow the whistle just to see the dog in sudden discomfort. He then decided to take his circus act to the woods behind his house during the warm season, when the wolves and coyotes were more than about. He'd blow the whistle in the middle of a full symphony dedicated to the moon and the sudden changes in the sound. I told him on multiple occasions I thought he was being an idiot and being very cruel at best. I told him that one of these nights, if he didn't stop, he was going to call in the wrong animal. Perhaps a bear or a wolf or something. I don't know what kind of animals can hear in that high a frequency, but I'm sure something would be drawn in. And you know what? I was right. Just in an unexpected way. He wanted me to go on a walk in the woods with him again, and I told him that I wasn't going with him if he was going to play the wolf roulette with that darn whistle. He promised me that he'd behave, which is like a hooker promising to wear a skirt that goes beneath the knee. But whatever. No sooner had we gotten deeper into the woods, the idiot begins puffing away on that thing and sending the woods all around us into yowls and grunts. He kept laughing harder and harder. My fear was the funniest thing to him. I really didn't like him at that moment, and I was going to give him a lecture with my fists. He was my brother after all. I didn't have to be gentle, and I was really freaked out we were going to get attacked by a bear because he wouldn't put the damn whistle away. Now, what happened next is well-deserving, I guess. A monster that I can only describe as black and gray, what looked exactly like a werewolf, flew out of the woods with the speed and grace of a squirrel, I guess. It nearly knocked us down, the force of it. I don't remember having to use the bathroom, but I sure messed myself when I saw that thing with its lips curling back and my brother lying there on the ground in complete and total fear. He had utterly collapsed onto his knees from seeing this thing. Its stance was changing. It was beginning to act much more hostile. It lowered its head and arched its back like it was getting ready to do a death charge, where it would run full speed and swipe its claws and kill. I grabbed my brother by the thick of the arm and drug him as fast as I could. Thank God we didn't have his dog with us at this time, because it would have just been a drag pulling that damn dog all the way back. We somehow made it, and I kid you not, without any wounds, this thing never followed us, even though we fell on our faces multiple times, tripping, getting cut, hitting branches, you name it. I felt like we got our fair share of ass-kicking by the woods, rather than this thing, our supposed executioner, that I feel that we should have died. Years ago, back when your mom kicked you out of the house after breakfast, and you didn't have to come home until your tummy rumbled, my neighbor and I came across a very grim discovery in the woods that we used to play in sometimes. We were only around 9 or 10, and the highlight of our Saturdays would be making dens in the treehouses in those same woods. 
It was never anything fancy, but just a lot of fun, back when our world was pretty innocent, still. We would occasionally find things in the woods that blew our minds, but it was never anything scary. The odd beer can, a pack of smokes, once an adult magazine where the ladies looked nothing like our mothers. That all changed the day we found something grim. A body, to be exact. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't a King coming-of-age story, and we didn't go looking for it like Stand By Me. And it wasn't so much a body. I'm getting ahead of myself. We had arrived in the woods as usual, and headed straight over to the latest area that we had tried our best to build a den in. Not that we had a mean for older kids knocking it down or anything. I think they would be too cool for that. It was just more nature and weather. The closer we got, the more we started to notice a really nasty smell. Sometimes, we would come across a pile of animal dung, and although it was always gross, this was their home, and we were the visitors. But this smelt worse than anything we've ever smelt. Do we got skunks moving in? I remember asking my friend, whom I'll call Scotty for this story. As we arrived by the den, we discovered what was causing the stench. A large pile of still steaming guts. I'm not going to lie. My first thought was who had left a load of bloody sausages. And that's kind of what it looked like. Upon closer inspection, though, from the rancid stink, we came to the terrifying conclusion that it was, in fact, somebody's entrails. Once we had reached that assumption, my friend bent over and tossed his cookies, so to speak. I didn't blame him. I wasn't feeling too hot myself. That's when we heard it. A growl. There was no doubt in either of our minds that it was indeed a growl. We both sort of sat there, frozen in fear. All the years we'd been coming in here, and the most we'd seen were a few bunnies and the odd woodchuck. Plenty of birds, but never something that would emit a growl. Where's it coming from? whispered my friend looking about ready to lose the rest of whatever it is that he had for breakfast. I was scanning the area around us, trying to source where the growl was. It sounded to be a dog or a wolf, and it was very low to the ground, especially when they were feeling threatened or hunting. I knew that from watching nature documentaries on TV, which is why I was surprised when we heard the growl again and it seemed to be coming from much higher than ground level, more like above our heads. That's when we saw them, and by them, the eyes. The eyes of what looked to be a hairy snout, at the level of a tall adult person. That was enough. We booked it and refused to go back into those woods for the weeks following. I'll never know exactly what we saw, Common sense tells me at the very least, the entrails were far more likely to be that of a deer, which there were plenty of black-tailed deer further in the woods, where the trees were a lot more denser and closer together. But even now, as an adult, who questions everything, I still have no logical explanation as to why we saw a man-sized dog hiding up in those trees. A couple of years ago, I went to a bachelor party in Vegas. Since we were going to be spending all of our dollars on casinos and drink, we didn't stay on the strip itself, opting for a way cheaper venue, a little behind all the bright lights. It was clean, and to be honest, we only needed it for the bed and bathroom. Because it was set a little ways back, rather than overlooking the back of the big hotels, our room faced a vast expanse of land that was apparently intended to be built upon or turned into a gold course or something. But for now, it was empty and dark. 
You could see the lights of the city and the suburbs, but the parking lot and this huge open area was pretty dark. One night, I hadn't had as much to drink as the others, as I'd had a slight stomach upset. Whether from the sheer amount of alcohol in my system or the dodgy seafood, I don't know. But it is relevant here that I was not wasted. In fact, I was more sober than anything else. Having come back early to the hotel, I stepped onto the balcony for a smoke before hitting the sleep sack. I could hear this horrendous noise coming from the land behind the parking lot. Like a mixture between a howl and a yelp. I honestly thought there must be a wounded coyote out there and kind of felt sorry for it. It sure sounded like it was groaning and moaning in pain. As I was finishing off the last of my cigarette, I heard the noise again, and it sounded a little closer now. By now, I was just hoping it wasn't going to crawl into the parking lot and make a mess. One of the security lights at the perimeter of the lot suddenly came on, and I think at that point, I yelled a little in fright. Because, although there was some distance between us, thank God, I could truly see what was making that damn awful noise, and it wasn't no coyote. At least, not a regular one. You see, this thing, and I call it thing because I have no idea what else you would classify it as, it was standing upright, on two legs, not like a regular coyote would and not like a dog on four legs. And I can remember that it was very tall. It was leaning up against that right chain fence and was howling. Well, you can bet I finished that smoke and ran right back inside the hotel room, making sure the balcony was locked as well as every window and door in the room. Curtains drawn, lights off. I don't know what the hell is out there, but there was no way that was just a coyote. Could it have been somebody in a costume? Well, I'm not too sure. It didn't look like somebody in a Hollywood suit. It looked far too large and realistic for that. I'm not saying there's such a thing as werewolves, but what I am saying is what I saw, I can't really explain. It still creeps me out writing this to you. I have heard many stories involving dogmen over the years. The Beast of Bray Road is quite fascinating, but that's all they ever were to me. Just stories. So, I have been desperately trying to rationalize what the hell I saw lying in the road the other day, and I just could not find a good explanation. It wasn't a dark and stormy night, not like a lot of stories you hear that go on and on, and claim to be truth, but are blatant creepypasta garbage. It was coming up towards the evening time, but it was more like dinner time, and I wasn't on some abandoned stretch of road that nobody dares to go down or driving through the spooky woods. No, I was on the highway. Admittedly, this particular route was in no way busy, and I barely saw another car as I drove steadily home from work that day. It was that kind of time of day and year where the sun wasn't exactly burning bright in the sky, but you didn't need your headlights on yet either. And that was when I saw something lying in the road. Now, although it shouldn't be a valid excuse, I am female and therefore I know I need to protect myself. I'm also kind of short and do not carry a firearm. But at that moment, I wasn't thinking this was some kind of elaborate kidnap ruse. I thought an animal had been run over. Nearing the thing, it sure seemed to be the case. And it was very still, and I noted huge. The closer I got to it, the more details I could vividly see. In fact, due to the sheer size and shape of the body, I had begun to doubt it being an animal, and was now concerned with this being some kind of body dumped, and whether I could get away with calling 911 as I sped away 
in absolute terror. I was approaching it, so the feet came into view first. Then, I slowly got the full view of what exactly was lying there. The best way I can describe it is that it was a tall, hairy human wearing a dog's face. Does that make any sense? Because it sure didn't to me. As I said before, I love listening to podcasts and watching shows about creatures and cryptids and stuff. But until now, I thought it was all just BS. You know, meant for fun. Just fun stuff people can make up for entertainment. I remember, I put my foot on the gas and sped off, as fast as my little car would go. Looking in the rearview mirror, I could still see the body just lying there in the road. But something tells me there was something else there, that this thing wasn't actually dead. That perhaps, maybe, it was just a trap to get me out of my car. Although I had only gotten a fleeting glance, there didn't seem to be any blood or apparent injuries to it. It was just lying there, unmoving, undisturbed, if it was alive. I was so scared when I got home. I didn't know what to do. I know people often say to face your fears, and the only thing I could think of was hitting Google and seeing if other people here around the area, Northern California, have had similar experiences as I and that's when I found out that what I was seeing was being a popular story for fans of the X-Files. There's a whole lot of sightings. Real sightings about the thing that I'd just seen too. I kept looking out in the news for any strange reports over the next following weeks, but I never saw or heard of anything. I can't be the only person to see this. Nor do I believe I was the only person that day to see it on the road, just lying there. I wonder if this is somehow being covered up, or at least hushed in the news from not being out further. Like I said, I just have this distinct feeling that I can't quite quelch. Like had I gotten out of the car, I just feel like maybe, just maybe, it was a trap. Seeing what I saw, again, the body wasn't bloody, mangled, or in any way appeared damaged. And I really doubt any car can hit something that large and not be crashed or damaged itself. Even if a semi-truck had hit that thing, there would be blood and there would be damage. So I don't know. Anyway, thank you for listening. Every Halloween the high school seniors would have this legendary party out in the woods where all sorts of urban legends had been born. There was talk of a witch in there that one year back in the 70s, one of the cheerleaders went mad with jealousy after fighting her quarterback boyfriend, making out with her co-captain and stabbed them both to death. That there were little ghosts of children who had died of smallpox when settlers came to America you name it. There was a story for it involving those woods. Vampires, werewolves, even zombies had been seen there over the years, supposedly. Of course, our generation thought it was amazing, as we love a bit of creepy stories as much as the next people. But, not surprising, we didn't really believe any of it. So, when it was our turn for the party, the only thing on our minds was making sure someone could bring booze and who was hooking up with who. It was nearly a rite of passage, something to brag about to the underclassmen and the highlight of the year. There would be more posing for selfies and uploading them to Insta than ghost stories, but that's what we do. There were some amazing costumes and beer, very cheap liquor, and even pot I'd never been tagged in this many photos. People were even live streaming it, and it was just a blast. Then, the guy I had liked since our sophomore year asked if I wanted to go into the woods with him. I knew instantly what that meant, so you bet I was on it. Now, 
since your listeners aren't here for the romance, or some kind of cheap thrill, I'll skip all that. But let me tell you, before anything could get R-rated, we heard a noise. It basically sounded like heavy breathing to start. Real fast, heavy, raspy breathing. So, since we're at a teen party, in the middle of the woods, with people hooking up left and right and center, I was not remotely scared. A little pissed, as this makeout session was a long time coming, and I did not want some peeping Tom to ruin it. I yelled out and called out to them. Then, we heard it again. Heaving, fast breathing. Then I realized it wasn't fast breathing. It was like a panting, but really low in pitch. Think of like a big dog, a really big dog, on a hot day, except it was more raspy. Still not afraid, I began to think somebody wasn't only watching. They were trying to get in on this. The heavy panting then stopped and was replaced by a low, rumbling growl. The closest it sounded to was a lion. Definitely not a human. What the hell, I thought. The branches on one of the trees just behind us began rustling, and then I realized we really messed up this time. The noise and the movement seemed to be coming up in the tree, like up in the branches. I thought to myself that animals or dogs can't really climb trees, not like that. So I grabbed this guy's hand, and we ran out of there before we could discover exactly what was in that tree, growling. But I did turn around, and did get a look. Although I didn't exactly see it in full, I saw a shape. I remember seeing something that looked kind of like a dog, with large red eyes. It didn't follow us out, thank God. And when we raced out and told everybody, they thought it was a brilliant spooky story, or it was some elaborate prank. A few of the footballers even went back in and shone their iPhone lights at the tree, knocking the branches, but whatever had been there was now gone. I have no idea what it could have been, and I know we heard it, and I cannot dismiss what I turned and saw. It was horrifying looking, even though I only saw its shape, or the general shape, and I saw a dog-like head. Creepy. Last winter, 2019, my family and I decided that we needed a good time out from the hectic lifestyle that we all lead. So, my wife, me, and our two teenage boys headed up to the cabin in the woods that a close friend of ours owned. Only this far surpassed any notions of a backwards hillbilly shack in the wilderness. This was like a beautiful mountain oasis. It was a beautiful and sturdy wooden lodge in the snowy mountains, perfect for chilling out in front of the fire with a good book and ski fun in the day. And of course, our friend gave us the usual wildlife warnings. Although there hadn't been a sighting for years, like bears, they were still in the area and very active to be exact. We weren't terribly concerned, just mindful and respectful. But again, it was so cold up there. Any sensible creature would be hibernating, or at the very least, had found some cave to bunker down in. Now, we didn't tend to wander too far, having brought a ton of supplies with us and packed well, since there wasn't any local supply store for miles. That was the charm of all of it. The boys were happy to have a break from studying even if that also meant no video games, internet, phone time, etc. The sight of them playing Clue with their mom one evening had me brought to tears and had me excited more than ever that we finally get to have some fun family time. I think the fresh air wore everybody out too, as did the exercise. One morning, I wanted to take the sled down the slope at the rear of the property it led towards some huge pine trees 
and kind of reminded me of Christmas. Looked like I was the only one up for it, though. Both the boys were still snoring, and my wife looked very perfectly comfortable and cozy with a mug of coffee and a good book in bed. I donned my snow gear, and off I went. Now, I'm glad I was alone, as they didn't have to witness what I did. But at the same time, I wish somebody else had been there to corroborate it. You see, that old sled, plus that steep slope, had me flying down into the forest way quicker than I'd planned, and I shot further into the woodland than I'd ever expected. When everything around you is pristine powder white, there are two colors you need to be wary of. We all know to never eat yellow snow, but have you ever seen red or pink snow? I hope you haven't, because it means one thing basically, blood. And depending on how much snow and red, lots and lots of blood. I will admit that I was frightened at that point. Not because I thought of anything weird happened. More than one of those bears was closer to us than I would have liked, and it had killed something like a rabbit. Or maybe a wolf. What other predators live up here in the mountains? Or, judging by the amount of red snow, many rabbits. Your mind will always try and find the most reasonable explanation. I picked myself up, preparing for the slow amble back up the slope. That's when I heard the noise. It should have been obvious by how fresh the blood trail looked that the predator would be close by. At least I thought it was just a bear, maybe a wolf, a coyote. I'm not exactly sure what lives up here. But now, I could hear the sickening noise of biting and tearing as what I thought was a bear ripping into an animal. It was coming from just behind the trees where the branches were so low and dense it was like darkness. Having never been face to face with a bear before, I wasn't certain what type of noise they make or why this one wasn't hibernating, but thought it was something akin to a snuffle or like a shriek when they're angry. The noise echoing through the trees was more like heavy panting and a low, winding growl. I quickly wondered if I had read anywhere about wolves that's when it made a roar, like a dog. And I should know, our neighbor has two German shepherds, and they can be very noisy when they get riled up. Had a wild dog done this? Grabbing the sledge and holding it in front of me, as a makeshift weapon or shield, I have no idea. I crept as quietly as I could through the snow, which was when it peered around the tree to look right at me. Now, I'm a big guy. Before I headed up the corporate ladder, I considered playing football, as a linebacker actually. I'm tall, rather heavy set, and this thing, whatever it was, was looking down at me. At first, seeing as we were in the mountains, I thought it was a Yeti, but on closer inspection, it looked more like some sort of ape or humanoid, but had the head of a dog or a wolf. It didn't come near me, but stared at me with the most intensity that bore into mine. Whether it appeared aggressive to me or not, I don't know, because I turned and fled. I climbed back up the slope as fast as my arms and legs would allow me to. When I told my family, my boys were scared and my wife immediately began to pack things up. They know I'm not a storyteller, and I have no reason to make things up like this. I think I was so pale and genuinely terrified, it really shook all of them. We headed out of there without looking back once. I even asked my buddy if he had ever seen anything strange out there, but he hasn't and doesn't have any weird stories. Only that he sometimes hears howls here and again. But that could be attributed to the many and vast wildlife out there. What I saw, I have no idea. 
this thing was kind of a smoky gray, maybe a light charcoal color, and was covered in thick hair, and again had the head of a wolf or a dog, with very intense yellow eyes. I can't think of an animal that it could have possibly been, because it was far too large to have been a bear, and bears don't have a head like that, nor do bears stand up on two legs that perfectly. What it was, I'll never know. My friends and family have been calling me the Dog Whisperer ever since I was 12. I have been able to gain the respect, if not the trust, of just about any canine animal, and it has made me somewhat of a local celebrity. Well, maybe I'm just brushing my shoulders too much, at least a celebrity in my family. I can even approach wild wolves without worry. Okay. Maybe not that far, but I feel confident if I were given the opportunity. While I can't exactly give a dog a hug, I'm somehow able to occupy their space and they don't bother me. This has even happened with more aggressive dogs. The ultimate test of this talent or gift, or whatever you want to call it, came when I was visiting for a dog show in Michigan back in 2017. Apparently, Michigan is home to its own monster, known as the Dogman, and it is sighted in regular intervals of years ending in seven. Google it, it's an actual thing. Like anybody that appreciates dogs, I have also have a love for the outdoors and traveling so far away from home that it's given me the chance to see some beautiful fall scenery that I otherwise would have never had the chance to see. I was already near the Great Lakes area, so I decided to check out what the water and the landscape looked like at that same time of year. It was breathtaking, despite how much fog was rolling in off of the water. I saw the shapes of boats and barges as silhouettes, and I heard the sloshing of fish striking at frogs and other things. But then I heard an exceptionally loud splash that sounded like somebody could be in trouble. I was standing where the water met a bank that turned into a tree line, and visibility was probably no more than four or five meters. The splash had made me think that perhaps somebody had fallen into the water I paused to listen for sounds of struggling, but there were none. Would an otter make a splash that loud? As I drew near the general direction of the sound, another silhouette emerged that filled me with an exhilarating cocktail of both amazement and fear. The gray outline developed into a large towering shape of mangy black fur, slick with moisture, rippling with strength and muscles. The blackness of the thing was offset by two sharp eyes that gave their own light, just like two yellow torches. They were trained on me with laser-like precision and focus. I didn't know what to call the thing at the time. Werewolf was what came to my mind, except werewolves don't exist. I only found out about the local legend of Dogman later on, not during this sighting. Needless to say, that means I obviously survived the encounter, but it didn't go quite the way I would have liked. I wrestled with my fear and choked it down, allowing it just enough room for my ego and my confidence to fill up the empty space. So, I, the Dog Whisperer, would not back down from this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to elevate my career above all other reputed dog whispers. I can't believe I did this looking back, but I was fairly confident that I would be successful. This monster stood and regarded me as if puzzled over my not fleeting away in terror. It had long ears just like you would see on a lynx. They twitched and dialed at all the sounds in the vicinity. I was taken by the brutish majesty of this animal. 
while it looked absolutely terrifying, I had to understand and respect that it was still an animal. I boldly stepped forward and tried to tune in to that innate gift of mine so I could ply the monster with it. I even employed the wines of an Omega wolf that I had learned to make. This struck its curiosity. It now tilted its head directly at me. I took this as a sign of progress and my heart pounded as I was instantly in fight or flight. It was then that I was close enough that I could put my hand on its shoulder and then I began to think I was making a huge mistake. Its breath was in my face, pumped between teeth as long and as sharp as steak knives. With the width of the head and the length of the snout, I imagined that it could have fit my entire head in its mouth if it truly wanted to. If you've ever seen the movie Dog Soldiers, I think it came out in the early 2000s. It was kind of like that, just a massive humanoid wolf animal. The smell of its breath was that of rotten meat. It was terrible. But there was something else that got my attention and triggered a much more deeper primal fear. The animal had the undeniable scent of brimstone on its breath. Yes, brimstone, as in sulfur. Something like satisfaction flickered in the creature's eyes when I felt the fear twisting in my stomach. Somehow, I knew it could smell it. Maybe it even knew what I was thinking. The word werewolf had begun sounding more like hellhound in my mind. As if on cue, the monster swiped at me with one paw. The blow laid me out, completely catching me by surprise. It was a swipe not to kill me. It was like it was toying with me, playing with a mouse before a cat would eat it. It stood over me, and I held my arms over me in defense, as if that was to stop this killing machine. Any thought of my way with dogs blasted out of my mind with fear. I waited for the moment that it would rip me open like a deer carcass. It didn't. Other voices rang out. Someone saw the other shape strike me down, and words had drifted into my ear about calling the cops. This thing grunted at the choice before it bounded off, quickly in the speed of light, giving me a long look as it turned away. I went through with the dog show, though I probably should have excused myself. As thrilled as I had been, there was something about that encounter that struck a nerve deeper than any natural fear of predators. The smell of brimstone, the unnatural glow to its eyes, that wasn't just any rare species of canine. It was truly a dogman, a creature from some forbidden realm of unspeakable evil. No feral creature can reach so far into the inner sanctum where the soul is seated, and that's exactly what that monster did to me. Look, I know my story sounds incredibly far-fetched, and even crazy, but I have to be honest, and I have to tell you exactly what happened to me. So, that's my story, and you could choose not to believe it. But I will say one thing's for sure. This whole experience has certainly turned me from an atheist to a believer, because there's no denying that that thing was not of this world. When I'm not at the office during the daytime, I bow hunt as much as I can. I own more than enough acreage in southern Illinois to give me an adventure every time I want the thrill of sniping several weeks worth of food. Yes, I eat everything I kill. It's only right. It's how you show respect for the land and the animals that you hunt. I love the way that Native Americans view it. You kill something, you eat it, and you utilize everything of the animal. Even the bones, the fat, everything. I don't do trophies, unless it's my first kill of a certain species. And even then, I still eat everything I can. I had a shot at a trophy that nearly made a meal out of me one summer evening. It was close to nightfall, but not quite. 
a bazaar in between stage, where the evening made the whites of the birch trees a lavender color, and the sky was an amazing peach and crimson. I could have stared at the sky instead of keeping up the hunt, but I was due for landing some food. There had been some heavy rains in the morning, and I found myself sloshing through the prairie grass when a white-tailed buck came over a low hill and struck a million-dollar pose in the sunlight. If I had a camera ready, that would have made me enough money to buy me my own island. Well, not really. But I did not have my own camera. I had a bow, and I needed food. I was careful where I was placing my feet to cut down on the sloshing. I pulled back my arrow and aimed. Like a crack of thunder, the buck's antler shattered like pencils as something came down on it with the force of a sledgehammer. The thing was far too black for the dimming sunlight to pick it out. It was plenty big enough to be a bear, but it certainly was not built like one. Bears didn't look like weightlifters with chiseled muscles. I think even bears looked cleaner and more well kept than this thing did. Even as a shadow, the grungy filth of this creature was apparent. Some of the fur was matted and looked almost like dreadlocks. The eyes, though, those eyes glinted like golden ore in a dark mine shaft. They burned with the light of a predator. The thing twisted the deer's head in a clean 180 degree turn and then tossed the entire body around like a rag doll. When its fury had subsided, I can make out dog or wolf-like features. Just everything was much bigger. The beast radiated strength the way lava gave off heat. I don't think I was going to get that food that I was thinking about. But I was determined to get me a trophy. This demon wolf, whatever this horrific creature was, I was going to make it mine. Now... I don't know if you consider me brave or stupid, but regardless, if you've ever seen how a modern bow and arrow works with skin and bone, if you've got the right setup, it'll go in one side of your target and out the other like a bullet. I had this thing dead in my sights, and I was going to carve its heart out if I landed the shot the way I had intended. Part of the thrill of the bow is the way the arrow seems to fly in motion from your end of things. I watched that arrow go straight for the chest. It reared back and howled so fierce that I could feel my teeth rattling. But the arrow didn't go through the beast. It barely even penetrated. The monster yanked the arrow from its chest, leaving a very superficial wound. I knew better than that. I readied another arrow. Deer will attack if your shot doesn't kill them or run. I was sure what was true for this was especially true for a monster of this size. Hopefully, I hadn't just doomed myself, but I was stupid and determined, and I was right. It locked eyes right on me and charged at me like a bull, clearing distance to me very fast. I let my next shot go, and one of those two glowing eyes was now gone. The red barrel of my arrow bloomed from the thing's eye socket, and it fell to the ground. It ruined the moment by getting back up, and it staggered as if drunk. It acted as if I just had smacked it. It was hardly even phased. It appeared to make the decision to run. I tried to handle it like a deer, following the blood trail. Only with this thing, there was no trail, which didn't make any sense unless it just didn't bleed. That was the last time that I ever saw anything like that. My heart skips a beat whenever I see an ordinary wolf or coyote, and I wait to see if it's going to stand up on its hind legs. Of course, they never do. That's my story of that one that got away. Only, I swear to you, it's true. And I know it sounds insane to have a huge wolf like that, be walking around on two legs like a grown man, but I was determined enough and stupid enough to try and take it down, 
only I failed. And who knows the wrath that I'll probably bring upon myself by endangering it. I served in the military police in Iraq back in 2004. Every hour of every day was a game of Russian roulette. Improvised explosive devices would take out supply trucks that would try to escort over very dangerous roads, and there's no way of knowing where the explosives were except to just drive and hope that nobody's tires were on the wrong place at the wrong time. IEDs, they call them. Each time that I dodged death, it was the equivalent of making the right call of a coin toss. So, needless to say, I was in a perpetually heightened state, running on what I would call Red Bull and pulling 18-hour shifts. When your senses are constantly in overdrive, that much for that long, you don't always know if you can trust them. That's how your nerves get overdrawn and you're ripe for developing PTSD. I came back to the States with acute PTSD symptoms. But you know what? It wasn't because bullets were flying over my head. Although that was a large part of the experience. See, Iraq is like one big acid trip. There are ancient ruins in some shape or form everywhere and the locals treat them like they're no big deal. Stuff that was built closer to the time that Jesus walked the earth is irrelevant, spray painted with stuff, all sorts of stuff, and 100 dialects that you find over there. It was one such cluster of ruins, an ancient city that lost its place on the map, where bandits and ruffians alike set up camp and decided that me and my convoy were now target practice. I manned the gunner's nest on top of the APC that I was in. I put my life in the hands of the other man that I left at the steering wheel. This batch of men weren't backing down from the cannon I used to carve slices out of the ancient ruins they were hiding behind. A few of them, I think under the influence of something, came out into the open. Well, you don't just turn down an invitation like that. I was going to blast them down when three or four towering shapes raced out of the ruins and mauled them to death. My eyes were telling me that I was looking at walking rabid dogs. My brain was telling me that this was impossible, but it wasn't my hallucinations that were butchering those bandits before my very eyes. They didn't stop to eat. They began leaping towards my convoy like large furious dogs and they struck me with terror that made my hand shake so much I almost couldn't aim or fire the APC's cannon. If you know anything about the stuff that goes on in Iraq, you might have heard giants being discovered in the Iraqi mountains. Yes, I'm talking literal giants talked about in the days of Noah and biblical stuff that's well covered up. So, I had heard stories of that from fellow soldiers here and there, but only took it with a grain of salt. I guess this area is keen, and when I say area, I mean all the Middle East, Iraq especially, for its paranormal and weird stuff that goes on. So I guess I shouldn't be too surprised in hindsight. But these oversized dog creatures were just kind of shrugging the bullets off. Two of them succumbed to their injuries dark and inky blood splattering. The rest of when I saw, I realized that I could actually kill them, but they scattered. I took the whole thing as a sign that I was well overdue for rest. My turn to sleep finally came, but my problems did not end there. Strange howls and weird noises filled the night when we were moving or holding still. My men weren't sure what to make, since they sounded like they were coming from wolves that were immensely sized. I didn't say a thing. Deep down, I had a hunch that we were being hunted. The ones that survived were not only real, but I'm sure they wanted revenge. I didn't know how I knew this. It was just an innate feeling, like the moments when my deepest intuitions had been right. I just knew 
a feeling that I was a marked man. I mean, I knew that terrorists and their sympathizers were going to lash out, but they didn't have the keen senses that allowed them to zero in on their quarry, like these beasts do, these rabid humanoid wild dogs. Several nights passed where those otherworldly howls and growls were somewhere far away, but not too far, close enough to come calling if I ever fall asleep long enough. That awareness has wrecked me, and I was discharged not long after for being deemed mentally unfit to continue my service. This has happened to many servicemen that never gets talked about. The howling even followed me home to Maine. How the things have tracked me across the ocean, I'll never know. Or maybe it's the sound haunting me. Maybe they aren't really flesh and blood, or only partly so. I don't know. Guns and barricades and iron bars are never far away enough anymore. It's the only way I could steal a few hours of sleep after spending hours of hearing my own heartbeat. It's probably going to give out before any of these demons come looking to make their killing blow. Thank you for listening to my story. Some horrendous monster that looked like a cross between a bear and a wolf and came from hell came at me when I was walking alone in my favorite forest. It was really rugged, so I often found myself alone. This monster from a dream, a horrid fairy tale, locked onto me and I couldn't shake him for anything. It had clearly demonstrated that it was far faster than I and it even got ahead of me a few times. It was cunning. I don't know why it didn't go in for the kill. It was like it was toying with me, wanting me to be the most exhausted and scared and more afraid than putting me out of my misery. It had ample opportunities to take me out, but it never did. And dashing across creeks and rivers didn't shake it off my scent. So I got desperate and headed towards the nearby lake. Conveniently, there was a small fishing boat with three people. I called out to them, begging for help, but I must have looked too wild and geeked out and on adrenaline for them to trust me, because they kind of just stared at me, waiting for me to make the next move. Desperate, I scrambled up a tree in full view of the boat. This creature was on my heels by seconds and, just as I had feared, was every bit capable of climbing. Part of my brain screamed at me just to give in and let it have me. The other part of me, the part that I listened to, told me to climb as high as I possibly could, although pointless it probably was. I reached that point where if I went any further, the tree would bend and drop me. This wasn't a terribly large tree, so don't think I was trying to climb up some 100 plus foot tall oak tree. I reached the point where if I went any further, the tree would bend. I had put distance between me and my assailant because it was clumsy, but it couldn't be delayed forever. I yelled again to the boat, which had drawn away some distance. I think that's when I was truly convinced that I was going to die when I could see my last chance for hope of somebody listening, leaving. Like a terrible action movie, this thing's head suddenly bloomed a hole, like something small inside of it had exploded. I looked back out to the boat and saw that one of the men had a large rifle and was aiming at me, or rather this creature that I was being attacked. That's when I quietly thanked God and thanked whoever was on that boat. That's also when my survival mechanism started to fold up with the knowledge that help was now on my way. My grip was loosening on place in the tree, and I suddenly had the urge to fall asleep. Two more shots, one in the head and one in the ribs, puffed out its fur of my attacker until it fell out of the tree and landed on its back. Rather than breaking its neck like it should have, the thing just got up, 
as if totally unfazed, like the three bullets did nothing, and casually ran away to the woods. It blew my mind. My saviors in the boat had gotten close enough to make sure I was still alive, but they didn't extend any hope beyond that, and I questioned who the real monster was that day. They kept asking me, where on earth do wolves that size come from? That thing was huge. I found my way back to my vehicle and locked the doors. I blocked out after that. But even then, to this day, I've had no incidents. I figured backstory to this didn't really make sense, and so I would just jump in with my encounter. I greatly appreciate your show and you getting people's experiences out there, no matter how real or phony they sound. I think it's important because it allows people like us who would feel otherwise ridiculed can step forward and share our story with the world. Whether people choose to believe it or not, that's on them. Sure, not all of us are the best storytellers, and I can understand how someone who's not good at telling a story could make a particular experience come off as phony, but I try my best to relay what happened to me and I hope this helps anybody who listens to it, if you choose to read this. I'm desperate for some tangible evidence of what I witnessed, and I have none. Indulge me here in a moment of desperation while I write you this. I know something like this can't really be faked, but like I said, I'm desperate. I wake up every day convinced that this thing is breathing on my face or that it's waiting for me outside my front door. From time to time, I get the itch to load up a backpack and just get lost in the pine forest that's only a half mile away from where I live. I deliberately try to get turned around in the depths of the woods and then used my survival skills to find my bearings and build a camp and eventually leave. This isn't one of those forests with really long trails winding through them. This is true wilderland. People go missing and turn up dead if they don't know how to both live off the land and keep themselves safe from it. I was at that point in developing my camp where I get triumphant rush. I had a fire going with an underground pit for coals. I had caught meat, hair and fish, and I had made a shelter that was sturdy and kept me from the wind. I was so elated that I didn't notice how silent the forest had become. It was a misty evening and perfect weather for a fire. I was going to have some of that hair for dinner, along with some berries that I had just forged. The unusual stillness eventually reached my sense, but I just ignored it. It was so still that I was able to hear distant footsteps all while I was eating. I knew that I was too far into the forest to be running into any casual strollers or hikers. After a certain level of remoteness, the people you meet are either bears or bad news. They were careless footsteps, loud and heavy, the opposite of stealth. I was still in survivalist mode, so I grabbed a spear that I had crafted from a thick branch and I stood up. But that's when the sound stopped. I didn't see anyone or anything. The air also stopped moving, as if the forest was holding its breath. And in that stillness, I swore I could hear breath. I sat down again, started chewing more on my meat, and the footsteps were at it again. When I reached for my spear that they stopped, this seeded a paranoid notion in my brain, something that I could not see, something that I was alone with. I stood up again and looked around. It was only sheer luck that I feel I even spotted it. The dim light coming from its eyes ultimately gave it away. It seemed to stand at least eight feet tall and was still as a statue. If there was ever any truth to the concept of a werewolf or a dogman, this was it. The way its teeth were bared, it looked hungry and angry, like a wild beast. Its fur was mostly black with spots of gray, but it had a molted look to it so that its shape was broken up against the background of the woods. I stood and brandished the spear. I didn't want it to let it see my fear. Something told me that it could already smell it. 
but I had something heavy and pointy. I began thumping my chest and yelling at it, doing my best I could, like you would a bear, to try and scare it. In that moment, I felt true fear enter my entire being, as I realized the thing that I was looking at wasn't the only one. This was merely a trap, a decoy to grab my attention. There was another one of these things right around me, next to me or behind me. It was lurking, looking for a weak spot to try and jump me, or worse, take me out entirely. I cycled through many emotions in that moment, from shock to fear, paranoia, all of it. Getting out of that forest was not a quick affair. It took me the better part of two days, and I was torn between fleeing and staying put at any given second. A perpetual state of fight or flight is unhealthy, and apparently traumatic. All through my escape, I could see or hear some hint that the surviving thing had my scent still. Was it waiting for me to fall asleep? Had these two things been following me? I don't even know how I was able to escape as it is. I slowly began wandering away as fast as I could, while at the same time, meaning not to run, as to not give chase. The thing that stayed lurking in the woods next to me or behind me never broke through the trees, but the thing that did in front of me just stayed still and kept a close eye on me. As to make sure I didn't wander too far, I knew that it could take me down at any second that it wanted to. That much me and this thing both knew, but I obviously survived. But I'm not the confident, functioning human being that I was before that I went into those woods. These things, whatever they were, changed me for the better. I'm not trying to sit here and boast that I am some Bear grills or anyone amazing, but I am pretty confident that I was able to survive well until these things showed up. Why they let me leave, I'm unsure. Why they didn't take me down like an injured prey when they had the opportunity, again, I'm not sure. But they let me leave. They let me survive. Even when they had me in the palm of their hands, or the palm of their claws. It was the summer of 1995 when I saw the creature that I am writing in about. That June, I'd got fired from my job at McDonald's at the time. So, I spent a lot of time at the beach that summer, just to unwind and distress. I'm writing in from you from Jacksonville, Florida, and anyone who visits will know the calming effect of the white sand and the blue waves. I would have been around 23 at the time of this happening, and as you can imagine, I didn't actually have a cell phone. Most of the time on the beach was spent on my towel, watching all the girls. I had my Walkman at the time, listening to R.E.M., and I have to say in hindsight, life seemed pretty sweet. On one particular occasion though, I met an old high school friend. I had lost contact with him sometime around the 90s. As I said hi to him and asked him how he was, he walked right past me. He was with the girl at the time, holding hands, and they both looked at me like I was scum. He totally ignored me and continued to walk off. I know things had been tough for me in recent years, but I was doing my best to get all my stuff together. But then, it happened. I continued watching him and the girl walk off in their patronizing stride. This large creature appeared from the sand dunes to my right. It appeared to be massive, close to 9 to 10 feet tall, black matted fur from its head down to its feet. It stood tall, but then lurched forward on all fours just like a large dog. It began running towards the couple. It didn't seem very fast, but it caught up to them quickly, and they seemed to have no idea. I watched in horror. The only way I can describe it is that it was some kind of wolf man or dog man, and the more I stared at it, the more I saw the fusion of dog and human features. It terrified me. It managed to really close the distance between them in such a short time, all while staying silent like a thief in the night before disappearing back into the sand dunes like some massive black shape vanishing. Somehow they never knew. They never turned around. 
I know it sounds incredibly crazy, but that's what I saw. For a second, I was convinced it was a figment of my imagination, but I knew otherwise. I know this is a bizarre encounter, but I thought I would write it in anyway, just in case anybody else had had a similar experience. Not my story, but a very close friend of mine, who believes he shot and killed one of these things, down in eastern Texas, that apparently was attacking and mutilating his cattle. From what he told me, this thing has taken down at least eight of his cattle, been feasting on the corpses, that is, until he put a few good rounds into its head with his 357. He baited it and waited just in the right time. Whatever this thing was, he is not even sure what to call it, other than an upright walking wolf, would come onto his property at night and start picking off his cattle one by one. The first three were small calves and were somehow pulled away from their mothers and taken down. Only bone and guts were left, if you even want to call the aftermath that. He took some time to learn its patterns, because whatever this was, was intelligent enough to come back around the same time every evening to make sure that it could be done unseen. Well, after spending about two weeks learning and watching this, he decided to act. He went out and hid in a tree stand right near where this thing was entering into his farm, and he decided to take action into his own hands, quite literally, blasting a few holes into its chest and head. He said he's pretty sure he killed it, because there's really nothing left of its head afterwards. I've been a listener to dogman encounters from Vic Hundiff and things like that for a long time, and I know these things aren't invincible. They can be killed. Even though I've heard encounters and stories about these things well, bullets not hurting them, and them being supernaturally impossible to kill. But from what he was telling me, this thing went down like nothing. Had he tried to shoot a 22 at it, I don't know if he'd have the same results. But if you know anything about the caliber of bullets, a 357 is isn't going to leave much left. I mean, the sheer power of that thing is enough to do enough damage to end anybody, let alone an 8 foot tall upright walking wolf. Him and I are close friends, and although I won't reveal his name, was telling me about this because it scared him so bad, and he had never heard of animals like this ever before. I mean, we all know about wolves and general predators to cattle and livestock, but when do you ever hear about an 8-9 to nine foot tall, upright walking wolf that's intelligent and stalks cattle and knows exactly when to come back and strike? It's a little unnerving. He was very disturbed by this thing's showing of intelligence. But again, it didn't stop him from hiding in his tree stand just outside to where he knew this thing was entering and decided to take it out. But the plot thickens. He said that once he killed this thing, the entire air, as he described it around his ranch, became thick, like there's an ominous foreboding or that there's more of these coming. Even though he hasn't seen any, or seen any signs of others. He's sure that whatever this was, was maybe a scout, or wasn't alone. He has no idea what these things are, but if they're anything like a canine or a wolf, they are pack animals, which means that they don't act alone, and there will be more coming. To give you a date estimation, at the time I'm writing this to you, it is September 13th, and this just happened within the last two to three weeks, apparently. So, if there's any update, I'll be sure to let you know. But otherwise, keep your eyes open. And if you see weird signs happening around your own house, there might be more to it than you could ever imagine. Around 15 years ago, my parents had just purchased a small log cabin in the upper peninsula of Michigan. Since we lived somewhat far away, they decided that in order to get their money's worth, our family would go twice a year, once during summer break, in which that vacation would be two weeks long, and once during winter break, which would take place over Christmas. But with the plan to return before New Year's, it was the first year of the house's purchase, and since we had already gone for the summer, it was time for our winter trip. 
we arrived on the 21st and intended to leave the 28th. Everything went smoothly when on the afternoon of the 27th, a nasty blizzard swept through our area, leaving our cabin and cars buried in a sea of white. I'm not sure exactly many feet of snow or anything like that, but it was more than high enough to reach the windows of the house. My parents were a bit stressed out about whether we would have enough food to keep us fed, all before the snow would be cleared enough to leave. But for the most part, our biggest threat was boredom, and we were a bit bummed out that we'd probably be missing our neighbor's New Year's Eve party. As I was too young to have my own cell phone at that time, I borrowed my mom's in order to talk to my friends and explain our crappy situation. That's when I noticed something odd outside the window. My room was illuminated, since it was pretty dark outside, with the sun having gone down just a few minutes prior. It was hard for me to make out exactly what I was looking at, but I could tell the figure I spotted was about 50 feet away and moving around. I told my friends there was something strange going on, and I'd call them back. I'd hung up, looked out my window. There, I could make out a vaguely human-shaped dark figure, but something was off. The snow seemed to be up to its thighs, and its upper body was massive. Upon squinting, I could make out the head of what looked to be a wolf, and it was incredibly confusing at what I was staring at. Not only were wolves a rare sighting in Michigan, but I had never even heard of nor seen one so oddly proportioned. Its arms were weird and massive, each one particularly half the size of its own waist. I was terrified by what I was seeing, so I quickly turned off the bedroom light in hopes that it wouldn't see me. However, this plan was foiled and backfired, as the quickness and brightness that changed had caught this thing's attention. It trudged through the snow, approaching my bedroom window quickly, as if a piece of hanging meat was there, luring it. The room I was in was small, and the bed was too low to the ground to hide behind it, so I didn't have much of a choice except to duck under the sheets and, well, hope for the best, like a child. I heard the crunching in the snow as it got closer to my window. I could feel it. It had a sense of heaviness, along with the sounds of a wolf heavily breathing, and then it let out some sort of grunt. I heard a ding, and I couldn't help but look as I realized its nails had tapped to the glass. I swore this thing's claws were half as big as the window. It was like a giant bear claw running along the window. My eyes trailed upwards, and I saw steam hit the glass as this thing was exhaling onto it, as if looking for me, as if it knew its prey was all alone in this room, and all it had to do was get through this tiny window to get through it. My entire chest was heaving, and I could make out bits of fur being blown around in the wind. It wasn't long before our eyes met, and then, like seeing a prize, it let out a low, muffled growl. I didn't know what else to do. I just froze and whimpered. Then, it let out this harsh noise, and I screamed, getting into the bed and fleeing the room, grabbing all the attention of my confused family who was watching TV at the time. I told them that there was a monster outside my bedroom window and followed my dad back into my bedroom. After flickering on the light, there was nothing outside. Of course. However, he knew I wasn't just seeing things because the snow clearly had been disturbed. Anyway, that's my story and I'm still very crept out to it by this very day. All right, so before I get off to any details, I just want to say that I'm no expert hunter or backpacker or hiker or nature advocate by any means. I just like to explore and hike just for the thrill. I would just consider myself a very strong hobbyist and I don't know as much as I probably should. Anyway, during my hikes and exploration, I always keep with me a pair of binoculars and on this particular getaway, 
I was working on traveling around Colorado and up into Wyoming. I think at the time I was in northern Colorado, if I'm not mistaken, and while I was on top of a hillside, well, it was more like a valley with a large ravine. The area in which I was at was sparsely filled with trees, but mostly a lot of open land. I saw something very interesting happening on the other side of the valley, probably, if I had to give an estimation, hundreds of yards away. So, I pulled up my binoculars, and I saw what I can only describe as crazy. Thinking back to these thoughts, it kind of stops me from describing it to you, because it's so crazy, and it doesn't really make sense. But I'll do my best to describe to you exactly what I saw. I'll tell you though, it definitely made me not want to set up camp there, and it made me flee far away. In fact, I think I ended up hiking an extra four to five miles that day, just to get away from what I saw. But there's no mistaking it, I saw what I saw clear as day. Now again, I've heard of Bigfoots, and I don't necessarily believe, but I am open to the concept that they could exist especially in the wilderness, like Colorado, Washington, Oregon. You know, places thick and lush with dense forest. Pine forest, specifically, with plenty of places to hide. Well, I never would have thought that I would have saw this, having that in mind. To my general knowledge, and I'm not a Bigfoot expert by any stretch of the means, but they do not have canid heads, nor do they have ears, or claws, or even tails, or their legs aren't hawked like a dog's. So, with that said, what I saw through my binoculars happening on the other side of this large, sparsely filled ravine were two upright walking wolf creatures. One had a huge elk that it was carrying with its back hands. And when I say back hands, I mean it was walking up the ravine with its hands behind its back, holding onto this dead elk's legs, dragging it up the hill with the other one that looked to be a little more darker in color and smaller in size too, slightly different frame and build, walking close behind it, as if to make sure the front one didn't drop it. I was in total shock at what I was seeing, and I would say I watched them for a good 20 seconds, never break stride or walk. They got to the top of the ravine on the other side and disappeared into the woods. I'm assuming they must have killed the elk and were dragging it back to their den, or their village, or whatever it is these creatures lived in. I was in such a state of shock and disbelief afterwards. It's like I was living in a fantasy world, where fantasy creatures exist. There's no mistaking what I saw. These were clear upright walking creatures that clearly resemble the canine resemblance, if that's not a tongue twister for you. I feel like I'm terrible at recounting a story to you, so I'm doing my best I can to give you accurate descriptions. But what I saw through my binoculars is exactly like I described to you. The one in the back was smaller in frame and size, and I have no idea what kind of height estimate, but they seemed really large. The back one seemed to be more skinny and frail, like its overall frame was not big and bulky, but slender, but it had hocks just like a dog, walked perfectly upright with no hunch just like a person and its coat seemed to be shiny, but also a very smoky color, like a fine mix of gray and black. It never turned around to look in my direction. Both of these creatures were facing upwards, or the opposite direction that I was looking, up towards the top of the ravine. It appeared to have somewhat of a tail, if that makes sense. Directly in front of it was the dead elk that it was carrying. Oh, and I should mention that the elk that it killed was also a female, an adult female. Again, I'm no hunter, so I don't know what adult female and adult male elks are called. But anyway, the one in front was much larger in stature and had a much wider and broader build, like it was lifting weights and doing push-ups continuously. This thing, from my binocular view, looked like it could easily bench press 400 pounds no problem. Thick, thick muscular shoulders that led into thick biceps. Its entire chest shape was like a V at least from the back, but had nearly identical features as the one behind it. Hawked legs, just like a dog, had a smaller tail, except this one was darker in color 
and had parts of granite's fur that stuck out on its back. Its entire build and head also seemed to be a little bit larger, probably more resembling that of a bear from behind, where it's really large and wide, and the ears aren't as perky and pointed upwards. Anyway, whatever these things were, whatever it was, seemed to be intent on taking this dead elk back to where it was going. As I looked at the elk, which was kind of hard to see because these things kept obstructing my view, it didn't really look like it was ripped apart or torn. It looked more like maybe these things had found this elk. It seemed to be intact from what I could tell. But again, even though I watched these things for a good 20 seconds, I couldn't see every possible detail because there were trees and other things obstructing my view at points. But anyway, I'm just here to tell you what I saw and how much it shook me. And even now I feel silly telling it because it just sounds so incredibly crazy that I know it might not be believable. But I want to share my story with you and share my encounter because I believe that if other people have seen these things, which I don't know if they have, it's important they know that they're not alone. That other people like me, innocent bystanders, have been shaken by their pure sight. I'm writing to you about an encounter that I had earlier this year during the harsh lockdown. I'm English, but based in Barcelona, Spain, and we had one of the harshest lockdown rules anywhere in the world. Just being allowed to take one shopping trip per day with only one person allowed out. I made it my mission to make this shopping trip my daily exercise, and I was in the habit of going later at night. This meant that there was less people around, and I was less likely to contract the virus. I am based in the outskirts of the city, and as soon as I left my high block flat, I could hear the crickets and the sounds of nature amidst the urban backdrop. It's truly a magical place to be, even in the most harshest of circumstances, such as the lockdown. The trees in Barcelona are renowned for their lushes, their verdant green dotted nearly on every street. Majestic, they symbolize the resilience of the Barcelonian. One night, this would have been early April, I was walking to the local grocer for some cigarettes, right around 11 p.m. to be exact. As I was walking along, I noticed how secluded the streets were. There were no officers around either. It seemed I had the whole street to myself. Then, as I walked the rhythmic trot of feet, I heard. That's when I saw a bizarre, disturbing looking creature sitting, no, standing behind a tree, nestled tightly in a small patch of greenery from which led a stone path to a park. I paused, shocked and terrified out of my mind, trying to make out exactly what I was looking at. This was something out of the realm of hell, towering over me at roughly nine feet tall, if not more. Long pointed ears, glowing amber yellow eyes. As my eyes adjusted more to the darkness around me, its face began to take more and more shape, resembling that of a German shepherd, if that makes any sense with a much more evil expression on its face. The creature was standing up on two legs and was standing up higher and higher, like it was in a crouched position and was now very slowly lurching its full body into an upright position. I just stood there watching this thing as it seemed to set back up against the grass. After some moments, but probably only a few seconds, this thing bared its teeth and exposed its huge fangs, which resembled that of a wolf's, or really large canines. Its eyes too, they changed, as if to totally single me out from anything else around us. Preparing for some gruesome action, I figured. I remember closing my eyes and praying to God that he would spare me. Perhaps, in maybe some crazy world, this was all some kind of horrible prank, I thought. But it was just too realistic those eyes. This was not a mask or a prop or something or somebody in a suit. This was demonic. I swallowed as my mouth filled up with saliva. My hands were trembling and I remember my stomach lurched as I stood still. 
The creature, which I now saw some kind of wolf or dog, but with hint human features, began baring its teeth more and more. I knew the only chance I had to live another day was to just make a run for it. So I did, only looking behind me once, to see and find and be relieved this thing had not followed me. When I finally got home, I tried to draw a picture of this beast, but naturally, it didn't come out as accurate as the real image. Of course, I didn't bother sending it to you because it just didn't look right. In fact, you could probably get a better idea of what I saw have you just googled werewolves. Even though aesthetically, there's a very large variety of those too, with all different features, but it should give you somewhat of an idea. I'm sorry this is so vague. It's been really hard for me to even cope since having this happen. But I can truly say, thank you Lord for COVID, because now I have an excuse to stay indoors, because it's left me too frightened to leave my house. Even when I'm invited for coffee or small gatherings, I get to make up excuses, inventing that I have an underlying health condition that makes going out too risky. But really, it's because of the fear that the sighting has instilled in me. My life has become a nightmare, and I want nothing more than to get over this. Any help would be appreciated. Please. This happened in high school, when I was a freshman or sophomore, I think. I grew up in a small town, which was getting a huge population boom right before the housing crash, and neighborhoods, which were once otherwise fields, were getting houses and sidewalks built up top of them. During the day, those areas were so noisy and busy that it felt like the neighborhoods were already built. During the night, however, they were so dead silent that it was almost eerie, making it a prime location for teenagers to goof off. The Friday evening before homecoming, my friends and I decided to explore the construction sites after returning from the homecoming football game. At first, we mostly just walked around and peered into the structures until we finally started daring each other to go inside. The dares to go inside soon turned into dares to go up and down stairs and so forth. We were mostly just nervous about the houses not being entirely structurally sound and the steps or floor panels breaking beneath our feet. But, as we were dumb teenage boys, that didn't stop us from actually going through with our ideas. We were pretty comfortable with our crusade by the time we ended up walking into the fifth house. My friend descended down to the basement steps without a second thought. Halfway down, However, he paused and whispered, What is that? A horrible smell overtook our nostrils. That smell like a mixture of rotting meat, hot garbage, and a much more overpowering smell of wet dog. When we tried to walk down to see what he was talking about, he stuck out his arm and told us to listen, and that he could see something eating. I thought it was a prank at this point. I heard a snarl, and we all screamed, scattering in different directions as we ran. I stupidly went up the stairs and ducked behind the railing on the catwalk, looking at the creature below me. It appeared to be a wolf, its head large but still with a narrow snout and ears, and its eyes glowed yellow. Its body was like the shape of a man's, but it was easily twice as large as any person I'd ever seen before, in both height and terms of muscle. It had a bit of a slanted stance, with its tail dragging on the ground behind it. I swore its claws were half a foot. It seemed as if it could hear my breathing, because I watched as its ears moved around before facing my direction. It began to make its way towards the stairs, slowly, and I didn't know what to do, when one of my friend's yells echoed, causing its head to turn into the opposing direction motivating this thing to navigate its way outside the house. After summoning as much bravery as I could, I dashed down the stairs and out of the house, placing my back against the exterior wall so I wouldn't be exposed. I heard an urgent whisper from my friends from the bushes and made my way over to them, asking where our remaining friends were. They said they didn't know, 
We could view this thing pacing around the street, and it seemed to be sniffing the air, trying to find a hint of where we could be. When it left our line of sight, we began to look for our other friends, lightly whispering and calling out for them. Luckily, we came across them hidden behind a few large electrical boxes, complete in shape and unharmed. After a series of whispering over each other and shushing, we finally shut up and began to escape as quietly as we could. We made it home okay. That neighborhood has long since been finished and now has residents, and I've never heard of people experiencing anything like it since. The people we told claimed it was just some sort of homecoming prank, and for a while, I let myself believe that. It was the only thing that even helped me sleep at night. Something that still disturbs me is there's a huge patch of woods all surrounding that entire neighborhood. Is it possible that whatever this thing was came from the woods and maybe found itself through an open door or an open sliding door left open and made its way into the one of these houses with possibly a deer, hence the blood smell. Even though we didn't see any carcasses of any animals, it's very possible it was using one of the rooms as shelter and possibly would bring its kill there, or even making it a den. Listen, I don't really know. I'm just trying to come up with conclusions, just like you are. And I know my story sounds crazy, because, trust me, it was crazy to live through it. But I'm telling you what happened. I took my niece Celia, or Selly, swamp fishing with me when she was only nine. You never knew what you were going to pull up on a line when you cast into those funky, muddy waters. There was one part of the swamp where somebody had bothered to build a pier. Sally took a liking to that spot, since she's always seen pictures of people fishing off a pier. She also wanted to see what it was like to fish by herself. So, I made her a deal. She would stand on the pier and fish, and I would keep my shotgun peeled for any wildlife that might want to take a bite out of her. You know, snappers, gators, ex-cons. Sounded good to her. She casted a line, and so I patrolled the edge of the waters, just enjoying the sounds of the swamp. Before too long, I saw movement in the water. Something was moving towards the pier, almost carving a V as it glided along. But it was the wrong shape to be a snapper, then, I thought I was looking at the head of a young crocodile. But then I saw fur, and immediately realized, crocs don't have fur. Then, one wet and hairy arm reached out of the water and took hold of the thick post of the pier, digging its black claws. Then I saw another arm. Then, something huge lifted itself out of the water, with such incredible finesse that there was no splash that my niece hadn't noticed. Something like a tall and muscular wolf was climbing its way up to her. I didn't hesitate to spray that monster with a shell of buckshot. It bled red when the spread of pellets tore into it, and I think I saw a chink of its spinal cord before it fell back into the water. One or two pellets had grazed Sally's arm. Nothing serious, but it left long scratches and there was no way I could convince her to lie about how she got them. I asked her if she had seen the wolfman thing had come up out of the water. Naturally, she didn't. So she's grown up with a story to tell about how her crazy Uncle Daryl shot her because he was shooting a monster that was going to get her. I'd like to think that deep down, she believes I'm telling the truth, or she believes that I think I'm telling the truth. Regardless, I know what I saw, there's no mistaking a creature like that. I shot it and it bled, which means it was of this world. It was flesh and blood. Illusions don't bleed. Maybe it died. I don't know. Whatever it did, or whatever I did to it, was enough to scare it away. But it never floated to the surface, and once it resubmerged into the water, it disappeared. So really, who knows? Anyway... I'm wanting to reach out to you because what do you think I saw that day? 
When I was a student at college, I was based in New York City. I had an experience in the fall of 2000 that has stayed with me and filled me with stress and trauma ever since. I have managed to suppress a lot of the negative effects, mainly by retreating into a constant life of work, stress, and frivolous concerns. But as I'm nearing the 20th anniversary of this incident, I know I have to deal with it. And that is why I'm contacting you. I would have been around 21 at the time and was a pretty carefree person. I wasn't a heavy duty party person, even though I was in New York City and the whole apple to bite into. I much more preferred the silence and solitude of the library, spending my days and nights immersed in quiet, still ambience, filling my mind with new knowledge and ideas. I was what they call a model student, so that's why I've been so confused and angry. I'm pretty book smart, but I guess when it comes to real life, nothing, at least nothing out of a book, could have prepared me for this. Why the hell did the universe have this experience happen to me? I was a good kid, a law-abiding citizen. If I saw a drunk girl in the street, I'd call her roommates or her mom and make sure she got home safely. Same thing with a man. Anyway, I'll cut to the chase. This experience happened one night. I think it was around 2 a.m., if I remember right. At the time, I was walking home late from a friend's. My mind was fried with all the reading I had done that day. I had a huge exam the next day and was walking home. With my two arms carrying a huge pile of books, probably five or six if I'm right, and as I walk up to my apartment complex, there is a small alleyway parallel to the car parking lot. I always seem to glance in. Sometimes I see the occasional drunk, but usually it's pretty desolate but it's just something I've always made a habit of doing. It's like I get some sick pleasure from thinking that alley is like a den for people's obscene behavior. I remember one time I saw somebody even shooting up. When I glanced over, I saw something I completely regret. What I saw was the most horrendous sight I think anyone could imagine seeing, unless they've seen maybe child abuse or a murder victim. This was some kind of creature it looked like a werewolf. I know, I know. That sounds cheesy and fictitious, but I'm telling you, that's exactly what it looked like. It was standing upright, a canine creature, but its face looked very human-like. Well, minus the snout and the large ears. But this, the entirety of this creature was large, much taller than I was. I know I'm only 5'8", nothing to boast over. But this thing was much taller than I, at least by a good two to three feet, at least, and was built like Arnold Schwarzenegger had just got done prepping for a movie. Had this thing got a hold of me, I don't doubt in my mind at all that it could have ripped me from limb to limb with little effort. I noticed it wasn't just pitch black though. Even though its fur was incredibly dark, it was almost absorbing light it was so black but it did have patches of what appeared to be gray along its chest. Now you have to remember, as soon as I walked by this alleyway and looked over, I saw this thing walking in my direction as if it was just on a casual night stroll. And it was walking just like a person, which is why within the first half second, I didn't fully register what I was looking at until about a second or two in when I was able to take in the entirety of its shape. And there was enough light from the alleyway which there was really no hiding any distinct features that I couldn't see right away. This was a werewolf, if I've ever seen one, and it looked evil. It looked intent on killing me, and like it would enjoy every second. But it just casually, with a slow pace, walked towards me. For a moment, I was completely frozen in fear. I wanted to move badly, but my legs wouldn't move. They were stuck, until I was able to regain myself and I sprinted as hard as I could, just like a runner, all the way back to my apartment. Since then, I've really had no explanation for what I saw. I even grabbed my phone and called 911, but halfway through the call, I hung up because I realized how insane I would sound. I just realized that I would just try to suppress it and get over it. 
but I never have. Even though I've been able to live my life, it's something I spend a lot of time thinking about. Could it have been a demon? I don't know. What was it? Was it a person in a costume? I doubt it. It was taller than me and looked too realistic. But I thought there was no such things as werewolves. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was an animal. Maybe my eyes were just playing tricks on me. Or maybe the fear is just causing my brain to create false memories. Either way, 20 years later, it's pretty much stuck in my brain and I didn't realize what a dogman was till only in the past few years since I've been researching, since I am a fan of cryptozoology and paranormal things, and stumbled across it upon some narration videos some years ago. Now that I know about dogmen, I believe that's exactly what I saw. But before I spout out about that I saw that for sure, I figured I would reach out to you and see if that's exactly what you think I saw. I attended college in southern Georgia, and my fraternity was having a bonfire one weekend. To say things got a little bit out of hand would, well, be an understatement. Between the alcohol and the wizardry of fire, everybody had worked up into a very low-level frenzy. We circled the bonfire, waving crude torches, chanting something school-related in Latin. It did have a healthy school spirit in it, come to think about it. Before I knew it, somebody was shouting above all the rest that we were taking our homemade torches and heading off to campus. I didn't make it all the way with the rest of them. At some point, I turned around and started going back to my dorm because I was just too tired and drunk to join in whatever they were up to. And I had just enough of my faculties to know that they weren't going to be doing anything good. The college was built on some prime cuts of land nice and isolated by forest, or what a city dweller would call forest. So, there was quite a march across a band of clusters of trees and manicured lawn before anybody could act on their impulses. And I think I wasn't the only one that changed their mind about what they were up to. The torches filled my sight and left me disoriented for a few moments, until all I could really do was decide that I would go the opposite direction that people were coming and hope that would take me back to campus. The crowd was shrinking away from something, some darkness that was coming from the trees. My eyes focused just in time to see a large furry shape leap out of the trees and maul one of my fellow students. We all screamed and dropped our torches. Whatever this oversized thing was, it didn't have a sound, but it resembled a giant wolf. So, it grabbed her entire head with one hand, if that gives you the idea of its paw. Before anybody could react, the thing had taken this girl back into the darkness. I somehow made it back to campus and back to my dorm, and I woke up remembering the events of the night before as a dream. But sure enough, word got out of the students missing. They were eventually found, but it wasn't much left of them, just a period enough to do DNA tests confirm who they were. There was a lot of speculation about the case, but it was ultimately just written off to avoid any more publication that it was just a freak animal accident or some sort of bear attack. But what we saw, bears don't move like that. This thing was lightning fast, pitch black, and was very, very large. I don't know what it could have been, but it's terrified me, and I don't dare step back into the woods afterwards. I'm not going to tell you her name, out of respect. Besides, you probably wouldn't be able to find anything on it anyway, because again, the case was written off as her being eaten by a bear. I'm serious when I tell you this, that there's more of these things happening than we realize, and much of the time, they really don't reach public eye because they're written off as animal attacks, but I know damn well that what I saw that day was nothing close to that of a bear. This story takes place when I was just 22. I had just graduated college and had gotten a nine to five job in a big city. I made a lot of friends at my firm that I worked at and we all planned to go out partying one Friday night. I'm a huge extrovert 
and pretty much the opposite of a party pooper. I'm the kind of girl to stay in a club until the lights come on. So, it eventually got to the point where I was the only person from my workplace left in the club. I was pretty drunk, and as the place was about to close, I realized my purse had been stolen. No wallet, phone, or anything. Earlier in the night, I had planned to pay for a taxi to take me home, but that clearly was out of the cards. I couldn't even call anybody to come pick me up. My only option really was to walk, and you can see why that might be terrifying for a woman, especially one in her early 20s who was wearing a rather racy partying outfit. I had two options to get home, one of which was to take the fast way that involved shortcuts through alleys and other involved walking down side streets, which even though were better lit, still had all sorts of creeps lurking among them that could follow me home. When I exited the building, I discovered that it had begun pouring rain, solidifying my decision to go with the first option. I raced my way into the first alley and back out as fast as I could, trying my best not to stumble over myself. Luckily, nobody was there. The second one, however, was where things took a turn for the worst. I saw somebody digging through the garbage, and I was about to go around to the other side of the building as to not bother him. He pulled himself out of the trash and went to look at me. I was expecting a homeless man, but what I came across was much more horrifying. Its head was so much like that of a dog's that I swore in the darkness I perhaps mistook a wild animal for a person. However, upon further inspection, I could easily make out that its body didn't match its head whatsoever. It looked kind of like a human. It had broad shoulders, a large torso, massive bicep muscles rippling. It screamed and snarled, pushing itself away from the dumpster, jumping down to all fours immediately, resembling the form of a person, kind of doing a bear walk. It looked awkward. It seemed to be getting ready to leap towards me, or so I thought. So I ran as fast as I could, eventually ending up back on the sidewalk and in front of an apartment building, although it wasn't mine. Two guys outside, smoking cigarettes, taking cover from the rain under an awning, asked me what was freaking me out so much, and I said there was a werewolf in the alley. Unsurprisingly, they just laughed, and one of them even mumbled, Man, women these days, I swear to God. I just wanted to kick him in the crotch, but I was exhausted, soaking from the rain, and just wanted to go home. I took the sidewalk the rest of the way home, crying and running. I got chilled, but I didn't mind. Anything to keep me from whatever that thing was that I saw, that living nightmare. After I finally made it back and told my friends the following day, they laughed at me and told me that my drink was spiked. But I know what I saw. I don't know what I saw, but I know what I saw. Hopefully somebody believes me, and I hope that you don't think I'm crazy. Anyway, I just wanted to get this off my chest. When I was a child, my family lived at the edge of a dense forest in Tennessee. I remember the forest being a source of wonder and joy for us when we would go to camping trips and a camping trip was usually done with an eye shot of our backyard. However, under no circumstances was I ever to venture into the woods by myself. I never understood these rules. The forest was a beautiful thing, not a dangerous thing. I couldn't understand what could possibly go wrong if I went off on myself. I didn't understand, even after I started seeing something outside my window every night. It began with a tap, just a gentle tapping on the glass of my window. I thought it could have been a tree branch. My sleeping brain didn't bother to figure out that there was no tree outside my window. When the tapping wouldn't stop, I got up to investigate. There was nothing there. This continued for several nights on and off until the snow began to fall. I was in bed as usual, and then came the tapping. When I looked outside my window, 
there was still nothing. But at the tree line of the forest, something had changed. The glowing one of the snow revealed something. There was the shape of something that looked like one of the monsters in my dad's paintings. Actually, it was identical. Since it was night, I could only make out the general shape. Something like a dog walking on its hind legs, but extremely tall and muscular. This introduced a new dimension to our nighttime game. I would answer the tapping on the window, and then we would stare at each other from far away. Once and only once was the wolf monster standing with its face right up against my window after the tapping. If it had been trying to get to me and used its presence, it didn't work. I screamed with all my heart, and my father came running in to see what was the matter. All he knew was that his daughter was standing next to the window looking terrified. I had told him about the wolf monster, but he had told me that I'd just been imagining things. But I remember the look in his eyes told me that he knew something else that I didn't. And to this day, he refuses to talk about it any time I used to bring it up. And even now, what does he know that I don't? And why won't he tell me? I haven't told anybody about this encounter ever, except one close friend of mine, who was surprisingly very receptive to what I had to say. This encounter happened back in 2003, right around February. This was in Tennessee, near Crab Orchard. At the time, I was doing a lot of hiking around and exploring. At the time, I was walking through a small patch of woods. Now, something people are not familiar with, or if they are not familiar with with the Tennessee woods, is that we do have wild boar here, so you have to be careful. Sometimes they will charge you, and we also got bear, not grizzlies or anything like that, pretty much black bear, or at least that's all I've ever seen. But on this day, I saw something that I'm pretty sure wasn't natural by any means. In fact, part of me is convinced it was something evil, something out of hell. Whatever this was, walked out from the woods, started walking towards me. What freaked me out the most was obviously this thing looked like a demon, but it walked bipedal on two legs. It didn't seem awkward or like it was having a hard time. This thing had the shape and body of a human, but it looked like a dog with large claws and the head of a wolf, covered in long, strangly gray and black hair. Whatever this thing was seemed to have its sights set right on me, and it was picking up its pace the closer it got. To give you a little bit more perspective, to my left was kind of a large hill. I'd say maybe an incline that went up about 75 feet. This thing appeared out of the woods at the top of that ridge line, looked at me, and started coming down towards me. I panicked. I could feel this thing's energy radiating towards me, and it felt bad. Very negative, like it was coming to hurt me. It never took its eyes off me the entire time it made its way down the ridge line. Now, I know a thing with predators or two. The last thing you ever want to do is turn and run. So I kept my pace and I slowly moved backwards as far as I could to where I can get to a point so that I could finally turn and run without fear of this thing pursuing me to kill me. And then, out of nowhere, like in some sort of freak Hollywood movie, this thing dramatically picks up its pace and starts sprinting towards me, gaining speed and momentum on me like I was some injured mouse being chased by a starving cat. I was so terrified, I peed my pants right there and was able to jump and hide behind a thick tree while this, what I can only describe as a monster, came in my direction. Because of the brush, it must have not saw me as I dove behind this tree because as it kept pursuing me, it started to go in a different direction, where it looked like I had gone. It stopped and began sniffing around, only a mere 20 or so feet away from me, and began low growling, this low guttural terrifying growl, as if it was hungry and searching for me. I don't know what this thing's intent was, but I nearly cried, and I'm a grown man. 
I've been through lots of sketchy situations out in the woods, even been chased by a mama bear and her cubs before, and even then, I had never been this scared in my life. I think it was partially because this thing looked right out of a horror movie, like it was a demon, something completely unnatural, and looked like it was designed to kill, torture, and maim. After a few moments, this thing moved on, but I could still hear it rustling around in the brush very close by. I have no idea why it didn't smell me or know I was there. Or maybe it did. I don't know. Had this thing caught up to me, in time, and had I not jumped behind that tree, there's no telling what this thing would have done to me, especially considering if I would have fallen and injured my ankle or my knee, or worse, broke something. I would have been a goner, and probably not been able to live to tell this story. Even though this happened a long time ago, nearly 20 years ago, I still have frequent nightmares about this same creature. Although I've been out in the woods many times since, hunting, hanging out with friends, fishing, camping, sightseeing, you name it, I've never felt that same innate feeling of fear or encountered anything quite like what I did then. It was the most terrifying experience of my life, and I can't dismiss that at all. I will say the things it was not. It was definitely not a wild bear, nor was it a wild boar. None of those animals stand up on two legs, look like wolves, and tower over me. I mean, this thing looked very unique. There is no mistaking the identity of whatever monster this was. All I can say is that even now, afterwards, I'm very careful about where I go, who's around me, the weapons I carry, and my awareness. The problem, I think, is that a lot of these guys who are expert hunters or spend a lot of time in the outdoors just get overly cocky, and so their self-sense of awareness seems to go down, or their care or lack of. Anyway, I'm not here to spread false narratives. This is something that really happened to me, and has really left an indent on my life. Like I told you, it's affected the way I go back into the woods, the way I look behind my back when I hear a noise, the way I respond to animals around me, the people I bring with me and the weapons that I keep on me or around me. I will never go into the woods again unarmed, or at least not prepared to encounter this thing again. Now, I haven't seen this thing again like I told you already, but there's no telling that in my future it won't come again for me. Who knows? Even though I wasn't born and raised in the Great Lakes area, although having lived in Indiana for a while, I've kind of caught on to some things around the area. The Ohio Grassman, which is very commonly talked about. Well, what I heard this day, or what I should say experienced, was something other than the Grassman. I don't exactly know what this could have been. It was very canine-like from what I experienced. Let me go ahead and get into this so you can understand. This happened a few years ago, but I will never forget it. The Spurgeon Hollow Trail is located directly in the middle of the Washington Jackson State Forest. It is reached from a county road just a few miles off of State Highway 135. The trail itself is beautiful and thick with lush, gorgeous forest. At some point in the trail, it forks off, where if you take the left, it goes up a very steep incline full of thick woods if you take the right, it parallels the lake to your right side. Because I'm sadistic, in a way, and like to really burn my thighs, I went to the left, going up a very steep and thickly wooded hill area. Now, I want to point out that this is when the weird feelings began. Not even that far up the trail, I began to feel like I was being closely watched, and then, not too long after, started hearing some low growls. That's when I got another strange sensation that something was closing in on me. It was like being surrounded by a pack of wolves, I guess, and they were all coming for me. But I kept looking around, over my shoulder, in front of me, behind me, and to the sides of me. Nothing. One thing I recognized, though, was that the woods were very quiet. Very unusually quiet, that is. And there were no other hikers on the trail with me at the time. I don't know enough about this specific trailhead to tell you just how popular 
or how not popular this trail is, but I find it weird that at the time, I was the only one here. Anyway, I continued to push on, despite the ever-growing feelings of paranoia and that something was closing in on me. That's when I began hearing noises directly behind me, like something following me. I even thought I was being pranked, because every time i turn around, there would be nothing there. At one point, I considered that I was having hallucinations, auditory hallucinations, but I couldn't really pinpoint it on anything specific. Even though I had heard the low growls, the vegetation moving around me, and the snapping of twigs and trees, it was really hard for me to tell exactly what it was, but the feeling wouldn't shake. That is, until I got to one segment in the trail, where up ahead, I distinctly saw this, and there's no mistaking it. I will never forget it. About six, maybe seven feet up from the ground, I saw three heads pop out from behind different trees. They resembled wolf heads, or at least very similar to a canid type of animal, and they had these slow, glowing amber eyes. And when I say slow glowing, they almost kind of had this very low, slow pulsation going on. Like, they would get brighter, and then they would dull, and then they would get brighter again, and dull. There was most definitely a pulsation going on, and it was almost sickly alluring, like some kind of alien light. It was terrifying, but again, alluring at the same time. It almost put you in a hypnotic trance, as if to lure yourself towards these creatures, whatever they were. I didn't see any pupils, but these eyes were very distinctive. And because I was there in the afternoon, there was plenty of daylight, so there was no mistaking that I was seeing this creature. And there wasn't just one. There was three of them, all standing behind a different tree that were all close to each other, watching me, watching my every step. I don't know if they purposely made themselves visible, or at least their heads, or what, but I strongly believe at the time that they decided to make themselves somewhat known because these were the things that had been following me since the fork in the trail. I want you to know that at that moment, I felt two very distinct feelings. The first was this hypnotic trance as if I was being lured towards them. It's a feeling I don't quite understand nor can I accurately describe. It was a feeling out of my control, like my body was just responding and I was being pulled effortlessly towards them without any of my control. The second feeling was the worst feeling in the pit of my stomach. My entire being screaming that I needed to leave there now, that I needed to get out of there. Danger, danger. Somehow, I just managed to collect myself enough to escape and run as fast as I could, not caring if whatever these things were chased after me. Again, they were so high up in the trees that they were looking down for me and they were behind the trees, so I couldn't see exactly what their bodies looked like. But I knew they were some sort of creatures, some sort of beings with wolf heads, and the heads were massive. It's hard for me to accurately describe to you, but that's what I experienced. It was horrifying, and it makes me not want to go back to certain trailheads because of it. That's my experience. Take it what you will, but that is what happened to me, and I have to be careful to this day where exactly I go just to be sure that I don't run into those again. First of all, I wanted to acknowledge to you how grateful I am to you and everybody else for investigating all the supernatural sights, especially those of a sinister nature. Words cannot describe how I and many other viewers feel as it helps those of us who have seen creatures to be reassured that we're not exactly crazy. I am writing in from Cambridge, England. I know you probably don't have a whole lot of accounts from Europe and this area of the world, but I'm here to tell you, things over here are just like America, full of strange, terrifying sightings that many of us, English people, don't talk about it. My name is Allison. In order to properly conceal my identity, I'll use the name Allison, and I am 63 years old currently. I would have never found your channel, as I don't use the internet, 
but my daughter helped me locate it and encouraged me to write this in. Last summer, I saw something terrible, something that has haunted me in my nightmares and prevented me from getting a decent nights of sleep. On top of the whole COVID-19, the last year has been the utterly worst year of my life. My marriage is falling apart as my husband thinks I'm crazy. He has even encouraged me to go to our local GP doctor for a memory test. He thinks I may have dementia, but I know what I saw, and I know I am not losing my mind. Let me start from the beginning. Let's go back to July 2019. I had just recently retired, and my sister brought me on a cruise from Southampton to various locations around Europe, including Venice and other cities. I was beyond excited, as I had never been on a cruise before, and the whole experience sounded heavenly. After 40 long years of hard work at my local bank, it was high time to kick my feet up and enjoy some me time. My husband approved and off we went, for two weeks of bliss, just me and my younger sister. The cruise was amazing. I spent the whole time eating drinking champagne and sunbathing. On our final night, after we re-embarked the cruise, I had an experience with what I now believe to be a dogman, is what they're called, I think. Listen, this isn't easy for me to write about. My hands are shaking, even as I write this in. But I understand that talking about this is probably the most therapeutic thing I can do. And connecting with other people who have supposedly had similar sightings, I know in the long run, will help in my recovery from this traumatic event. Our cabin was five floors down from the deck level, and I didn't really like to think of it as being under the sea, but clearly that's where we were. I decided to lie down for half an hour after dinner, and I promised my sister that I would meet her in an hour, as we planned to go to the casinos and even have a few cocktails. As I walked towards my room, I began to have the most dreadful feeling that I was alone on the entire ship. Nobody was around, and at that moment, the sky seemed to change colors and open up. It's like I was having some out-of-body experience. It's so hard to describe. I felt like a beam of light or some sort of lightning came down and struck the ship, nearly knocking me off my feet. I don't know how else to describe it. This was accompanied by a loud metallic banging and sound, and what filled like static electricity all around. I didn't know what was going on. Apparently nobody else experienced this but I. That's when I had ran back to my room. I had to give a little shove to enter the room. Nothing was behind the door so I switched on the lights and walked towards the bed. Even though after drinking some champagne, I needed to use the bathroom. So I walked towards it, nervously kicking my sandals off, not knowing where anybody was or what had just happened. The bathroom door was open and the lights were on. That's odd, I thought. We usually always remember to turn it off. Again, at once I felt an electric shock like energy passing from the tips of my forehead, right down to my toes. There was something now in the bathroom. I could hear something moving, grunting. I opened my mouth in horror, attempting to scream for help, but no sounds came out. I know what you're thinking. Maybe it was a maid or a porter. I knew it wasn't. These sounds were animalistic, diabolical, and unlike anything I had ever heard before. I know everything up till now sounds insane, but... I began to think there was a shark in my bathroom. Having said that, I have clearly watched Jaws too many times, but I can't refute the whole incident that this has happened. A shark would have been a welcome sight for what walked to the bathroom door, and faced me was enough to send every pore and fiber of my being screaming in terror and horror. Before me stood this large creature about seven feet tall, barely enough to fit inside the bathroom. It was very muscular, but it was 
very like large displaced chunks of meat all through its body. It looked messed up and wrong, like somebody just grabbed clumps of flesh and put it all together on a skeletal frame. This thing had a pulsating up into its body. It's hard to describe. The face, the head was messed up. Its eyes were a yellow, orange, amber color, and it kind of resembled a greyhound, but it looked mutated, if that's even the right word. This thing looked like some sort of carcass that was put together by some sort of Frankenstein creature. I don't know how else to describe it. I quickly slammed the door. At this point, I was barefoot and running down the hallway with streaks of cold sweat running down my face and crying. I didn't stop until I reached the deck. People were staring at me with alarm as they expected to see someone chasing me with an upraised knife. I screamed when I met my sister and fell at her feet, sobbing. I was taken to the medical unit on board and was told I had a nervous breakdown. I have been on anti-anxiety medication ever since this occurrence, and I can't envision coming off. Somehow, I was the only person that experienced what I had that day, with the lightning from the sky hitting the ship, nearly knocking me on my feet, hearing the loud metal banging and the static electricity, and then seeing whatever that thing was. Anyway, I hope writing about this experience will help me to heal somewhat and I can hopefully reconnect with other people who've had similar experiences. It is tremendously hard to resume normal life after you've seen something so dreadful and shocking. It's kind of like dying and returning to life. I simply can't describe it. I just pray that I never see such a thing again. I hope this experience can help other survivors and we begin a journey of healing. I have just been told to quarantine for 14 days after my wife has tested positive for COVID. So I'm struggling to find things to do around the house to occupy myself. I came across your channel recently as I was searching for a book review for a Stephen King book. I'm a high school teacher and so I was interested in your stories and the content of your channel. I believe I had an experience with a dogman around 25 years ago. I can't be too certain, but after hearing some of your other stories of similar sightings, I am convinced that mine too is authentic. It was Thanksgiving of 95, and I was returning home from college. It was a typical Thanksgiving. Lots of food, stories, booze, and good times with family. I am the oldest of seven children, so I spent a lot of time with younger siblings playing board games and puzzles. Our dog, too, was a welcome fixture in the home and would be constantly running in and out of the house, enjoying the attention he received from everybody. Myself and my youngest brother, Mike, who was then aged around seven, decided to go for a little walk in the woods. It was about 7 p.m. and was by no means dark, but we took our lights anyway. We also took our dog as well, and brought a frisbee along so we could be entertained. Our dog ran ahead of us as we commenced our walk, and we admired the beautiful colors that autumn gave us. Usually, the forest would be abuzz with families and runners, but this evening, it was very quiet. I mean, it was Thanksgiving after all. But even on Thanksgiving, there's always people out, and that never fails. The whole thing kind of spooked me, as I thought many people from our own neighborhood would go out for a walk after their dinner. But anyway, I didn't think anything more of it. What was weird though, was our dog got really agitated as going deeper into the woods. He was whimpering, as if he was sick. Mike tried to cheer him up and distract him by playing with the frisbee, but he didn't even try and catch it. It was very unsettling and the dog kept barking and turning back towards the pathway to the car, as if he wanted to go back. I snapped at him. I tugged at his leash a little harder as I was losing my patience. 
Although this event happened 25 years ago, I can still remember it as if it was yesterday. Mike had brought the dog up to see some flower beds in the distance, little patches of violet, which I have to say were really picturesque. I stayed slightly behind. The next thing I heard was the dog barking frantically, and he ran off at a rapid pace towards the car. Barking maniacally and not turning back to even glance at us. Mike too started screaming at the top of his lungs, and I ran over, expecting to see some sort of horror. On the forest floor, about ten feet from us, was a large creature, about seven feet tall, or so I can only speculate, but it was lying down, sleeping. It had a man's body but was covered with fur, gray fur. Its face was like a wolf, an arctic wolf, and its whole frame was muscular and exceedingly powerful. I remember feeling awestruck and terrified. I had never seen such a creature before, and the last thing I wanted to do was wake it up. This was clearly why the dog had been spooked during the walk. It looked like a wolf but it was shaped like a man, like an actual wolf man. I now believe, based on your encounters, that this was a dog man. Mike was crying, and the creature began to stir. I grabbed Mike, picked him up, and ran back towards the car. As I ran, I must have got about 20 yards when I heard a large grunt and growl, which was clearly this thing stirring. I can only thank God that it didn't find us and we got back to the car safely. We drove back and didn't speak about the incident again. My brother Mike passed away unfortunately in a car accident when he was only 16, and that was nearly 17 years ago now. The dog too died this summer after our encounter, and he was only 7, which is young for a breed of his dog to die. I hope you can enlighten me about dogmen more and I can hopefully gather more evidence that this was a true sighting of this thing. I would like to thank you for all the hard work you do. It's been almost seven years now since I was visiting Mono Lake with a friend in California. My friend and I were chased by something that we can only describe looked like some sort of horrible monster with a large head of a dog that walked upright just like a person with large teeth that stuck out of its mouth with large claws and no visible tail. This happened earlier in the morning and nobody else was there at the time and as we approached the lake we were chased by what we can only describe as this creature. It broke and burst out of the trees like nobody's business and began to charge at us angrily as if we had disturbed it or even chased off its meal. We were terrified and ran and retreated back to our car where we drove out of there so quickly. Whatever this thing was continued to pursue our car and kept chasing us until we were far out of sight of the area. One thing that really stuck out to me was just how thin and skinny this thing looked. Sure it was very tall, but it had a very thin tapered waist and even the chest wasn't very large, but the arms they hung down very low on its body. They were disproportionately long, and its legs resembled that of a dog. So when it walked upright, it looked awkward, and its back was even hunched. But it looked like it was able to keep its balance quite well, and it didn't have any problems running on two legs. And never saw it once switch on to four legs. It only stayed on two, and continued to pursue us for a little while. Once it disappeared, that was the last we saw of it. In the time since then, I have read reports online about people seeing a similar being that exists around that area in California. They describe it as half man, half dog. But it didn't really resemble that of a human or a man, if you ask me. Even though it walked upright like a person and was disproportionate in its body size and style, it didn't really resemble a man it was more just like a large, upright canine that was really, really skinny. I had a very frightening experience that took place back in 1997 
in Plumas County. I can't remember the exact location, but I was driving on a highway somewhere in the woods. I think it was near Greenville, to be exact. I also don't remember the time of year, but I know that it was not fall or winter, so it was probably sometime in the spring or summer. Anyway, I guess those details are relevant. At the time, I was driving my beater, which was an old Ford pickup. I was coming around a bend in the road at about 45 miles an hour when this large wolf animal jumped out onto the road and literally attacked my vehicle. With its hands, or what I would describe as hands, held onto my door handle and tried to yank the door open and in an effort to pull me out of the car. It looked up at me with the most human-like eyes I can possibly imagine. The expression on its face was devilish and like it had evil intentions, like it wanted to rip me out and eat me right then and there. Of course, when this thing jumped out and grabbed hold of my vehicle, it was almost like a trap, like it was waiting right around the bend for me to show up, and as soon as I drove in the right place at the right time, this thing made its move, jumped out, and even though I'm going 40-45 miles an hour, was able to grab hold of my door and try to yank it open with incredible strength. I felt my car give a little bit. I understand this might be hard to grasp or understand that this all happened in one solid fluid motion, but as soon as it grabbed hold of my hand, I looked over at this thing and it made eye contact with me, all while I'm going 45 miles an hour around this bend. I look back to the road and I floor it out of a sudden adrenaline rush, and this thing lets go and starts chasing my truck. Then, within seconds, leaps up into the air, probably 12 feet, and jumps into the bed of my truck, then proceeds to smash its paw through my back window. And keep in mind, this beater isn't anything special. It's a rinky-dink two-seat truck and has a little back window like every truck does. Whatever this werewolf creature was, smashed its paw or fist, whatever, into the back window, trying to grab hold of me, but for some reason couldn't. Probably because I was swerving all over the road, and it's only by the grace of God that there wasn't any oncoming traffic or anybody behind or in front of me, because there for sure would have been an accident. No questions asked about that. Within seconds, I made a sharp turn to my right and nearly threw this thing out of the bed of my pickup truck. I almost had a head-on collision with a large oak tree until I finally rotated the wheel enough that I could actually stabilize and straighten out my truck and floor it out of there. I think I knocked this thing onto the pavement and it seemed stunned, but when I kept checking back in my rearview mirror, it was gone. I never saw this thing disappear, nor did I ever see this thing jump off into the woods, so I don't know what happened to it or where it went off to. For all I knew, it was paralleling me in the woods and I had no idea, so I floored it even faster and got out of there. This was easily one of my most traumatic experiences that I've ever gone through and you wouldn't imagine explaining how I got my back window punched in to my girlfriend at the time. I couldn't tell her some wolf man thing did it, or that it jumped in the bed of my truck and nearly tried to kill me. So I had to make up a story that I was being dumb and threw a rock at my back window. Trust me, I got the cold shoulder for months afterwards and was even forced to sleep out on the couch. But what was I supposed to do? Nobody would have believed my story. Sometimes when I think back on it, and I think the world we live in, I question if I'm not going crazy, that it was some sort of nightmare, that I just envisioned the whole thing, that maybe, just maybe, I fell asleep at the wheel. But I know for sure what happened. It's just too vivid of a memory. I'll never forget the eyes and the way it looked at me. It looked animalistic, but there was something behind the eyes, something that told me that it had intent very evil intent that wanted to hurt me, do damage to me, get to me, like it was waiting for me. I'll never be able to accurately come up with an explanation for that. I don't even think anything can really explain that. My close friend just very recently introduced me to your channel, but more importantly, your dogman playlist that has nearly 200 videos worth of encounters. Now, I've only begun to scratch the surface and dig through a few, 
but you seem like you know a lot about these creatures, which begs me to ask the burning question. Have you ever heard of or know anything about supposed buffalo wolves? Well, the reason I ask you, a few years back, a close buddy of mine believed he shot one of these things in eastern Idaho, or maybe it was closer to Montana. Either way, he was elk hunting and apparently came upon a juvenile whatever these things are. It stood upon two legs and tried to attack him, but he brought his magnum with him and blew part of its shoulder out, and I believe it bled to death by what he told me. He said this sucker's ugly as can be and has ever only heard of buffalo wolves before and about how large they can actually get up to, but he's pretty sure this was one of them and that it was a juvenile because he said it was much smaller than what he's heard. He said it was maybe around 5'4", 5 5'5", 5 5 if he had to guess, and even though it had a really large head, it was still shorter than him. My friend who shot him is about 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 he had just gotten a good kill, and apparently, this thing showed up out of nowhere and tried to not only attack him, but he believes it was planning to steal his kill. Well, he thought quick and killed whatever this thing was. His plan was to actually come back for the body of this thing and probably get meat off it from what I guess, or maybe he wanted it taxidermied. I'm not exactly sure, but he got his kill and hauled it back, and then when he came back for his buffalo wolf kill the next day, it was gone, like it had just gotten up and left. There were even no signs of the blood that occurred the day before. And then he told me about when he came back to this area the following day to retrieve the kill of this buffalo wolf that the entire area just felt different, like he was being watched from afar or all around him, and that he was expecting something bad to happen at any given moment. Well, safe to say he didn't stick around very long and got out of there. He describes the whole thing as very strange that a kill that large would just be removed without question, and with no traces of blood or any trailing in the dirt that would indicate some sort of predator dragging the body off or even being feasted upon. It was just gone, like it never happened, like it vanished out of thin air. There's nothing that could explain that, since it hadn't even been a full 24 hours since he killed whatever this thing was that he believed to be a juvenile buffalo wolf. This is a friend of mine who's been hunting for a very long time and does his same routine just about every year and always goes around Eastern Idaho into Montana. Nothing he did was out of the ordinary or out of change for him. But whatever this thing was, he's only ever heard of them before and never actually seen one until this time. He even told me that whatever this thing was took him by surprise, which is why he was shocked and scared. And had he not blown this thing's shoulder open, it would have taken his life and probably ripped his throat out. It appeared to be very aggressive and hostile, he said. He wonders if he approached on its territory or if it was solely intent on killing him, eating him, and taking the elk kill he had just gotten. And the area in which he was hunting is more of a desolate private area. He doesn't know if it's government owned or privately owned, but there's not that many people that know about it. It's one of those places that's kind of off a dirt road, which is off another dirt road, which is off a large gravel road, which is off a back road. You know how those things go, especially if you're a hunter and have gone down those kind of routes before and search for game trails and places to hunt. I believe him, and I don't feel like he has any reason to make this up. He's not seeking notoriety or fame by any means. In fact, he even wanted me to keep his name anonymous and was very adamant about getting the idea that these things are really out there and that they do exist. And people who do hunt, especially in the thick woods and mountains, need to be very careful and always bring extra firearms and that these things can be taken down if you shoot them properly. Don't be afraid, just be armed. I'm an amateur filmmaker, and it just so happened that me and my crew found ourselves wandering the Bible Belt, looking for a place to shoot our next film. A bit of a Halloween special. For most indie movie makers, that wouldn't be a problem. But the deal breaker was the kind of films we shot. Even if I tried to lie about what we were going to do, it was pretty obvious by the way I dressed, and especially 
by the way my actress was dressed that we didn't exactly share the local values regarding entertainment. So, people would often, very often actually, refuse to have anything to do with us. So, we kept tooling down the road, looking for an old abandoned farmhouse or barn or grain bin, anything that looked rural and spooky and vacated so that my actors wouldn't be interrupted when the action was in full spring. When we spotted a place, we inquired at the most relevant looking home. More than once, we had people not only tell us we weren't welcome, but they pulled a shotgun from somewhere near the door, so hung up on the sins of my crew that they forgot that murder was just as bad. Despite my reputation on the other side of the camera, I know when to pull out, so we just kept moving on instead of trying to negotiate. We were running out of daylight and gas money, and none of these fine, firearm-toting believers were going to let us use their property for a little Halloween special. I was awfully close to just being done with asking and taking the risk of storming an empty place and damn the consequences if we got caught. The very last house we decided to visit, we raised an old woman, shaped like a wood stove, who wore a cross so big that I thought it might have been the reason her back was hunched. There were crosses on her porch, over the door frame, and we could see inside her house and see a ton more crosses. I wondered if there was a local vampire problem or something. She wasn't going to let us use her skeletal old barn, but she was quick to direct us to a place down the road. There would be an exit off to the right that we would miss if we weren't looking for it. I was skeptical and wondered if she was sending us to one of those places where the whole neighborhood becomes a shooting range when strangers set foot in the place. But the sun would be setting soon, and the people I answered to were blowing up my phone about making sure we meet every deadline. We almost missed the exit. It wasn't so much an exit as it was a hole in the trees that hugged the side of the road. If the main drag was a vein, then this spit off a path that was a little more than a capillary, and our van just barely fit through it. It was a paved path, broken up into rubble by weeds, that were very well established. This road had been maintained for a very, very long time. Just like that, we were spit out into a neighborhood that was clustered tightly with houses. It looked like any average place where basketball hoops hung off some garages, and swing sets stood in a few yards and cars were parked off the sides of the streets. Except everything was still and quiet. It felt like the streets were holding their breath for some sign of normalcy. A dog barking, one of the cars pulling out into the road, the sound of a basketball smacking the pavement. But there was really nothing. The silence felt wrong despite all the signs of abandonment. Paint peeled off of everything, Broken windows had trees punching through them from the inside. Some of the cars should have crumbled to a pile of rusty ashes with the breeze. And the grass, and every single yard was tall, sprouting seed heads and wildflowers. If there had been anyone here to ask permission for filming, we missed them by decades. My actress now was visibly weirded out by the emptiness, but me and my guy were thrilled with the idea of having an entire community to ourselves. This meant we had an insane variety of sets to choose from. I was considering driving by all of them, but I knew which one we wanted as soon as I saw it. The cracked roads wound their way up to the gentle slope of a hill where, overlooking everything, sat a three-story house that must have been a mansion in its day. Everything about it screamed haunted. We had found our set. Our actress was huddled in her seat, pulling her knees up and wrapping her arms around them. It felt that I had weird vibes, but I was thinking about how authentic our set was going to be, and they can make all the noise they wanted to, with nobody for miles to hear us. It took us a minute to navigate past a badly parked car here and there, and other dialect objects. It almost looked as if everybody had left in a hurry. So if the rest of the neighborhood was run down and dilapidated, the house highest on the hill was the worst. I questioned exactly how safe it would be to film there, if we were all going to fall to the floor in the middle of everything. 
but my love for cash outweighed my fear for the safety of my crew. Shame on me. But in this industry, you don't hire people for any special talent on their part. Good looks are a dime a dozen. So, we started to really scope the place. I brought in electric lamps and my guy actor was eager to have a look around and using the light off his cell phone. There was a thick odor of wet dog in the air and a faint smell of death and blood. It was a bit unsettling, but we didn't let it get to us. My man actor was just a little too fearless of using the stairs. They didn't just creak, they cracked. I could hear them. It sounded like an old man's hips breaking with each step. But onward he went, like I said. I didn't hire him for his brains. My actress, who usually doesn't get close to him until she absolutely has to, was clinging to him for dear life. I felt a little insulted, you know, because I'm their paycheck. At least with him, what they do together on camera is honest. Anyone that becomes an actor in this field is automatically sketchy on some level. But when you direct like I do, then you're ten times sketchier. I began moving all of our stuff in one piece at a time. Coolers, supplies, extra clothing. It was the early fall after all, and it was already much cooler than usual. I dropped the trunk I was carrying when I heard screams from upstairs. I didn't move as quickly as a properly concerned human being should have, but hey, those rickety steps. I found my people in what must have been a nursery, moldy and mossy stuffed animals lined the walls like mummies on an underbroken shelf. The cause of the commotion was in a crib that time had gnawed into a nest of splinters, and what was left of the mattress was stained with more than just water and dirt. A rusty brown had permeated the frayed fabric in such a way to suggest that violence had visited a room a very, very long time ago. All this time, that was what we found the perfect place for our Halloween special. My guy was fascinated. My gal was pretty shaken up, and she was gibbering like a frightened rabbit. I let her know in not so subtle terms that we were filming here, and she was going to have to get used to it. The peach light of the sunset started to stream in through the boards of the walls. It was intense, and created a special aesthetic that I was totally stoked over, so I told my lovebirds to get busy while the light lasted. The camera had been rolling for about five minutes when there was a crash downstairs, followed by another, and another. One of them was definitely our food cooler, spilling its contents, including many bottles of beer. My first thought was that we were either being robbed or being evicted by the moral majority. I realized real soon that no people were involved when I heard and felt a purring rumble make the floorboards tremble beneath my feet a throaty bass that shook nerves and surrounding inanimate objects alike. The moldy dolls and teddy bears shuddered as if they shared a collective giggle over a joke that we weren't in on. That's when it was time for me to get out my little girl, a 22 I packed on me at all times. And in this line of work, there are predators on and off camera, and you gotta show them you're serious. My actress was shivering so bad I thought she might fall through the floorboards under us, and whatever was downstairs by falling through, well, we'd see it. I waved to both of them to be quiet. As soon as I set foot on the screaming staircase, there was a sharp, roaring bark from somewhere down there, along under the breaking wood. My view lowered with the steps just in time to see a cloud of dust swirling around a hole punched into one of the walls that hadn't been there when we came in. That same purring rasp came rhythmically from the hole, like a ragged breathing. I held my gun with one hand and lit up my phone in the other, LED light scrubbing pale blue over a room full of pink sunlight. The rays of the sun were deepening to red, and they outlined the hole, showing little else. The ghost light of my phone showed me something that the sunlight didn't. Fur. There was a cloud of fur mingling with the swirling dust. I shone my light into the hole, expecting the shape of a bear. I nearly pissed myself when an empty beer bottle sailed out of the hole, glinting in my phone light and shattering against the wall behind me, followed by a deep bass grunt rattling my entire ribcage. And then, 
as if I should have seen them all along. There were two points of light. The color of honey deep in the hole. Like hell had yawned open and a demon was going to take the opportunity to escape. It took my phone several seconds to hit it with the light. I saw it for just a split second. So tall that it had to hunch a little for the ceiling. Mangy black fur like Spanish moss and a horrifying odor of wet dog and blood. The muzzle curled up, showing long teeth like lost souls shaped into icicles. The fur around the chin dripping something wet with either saliva or something else. I raised my gun and fired, bathing the thing in flashes of light, the same color as its eyes. The cry this got me told me I was killing its buzz. One flash was a snapshot of pointed ears drawn back in primal rage, and teeth bared down to the gums, coming straight for me. That was also the flash where I saw a mist of fluid splash around one of its eyes. I must have hit it, because it sailed to the wall to the outside, rending the wood like it was straw. A distant and pained roar rolled through the new hole in the wall. Then, the only sounds were coming through were the panic of the crew upstairs. Safe to say we didn't finish filming. We hauled out of there, double time. I sent off an explanation to my higher-ups that I knew they wouldn't believe. But with that much adrenaline in my system, let's just say I wasn't in the mood to lose more than my beer and one film's pay. Whatever that was that we ran into, I have no idea. I normally don't believe in things that go bump in the night, but we encountered... I encountered something that certainly wasn't human. This happened to me back when I was 17. I went on a hike with my friend about four and a half miles down a dirt road near the very end where there is a large undeveloped cul-de-sac. My friend jolts suddenly and starts panicking saying, what is that? I kept telling him, you're just tripping out. He kept trying to stop me and would whisper to me that there's something watching us. I told him to stop, thinking he was just trying to spook me, but he was really getting freaked out. This friend of mine is a big tough guy that's not really afraid of nothing. So it was strange, but I found it more annoying at the time than anything else, to be honest with you. After walking for about 10 minutes longer, I heard huge branches crashing and breaking near us. That's when I started to become frightened and we decided to turn back. While walking back, I could tell that something was following us. We were both terrified. Suddenly, after a minute of calm, this creature leapt out behind us about 50 feet away and stared us down. We both took off running back down this road that led up to where there's a turn in the road. This massive eight foot tall wolf monstrosity just came out of nowhere. It didn't chase us, but me and my friend kept looking back to make sure that it wasn't following or coming after us. It just watched us. It looked like a werewolf right out of a movie. It was tall and very dark in color. It had long hair long ears and a long snout. I don't remember seeing any eyes or teeth or any of that stuff. I was so scared that I probably blurred a lot of that out anyway. We made it back up the road and my one friend had urinated all over himself. <laughs> it was funny in a way, but we were so scared that neither of us were laughing. He never talked about that day ever again and I don't think we told anybody else. Who would believe us anyway? I was alone in the woods with my dog one day, just listening to Spotify, admiring the beauty in the trees. I and my dog decided to go have a look around for any cool pine cones or even arrowheads. You never know what you can find when you're out in the woods alone. My favorite is finding bones of animals, skulls, ribs, anything I can collect. I was in this huge backlot area to this large apartment complex that stretches way out 
and there's a segment of woods, a very large segment that goes on and on. For how long, I'm not sure. I was walking around this back lot and was about to head down further to look at more cool stuff when I began to hear sticks breaking in the tree line down further from me, about 30 feet away. I turned around and looked in the direction that the sound was coming from, and then I saw some huge branches and brush moving. I could clearly see something really big was behind the tree and in the brush next to the tree moving it. The grass and weeds that were right beside the tree line were also shaking violently as if something was rattling around in them. It freaked me out honestly, so I decided at the time to hastily head back the way I came, out of there, quickly. I'm walking back, and the rattling and rustling is going crazy in the bushes, and my dog is now terrified and was whimpering. As I'm walking quickly back, I'm looking down, and I make a very unnerving discovery I did indeed find tracks. Since I did not come in this way, I never saw them originally. Two sets of tracks, both very large tracks that I found were much farther apart than the first set and were only about 20 feet apart in total. The tracks were huge canine tracks and they switched back and forth from four tracks to two, meaning that they were walking bipedally for at least half the time that they appeared on the ground. Both sets of the tracks were like this, and they both led directly to where I was hearing the shaking, and they led right in that direction of trees. I'm not about to get eaten by a large ravenous wolf. No thanks. I went hiking out in Southern California last summer, and I saw this thing that looked like some kind of wolf or big German shepherd. I never saw one before, but I hear them sometimes around here. I have heard people refer to them as wolf head men because they have this wolf-like head. I don't know if that's actually what they're called, but my family and friends call them that. Most of my family knows about them and has seen them tons of times. In fact, I even heard some howling just before sunset a few weeks back near a cabin that I frequently visit with some friends. I've heard plenty more howling since then though. They seem like they're all over the area I live in. I try to stay out of specific wooded areas around me and here as much as I can, but I always feel like they're around me, like maybe there's a large pack of them. I hear them at night sometimes, howling really loud. It reminds me of wolf howls that you hear in the woods, except these howls sounded much deeper and louder. You can tell the volume alone that it came from a bigger animal. Much larger lungs, guttural, a much deeper growl. They are very disturbing howls. I fear it will show itself more and more the longer it hangs around in the area. They get braver, like most animals do. Take a cougar, for example. They hunt until all the food is gone. Then they come into contact with humans in search of more and they get brave. Then they start attacking people. Anyway, I come from a small town where everybody knows each other, so my reputation is a big deal. I don't think I'm ready to publicly speak out about it. Even my family keeps it incognito, but they're bad in this area. People think I'm crazy, but I'm not. I know I'm not crazy. I do know there is something strange in the woods and I'm not gonna be afraid of it. If I'm just going to avoid going to certain spots in the woods where these things live, I certainly don't want it to run into such creatures being out there, and you can't tell me that they're not around. In fact, one time my friend was telling me about how he saw one of these things walking up near his place just outside of Santa Barbara up in the hills. He took me to his house. It was a newer house that he had just bought, and the spot where he saw this thing about a week after he originally saw it. I don't know if he's told anybody else about this, but I believe him. He told me when he saw this thing, walking up on his property, he went out to see if he could track it down. He probably could track it maybe 50 feet up a steep rocky hill, but then he heard this loud howl and a smell accompanied it 
by rotting meat. He thought it might have been an overly large coyote or dog, but when he got closer, the tracks turned and walked off into the forest bipedally where he couldn't track it anymore. I don't know if it was the right call for him to try and track it down, but maybe he was curious. I thought he was crazy for it and should have stayed away in case it was close by. When he described the howl to me that he had heard, it kind of wigged me out because it was the same howl that I had heard, down to the T of the description of it. He talked about how loud and ear-shattering it sounded. A lot of people stay pretty hush-hush about this kind of thing. They might be scared as of what they hear, but they're more terrified of what they don't know is going on. The area in which I live and he lives isn't far apart, but it's pretty densely populated around here but I seriously doubt that my family and friends are the only ones around here hearing these things, these howls, these noises, and seeing these things. We have to do something quickly before these things start coming out into the public. There's an area beyond my house that has a ton of old deer stands. I've never seen anybody hunt back there, ever. It's got an eerie feel to it, Every time I've ever wandered back there, I get the creeps and I just imagine a big predator walking around back there. People being afraid to go out at night back there because they're going to get snatched. Maybe that's just my inner horror movie talking, well, originally, until my thoughts became a literal nightmare. I used to think I was just overly afraid because I'd watched too many horror movies, and then I saw the largest upright walking coyote that I've ever seen. It was massive, and I could see the tops of its ears over its head. It was radiating that horrid yellow glow from its eyes. I honestly thought it was some sort of werewolf or wolfman to me until I saw it in full view in the open, eating the deer. It's hard to comprehend what it was exactly, but I can tell you that whatever it was looked much larger and angrier than a typical coyote. I think this thing came from the nearby creek where there are a lot of deer that like to congregate and drink water. Initially, I first saw it when I was back there exploring, thinking about all the creepy Silent Hill-esque things that happened in these part of the woods with the abandoned stands in them. I heard a bunch of commotion coming from the direction where the creek is. So I was curious and went a little further to investigate. That's when I saw it for the first time. This massive coyote looking creature attacking and killing this deer as it was drinking at the creek. I was stunned at what I was seeing. Not even more than a few seconds of staring at this monster, I could hear it making this clicking noise as it was chomping down on this dead deer. It had probably been there for maybe 20 seconds. Then it stopped. I was frozen in complete and utter panic and thought it was going to kill me next. But it slowly looked up at me. I heard it let out this nasty, god-awful growl. I turned and ran as fast as I could to get up out of there. It was almost as if this thing had read my mind and my thoughts. Judging by its expression alone, I just remember thinking, Werewolf! It was so tall and intimidating looking. I didn't know what to make of it at first, but then I realized, if I don't leave now, I'm going to be its next meal. God, it really did resemble a large upright walking coyote. Very shaggy and matted fur. It was so huge and a gray white color, but off white with a long snout. It was wet too, looking like it just crawled out of the creek and attacked this poor doe. The whole experience has left me freaked out so much that I don't go back there exploring anymore at least like I used to. Then afterward, I started to really think critically, and maybe there's a reason people don't hunt back there anymore. I don't know. There are many areas with abandoned tree stands, but I can't accurately describe to you the feeling that that part of the woods gives you. It really just makes my skin crawl being back there. And then I go and see that coyote thing, and that just sealed the deal for me. Do I think there's a large werewolf type creature ravaging the lands back there? Not quite. Do I think there's a large unknown predator that looks and resembles a werewolf back there that I want to avoid completely? Yes.
My mother used to have a massive rose garden when I was a little kid. That was up in central Maine. It always seemed like it was in full bloom, and every spring I would go out and see how the roses looked. However, I think the rose garden attracted something evil. My mom would talk about seeing this strange black dog walking around her garden during the night. She said it would stand up on its hind legs and press its face against the windows of the house on the bottom floor. That's where our kitchen and living room was. Then it would run off and vanish. She described it as a strange looking creature. However, it didn't really seem to scare her as it did just make her a lot more alert of what was going on around her. However, one night at around three in the morning, my mother is a total night owl. She said she was laying in bed, flipping through the late night infomercials on TV, and saw what she initially thought was a man sitting on the roof of her garden shed. She said it had a large dog head, pointed ears, and a long muzzle. She also said it had paws with fingers, the entire time she was talking about this being on the roof, she kept repeating how tall this thing was. Six feet? Seven feet? She really couldn't explain it any other way. Then, the very following day was when my mom had a horrifying experience with three of these dogmen. They approached her while she was working in her garden and said that she thought they were werewolves. She knew without a doubt that these were the same creatures that she saw sitting on her garden shed roof and the same creatures trying to look into our first story windows. She was so frightened by these horrid creatures approaching, she ran inside and locked the door. I was at school during this time, so I have no recollection of the event. She waited for them to leave. She talked about this days prior. Night and day, she would hear these strange, unidentifiable noises coming from the wooded area behind the shed. This is where she believed these creatures were coming from. The sounds these creatures would make, we believed these were communicating to each other. It was like a clicking noise. They were not human-like at all, but had a guttural quality to them, and the sound was like they were talking to each other, definitely communicating to each other in some way. Over the years, she has heard them multiple times, but never saw them again after that last time when the three of them came out of the woods behind the shed and approached her in the, her garden. This was years and years ago, and now later in life, she has started hearing strange howls and guttural sounds again. Very distinctive sounding. It's making her want to run away for good. I have had three separate dogman experiences in which I will share with you. I saw a dogman one time when I was driving out near the border of Florida State. I was 18 at the time, just got my license very shortly before this. It was late at night and eating on a carcass of a dead cow. I saw this thing looking over at me once I passed it, and then it jumped off the road and disappeared into the weeds and trees. That was my very first encounter with one of these creatures. The second encounter I had was when I was about 23 years oldish, laying in my bed, drifting off to sleep, when all of a sudden my room got really dark. I had my blinds open and my head was against the wall, right underneath my window. Something really big stood in front of my window to block the light coming through. And in that very moment, I turned around and saw this hideous creature that stood on the other side of my window. It was like a really tall dog on steroids, and it kind of looked human-like. Its head was large, and its eyes glowed a dull red. Then, it growled a deep vibration, like a bell that went off in my chest. I knew this thing had to be some sort of massive alpha predator, or something. It didn't see me, because the angle I was laying at, but I laid there frozen in panic. I somehow mustered the courage to reach up quickly, and shut my window blinds without even looking. It was still standing there when I did this. I don't even know if it saw me or not, as I quickly reached up and shut my blinds. But I heard it making this weird clicking noise and felt like it was planning a way to get into my house. Somehow or another, I managed to fall back asleep after a long while and not hearing anything anymore. I felt a false sense of security with my blinds down 
It was probably a couple of hours before I could shut my brain back off from sheer exhaustion and fear. The last and final dogman encounter I had was just last year. This creature ran across the road that I live on and I was near a long dirt road that goes out into the back country. I was driving that night and I had to pull over and take a piss. Got back in my truck and began to pull out when I saw this creature. It was on its hind legs and was grasping onto this fallen tree right off the road. The area that opened up to this small section of woods around was about six feet wide. It looked kind of silly pulling itself up on its hind legs, but once I got a good look, I realized what it was. I backed up slowly and it seemed like it was sizing my truck up and staring at me. I maintained my composure and kept my foot on the brake. This thing is massive and it felt like I was being watched very closely, like this thing could be very calculated in its next move. I tried flashing my brights at it to distract it, which just seemed to piss the thing off more than it already was. Deciding I shouldn't make a fool of myself, I whipped out of there and flew down the road. Fortunately for me, this thing wasn't following me or on my tail that I could see. Anyway, those are my encounters. I'm sorry they're not more in depth, but that's about all that happened. No one can tell me dogmen don't exist, because I know they're real. They are real creatures that are out there. You just gotta be mindful of them and avoid them at all costs. I work really long shifts at my job and have to get up super early in the morning, like three or four. Because of this, my wife and I have to try and plan extra early for date nights because I sleep so early. This evening in particular, we were coming back from town when I decided to pull over and we just sat there and talked about things in our relationship for a long while. I told her I was starting to get really tired and hopefully she didn't mind if I took a quick cat nap. She said that was fine and I figured it would be better before we headed back to my father's house. I passed out, and my wife sat there on her phone, hand on mine, kind of cuddling while I slept. Then my wife saw this big dog creature cross the road late at night. At the time we were borrowing my dad's F-150 because my truck was currently having its alternator worked on. His truck was parked off the road just a little bit away from the house. My wife said it had red eyes and a long muzzle. She said it was kind of hunched down and dragging its feet. She got a good look at it. She wakes me up immediately and tells me she just saw this thing go across the road into a big empty field. She says that she has never seen anything like it before and she doesn't believe in dogmen. I have only ever heard of them but she seemed very genuinely terrified at what she saw. She told me it didn't notice her truck or us sitting in it but it really freaked her out. We immediately drove back home which was close by. This is where my wife finally was able to recant her experience to my dad, but he did not believe her and thought we were seeing things, or she was seeing things. The dark plays tricks on your eyes, he says, but I believe her 100%. It's crazy because my wife is a firm skeptic of anything out of the ordinary, so for her to be so genuinely scared of what she saw makes me believe a little differently. The next morning, she brings out a detailed sketch of what this thing looked like. By the way, my wife is a very detailed and incredible artist, and I still find her sketch hard to accept. What I find most shocking is the fact that none of us have ever seen an animal out there like this before. The creature she drew had no tail, long back legs, and the entire body was covered in fur. The thing looked like a dog or a wolf with a human-like head and face. Not a full canine or human face, but more like the appearance of a dog or wolf with a human's matted fur and deep set eyes, if that makes sense. She showed me and my father and told us this is what she saw. She stayed up late last night drawing this because she was so bothered by it. The sketch disturbs me, but again, my father just thinks she had a bad nightmare or saw something in the dark and refuses to believe any of it.
I had an encounter with something horrifying along the river. I was with my brother at the time, and we both saw this creature. It looked like a man, but it wasn't a human. It did have a muzzle, but the skin on its face didn't have any fur on it. It did have thick black fur though, all over its body, except for its face, which had dozens of dozens of sharp teeth popping out of its mouth. It was this horribly disfigured looking creature, if I've ever seen one. We spotted this creature and we stopped in our tracks. We were walking down the small segment of the creek to skip rocks and hang out together for the afternoon. Then, my brother spots this dark shape that doesn't look like it should be there. He points to it and nudges me on my shoulder to get my attention. You see that? I see this shape. What actually was this creature that was hunched over close to the water, partially blocked by some larger stones. It turned around to see us. It stood up. It stared at us intently before quickly jumping off down the creek, crashing through the trees. Then, this thing comes crashing back out of the woods, with three of the same creatures following right behind it, straight in our direction. We were now being chased by whatever the hell you'd call these things. They were running on two legs, like a human. They looked so scary. All of this happened probably within a 10 second span of time from it running into the forest and then running back at us. We were scared as hell and turned and ran for our lives. We ran all the way back home, which was a good two mile trek. We didn't seem to be followed by this creature. I didn't know what this was, and I've been at that creek numerous times. My brother and I both have. We ain't ever seen something like this before. It's virtually unheard of. I don't know if there are some sort of deformed mutant wolves out there, but man, that's a nightmare I don't ever want to revisit. I'm just telling you that right now. Okay, this just happened to me last week. I'm still shaking about it, and I've decided to go against what I've been told and speak up on the issue. Here I go. I got home to my house late one night, about five days ago, when I noticed something trotting across the street from the forest up to the back of my car. I turn to look, and I see tall ears and red glowing eyes. I about dropped my backpack and nearly had a heart attack. What is this thing? I thought to myself. I was frozen in place and couldn't even move to turn to get into my small house. Then, this thing, this horrible creature stood up from behind my car and started walking towards me. I was looking at a real life werewolf in the flesh from what I could see. It stood and walked just like a man but its legs and arms were covered with thick, matted fur, just like the rest of its body. But those parts of its body seemed to have little tufts of hair that kind of almost glistened in the small amount of light given off by the nighttime. I couldn't see its face clearly, but I can make out the horrible eyes, and then it had a huge, huge mouth filled to the brim with teeth. I could clearly see two rows of razor-sharp teeth coming out from behind its lips. It was beginning to snarl at me as it raised its hands out to me, as if it was reaching for me. This was hands down the most terrified I think I've ever been in my entire life, and I've almost nearly drowned a couple times, but that's a different story. In that moment, I experienced extreme fight or flight. I regained my senses somehow, turned around, grabbed hold of my door handle, and thank God, conveniently, I had forgotten to lock it this time when I went out and flew through the door. I slammed it shut, locked it, and ran to call the police, only after grabbing the biggest knife that I have. I just hoped that the thing couldn't break into my house. I phoned the police and told them what had happened. I told them I was being attacked by somebody and this person was being aggressive and trying to break in. They said they would send someone out and that they were on their way. I began to calm down a little. My heart was beating so hard out of my chest 
and I was having a hard time catching my breath. The creature was adamant about getting to me. It was trying to claw its way into the house, clawing away at the front door, wiggling the handle violently. The only thing more frightening was that it knew what a door handle was and was trying to open it. So far, it wasn't working. It would just howl in frustration and bang on the door with its whole body like it was trying to break the door down. After about five minutes, which felt like hours, the police had finally arrived. They took one look at the creature trying to get in the house and drew their guns. Take cover, one of them yelled, I remember hearing. Then, this creature let out a powerful roar that seemed to shake the house to its very foundation. It sounded so loud that it was almost painful to hear. It almost seemed to shake the doors off their hinges. The two cops closest to the door raised their guns and began firing. I was hiding in the kitchen, right behind the counter at this point, but I could hear and see the bullets doing nothing against this creature from my window. It kept roaring as it began moving towards the back of the house, where the sliding glass door was. Then, one of the cops started chasing after it, and both cops ran after the beast heading towards the back of my house. I don't know if this thing was retreating or what it was doing. The creature was struck in the back by bullets, and it seemed to only flinch slightly, but kept on going towards the house. The cops were now about 20 feet away from the back door. One of them raised his gun and fired. The bullet entered this creature's back, but it still did not stop. It kept on coming, and the cop just barely managed to shoot it in the head with his gun before it reached the back door. It was so close that its blood splattered against the door and it started dripping down to the ground. It was a mess, and I was in hysterics. The beast was still flinching on the ground, and the police had finally done their job. In the wake of all the civil rights justice, this seemed to be fitting for a duty of their stature. Just in that moment, all three of us heard the loudest howl that came from far beyond the woods on the far back side where I live. I just stood there, staring at this big bloody body of a creature for a few moments. I was entirely numb, physically, emotionally. I just shut down. I was in shock. This creature was huge. Now, the story begins to take a much darker turn. So, I don't own this house. I rented out from an older man who owns several houses in the area. The back part of this property goes up in a slight incline to these large segments of woods, which also backs up against several other houses in the same neighborhood, all owned by the same gentleman. Within 10 minutes, I want to say a large military black helicopter descends down right in my backyard, and about six to seven secret agent looking men wearing unidentified uniforms and dark suits come swarming up to my house, and the two officers who were there for the kill stayed right alongside with me. They quickly escorted the officers away, and I only heard parts of their conversation, telling the officers that they no longer had jurisdiction over this case, and it was now property of the federal government. Frankly, I can't recall their banter because my mind kind of blocked that and all the trauma out. Then, they looked down at the body, and some of the men began trying to take the body back towards the chopper. The other couple of men demanded I open my back door, threatening me with detainment and worse. Once I gave in to their demands, they started asking me question after question after question. This went on for maybe an hour, if not a little more. Then, sometime in the middle of questioning, I see the two officers that responded to my call initially, who assisted me, were in handcuffs and being led into this large black chopper, along with the bloody, pulverized body of this horrific creature. The lead man questioning me, which by the way I thought was weird and creepy, that he never took his glasses off, and it was nighttime, told me that he would come pay me a visit tomorrow. He just left like that, 
and they all got in the chopper and flew away like nobody's business. My brain, in complete and total shock, didn't sleep at all that night. I was traumatized, in complete terror, and had no idea what had just transpired. I laid awake in my bed all night long, with a knife still close to my bed, just in case anything happened. When I got up, I noticed the police car in front of my house was gone, that was initially left there last night after the other two officers were detained. Any blood that poured out of the creature was also gone. The splatters, the markings, there were no signs of anything. That's when I all of a sudden heard a very firm, stern knock at the door. I opened it, and it was the gentleman who I spoke to late last night. He gave me a quick, fake greeting, and began asking me questions again, forcing his way into my house, into my personal bubble. To say I felt violated and uncomfortable is an understatement. This was a full-on interrogation, or so I felt. When I would in turn ask him questions, like, who are you? What government branch do you represent? Who do you work for? How did you get here? He would answer them with questions for me, or would just ignore them altogether. I got a really bad vibe from him. His questioning was very aggressive and started talking about things in my personal life that only I know about. Then, he threatened me with blackmail if I ever told a soul about any of the events that had transpired last night and today. I spat right in his face, literally, and told him to please leave my house. Look, obviously I said it in a much more colorful way, with using more colorful words, as you can imagine. But for the sake of the story and typing it out, that's what I did. He left without saying anything. I had no idea where he came from because I saw no cars out of anywhere, no helicopter, nothing. Anyway, I know this story may not seem like it makes much sense to you, but this has had me freaked out, and I don't care. They can do whatever they want to me. Take me out for all I care. I don't think they're going to do anything serious, especially if I share this story. Let's see them do something, though. They have bigger fish to fry with the whole COVID thing. Let them. I don't care anymore. Hopefully my story can get out, and maybe, just maybe, we can turn the tides for good. My diary is usually boring and dull, but tonight something peculiar happened. Grandmother was staying over, as she does every Christmas Eve. We were on the porch, having some hot chocolate, when we both heard a rustling in the leaves nearby. I told her that I thought I'd heard something, and of course she looked at me like I was crazy. I began the thought, though, that maybe I am crazy. At this stage, I had a few glasses of wine, and thought maybe I was just a little woozy with all the alcohol. The rustling happened again, and it sounded closer, and this time my grandmother looked at me a little more worried. My grandmother has nerves of steel, because she grew up during the war. She was dirt poor during the Great Depression, and everybody knows that nothing scares her. But the way she looked at me, as if she was nothing, and noticing my face for the first time, as if I was a stranger, we both suddenly felt very cold, which was odd, as we were in Jacksonville, Florida, and the temperatures don't ever get cold here, at least not really, no matter what time of year it is. My grandmother looked at me as if I was crazy when I said I think it's a person. We both laughed nervously, and she went back to the house to get more hot chocolate. It seemed like an eternity that she was gone, but I just continued staring at the foliage. Something was moving behind it. My back straightened and I stood up, as if trying to make myself more tall or grand for what was about to emerge. I didn't know what I was about to see. I just felt so cold all of a sudden. My grandmother came back with the hot chocolate and filled me up. We both sat back down, and I just joked that it was all my imagination. As we began talking about times gone, I could have swore that I saw some red eyes amidst the trees. My blood went cold, and the hot chocolate 
felt like ice cubes in my mouth. There were eyes among the trees, and it was definitely not human. My grandmother noticed it too, and her lips went white. It was the freakiest thing. Usually, if I spotted a man, I would have just called the cops. But this was something different. Something odd. I still didn't know exactly what it was. But as we both sat there, frozen to our seats, the creature stepped up to the trees. That's when I got a good look at it. It was tall and black, with dark, matted fur. A purple glow seemed to emanate from its eyes. I began to think my grandmother had somehow drugged us. That's when I felt like I was on a dream. My grandmother touched my hand and told me to get back inside. We both rushed in and then stared through the curtains of the balcony, watching this thing. It continued to stare at us with its eyes that were glowing. It wasn't human, nor animal, or even a beast. I don't even know what you'd call it. I was afraid because I didn't know what it was. And only now, the next day, I'm writing down my account because if I don't write it down, I'll forget the details. The creature seemed to smirk at us behind the shrubs, a very cold, menacing smile, which seemed to send shivers up our spines. My grandmother was so terrified, she dropped her hot chocolate on the wooden floor, splashing the curtain with dark stains. Even though it's been 24 hours since this happened, she hasn't spoken about it. We were both scared to. What if people think we're crazy? Maybe my grandmother will think they'll put her in a home for dementia, and I could be taken into a mental hospital. I mean, what the heck did we see? All I know is I saw something, big, tall, and walking around like a man that looked like a dog that scared the hell out of me. My Christmas was tense the whole day, and I kept going back to the balcony to see if the creature would reappear, but it never did. My grandmother has been reading the Bible the whole day and is still worried. My mother knows something is up, but she hasn't asked me yet. Christmas of 2019 was an odd Christmas. In fact, I needed more wine to calm my nerves, and I think I drank way too much that night. Anyway, that's my experience, and I have no idea what I saw that Christmas Eve. Hi, what looks beneath? I'm just writing to inquire about a sighting that I think I may have saw when I was a kid, way back in 1996, the year that I turned seven. I'm 31 now. Look, I don't know what I saw. It's been nearly 25 years, but this memory has been bugging me ever since I read stories about skinwalkers lately online. Heck, even that word creeps me out. I was on a school trip with my class, and there was around 30 of us. This was in southern England, and we went to the seaside for the day. I guess the school trip was just us kids on the beach, and we got ice creams and kites to play around with. This was long before smartphones, and besides, I would have been too young to have one. I guess I've always been a pretty curious kid, never one to just play by the rules. I persuaded two other boys. I think it was two boys. Maybe it was a boy and a girl. Man, it's been so long, my memory is slightly broken, but I'm pretty sure it was two boys. So, we took a little detour from the group and spotted a cave close to where the waves were crashing in. Our teacher was totally relaxed and I knew she wouldn't spot us. So we all walked over and brought our kites with us. One of the two was called Danny and he was a smaller boy than I with bright red hair. We wanted to see if we can get inside the caves and perhaps even find some treasure. The closer we got to the caves, the rest of the class seemed to fade into the distance. I guess we were pretty far away, but we ran quickly and knew this was our opportunity for an adventure. Danny spotted something and he looked pretty excited. He spoofed us and told us he spotted treasure. As we got closer to the cave, we needed to climb some rocks. We climbed the rocks, which were steep enough in my memory. We looked into the vast expanse of darkness, and I guess we all began to feel a little scared. We did feel that there had to be something interesting inside, and perhaps if we had found some treasure, 
we could finally not have to go to school and be rich. I was the ringleader and ordered Danny to go first. Danny shook his head, and I guess he felt a little scared. As we all looked in, we tried to judge with our own eyes how deep the cave would be. It wasn't worth dying over or getting injured, but we all felt like Power Rangers and that we could face anything. We stared into the cavern when we heard a deep rumbling sound. It wasn't long before we were able to make out that rumbling noise as some sort of creature noise, or so we thought. We didn't see any lights or anything else inside the cavern, so it was hard for us to tell. But Danny decided it was safe to try and venture in and see what that growling was coming from. Me and the rest of us were terrified and couldn't even dare to step foot in. He went in a little ways past the reach of the light and came running back quickly, nearly sobbing. He told me he saw something, something that will forever change his memories. He saw a creature waiting there in the dark that was black in color, large and hairy, and had a long snout and looked like a dog in the face, he said. I think he even wet himself, because the next thing I remember was the smell of urine. The other kids wanted to go and see too, but I just didn't feel right, so I advised we step back onto the beach and look back at the waves one final time. My friend had stopped crying, even though he wasn't really crying a whole lot to begin with, but we all just decided to leave in general because we didn't feel safe and it didn't feel right. Anyway, I don't know what happened to the other kids, but I haven't been on that beach in 24 years. I'm writing this in the midst of the coronavirus lockdown because I guess it's a good time to clear out the cobwebs in our lives. I can't help but think that I know for certain that something evil was encountered in that cave. Something weird, some strange kind of animal that will likely never know truly what it was. So I'm reaching out to you to let you know that something very odd happened in my village here in Cork, Ireland. I was hanging the clothes for my children one evening, late October. It was a mild enough evening with a good breeze to dry the clothes. I do a bit of gardening since my husband died two years ago. It helps a lot with my mental health. A few of my lilies, as I watch them, seem to be red. It was the oddest thing, because I had watered them earlier that day, and they were a bright purple. I walked over to them, when my eyes shot up. I saw this large black dog, wolf-looking creature in the bushes. Its skin seemed to be scaly and thick like a gorilla, and it looked ugly. I don't know how else to describe it, and it had this red glow emanating from its eyes. I continued to stare, and I blinked several times just to make sure I wasn't going mad. I ran, but I can tell you I saw something. I don't know what it was, but I know something was there, watching me hang those clothes up. I was frightened, and I didn't return till the following day, and it was gone, whatever it was. But I'm just writing this in the chance that others may have seen this same creature. We all need to be looking out for each other anyway. I don't believe in monsters myself, but I know I witnessed something supernatural here in my little sleepy village, whatever that could have been. I've never seen a creature like that before. <laughs>